The book of the generation of Jesus Christ the son of David the son of Abraham Abraham begot Isaac and Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot Judas and his brethren and Judas begot Phares and Zara of Tamar and Phares begot Esram and Esram begot Aram and Aram begot Ammonadab and Ammonadab begot Nasan and Nasan begot Salmon and Salmon begot Booz of Rashab and Booz begot Obed of Ruth and Obed begot Jesse and Jesse begot David the king and David the king begot Solomon of her that had been. The wife of Urias and Solomon begot Roboam and Roboam begot Abia and Abia begot Asa and Asa begot Josaphat and Josaphat begot Joram and Joram begot Ozias and Ozias begot Jotham and Jotham begot Achaz and Achaz begot Ezekias and Ezekias begot Manasses and Manasses begot Ammon and Ammon begot Josias and Josias begot Jgonias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon and after they were brought to Babylon Jgonias begot Salatiel and Salatiel begot Zorobabel. And Zorobabel begot Abiat and Abiat begot Eliakim and Eliakim begot Azor and Azor begot Sadok and Sadok begot Achim and Achim begot Eliad and Eliad begot Eliezer and Eliezer begot Mothan and Mothan begot Jacob and Jacob begot Joseph the husband of Mary of whom was born Jesus who is called Christ so all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are fourteen generations and from the carrying away into Babylon. Unto Christ are fourteen generations now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost then Joseph her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privily but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying Joseph thou son of David fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king behold there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying where is he that is born king of the Jews for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him when Herod the king had heard these things he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together he demanded of them where Christ should be born and they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea for thus it is written by the prophet and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel then Herod when he had privily called the wise men inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared and he sent them to Bethlehem and said go and Search diligently for the young child and when ye have found him bring me word again that I may come and worship him also when they had heard the king they departed and lo the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceeding great joy and when they were come into the house they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod they departed into their own country another way and when they were departed behold the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream saying arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him when he arose he took the young child and his Mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying out of Egypt have I called my son and Herod when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying in Ramah was there a voice heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not but when Herod was dead behold an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt saying arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel for they are dead which sought the young child's life and he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel but when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod he was afraid to go thither notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream he turned aside into the parts of Galilee and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets he shall be called a Nazarene in those days came the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent yet for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his path straight and the same had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto to be baptized of him but forbade him saying I have need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me and Jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he suffered him and Jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted forty days and forty nights he was afterward and hungered and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of God command that these stones be made bread but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone Jesus said unto him it is written again thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and shift him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down
Gentiles the people which sat in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death light is sprung up from that time Jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brethren Simon called and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers and he saith unto them follow me and I will make you fishers of men and they straightway left their nets and followed him and going on from thence he saw their two brethren the son of Zebedee and his brother in a ship with Zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people and his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan and seeing the multitudes he went up into a mountain and when he was set his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are they poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God blessed are they which are persecuted for Righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost his savour wherewith shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets I am not come to destroy but to fulfill for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven for I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven ye have heard that it was said by them of old time thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee leave there thy gift before thee altar and go thy way first be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift agree with thine adversary quickly whilst thou art in the way with him lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison verily I say unto thee thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing ye have heard that it was said by them of old time thou shalt not commit adultery but I say unto you that whosoever looked on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart and if thy right eye offend thee pluck it out and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell and if thy right hand offend thee cut it off and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It hath been said whosoever shall put away his wife let him give her a writing of divorcement but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife saving for the cause of fornication causeth her to commit adultery and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time thou shalt not forswear thyself but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths but I say unto you swear not at all neither by heaven for it is God's throne nor by the earth for it is his footstool neither by Jerusalem for it is the city of the great king neither shalt thou swear by thy head because thou canst not make one hair white or black but let your communication be yea nay nay for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil ye have heard that it hath been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but I say unto you that ye resist not evil but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek turn to him the other. Also and if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat let him have thy cloak also and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile go with him twain give to him that asketh thee and from him that would borrow of thee turn not thou away ye have heard that it hath been said thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy but I say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute. You that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust for if ye love them which love you what reward have ye do not even the publicans the same and if ye salute your brethren only what do ye more than others do not even the publicans so be ye therefore perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven therefore when thou doest thine alms do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men verily I say unto you they have their reward but when thou doest alms let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doth that thine alms may be in secret and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily I say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly but when ye pray use not vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him after this matter therefore pray ye our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for if ye forgive men. Their trespasses your heavenly Father will also forgive you but if ye forgive not men their trespasses neither will your Father forgive your trespasses moreover when ye fast be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast verily I say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou fastest anoint thine head and wash thy face that thou appear not unto men to fast but unto thy Father which is in secret and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where th
Evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other ye cannot serve God and mammon therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment behold. The fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them are ye not much better than they which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature and why take ye thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these wherefore if God so clothe the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more clothe you O ye of little faith therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed for after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof judge not that ye be not judged for with what judgment ye judge ye shall be judged and with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you again and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye or how wilt thou say to thy brother let me pull out the mote out of thine eye and behold a beam is in thine own eye thou hypocrite first cast out the beam out of thine own eye and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast ye your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you ask and it shall be given you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for every one that asketh receiveth and he that seek findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened or what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread will he give him a stone or if he ask a fish will he give him a serpent if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is the law and the prophets enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and Many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves ye shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them not every one that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then will i profess unto them i Never knew you depart from me yet that work iniquity therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes when he was come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him and behold there came a leper and worshipped him saying Lord if thou wilt thou canst make me clean and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying I will be thou clean and immediately his leprosy was cleansed and Jesus saith unto him see thou tell no man but go thy way shew thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying Lord my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented and Jesus saith unto him I will come and heal him the centurion answered and said Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me and I say to this man go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doth it when Jesus heard it he marveled and said to them that followed verily I say unto you I have not found so great faith no not in Israel and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and Jesus said unto the centurion go thy way and as thou hast believed so be it done unto thee and his servant was healed in the self same hour and when Jesus was come into his house he saw his wife's mother late and sick of a fever and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esai as the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him he gave commandment to depart unto the other side and a certain scribe came and said unto him master I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest and Jesus saith unto him the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests but the son of man hath not where to lay his head and another of his disciples said unto him lord suffer me first to go and bury my father but Jesus said unto him follow me and let the dead bury their dead and when he was entered into a ship his disciples followed him and behold there arose a great tempest in the sea in so much that the ship was covered with the waves but he was asleep and his disciples came to him and awoke him saying lord save us we perish and he saith unto them why are ye fearful o ye of little faith then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm but the men marveled saying what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him and when he was come to the other side into the country of the gergs and as there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs exceeding fear so that no man might pass by that way and behold they cried out saying what have we to do with thee jesus thou son of god art thou come hither to torment us before the time and there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding so the devils besought him saying if thou cast us out suffer us to go away into the herd of swine and he said unto them go and when they were come out they went into the herd of swine and behold the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters and they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils and behold the whole city came out to meet jesus and when they saw him they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city and behold they brought to him a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed and jesus seeing their faith said unto the sick of the palsy son be of good cheer thy sins be forgiven thee and behold certain of the scribes said within themselves this man blasphemeth and jesus knowing their thoughts said wherefore think ye evil in your hearts for whether is easier to say thy sins be forgiven
They marveled and glorified God which had given such power unto men and as Jesus passed forth from thence he saw a man named sitting at the receipt of custom and he saith unto him follow me and he arose and followed him and it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house behold many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples and when the Pharisees saw it they said unto his disciples why eat your master with publicans and sinners but when Jesus heard that he said unto them they that behold need not a physician but they that are sick but go ye and learn what that meaneth I will have mercy and not sacrifice for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance then came to him the disciples of saying why do we and the Pharisees fast oft but thy disciples fast not and Jesus said unto them can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then shall they fast no man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment and the rent is made worse neither do men put new wine into old bottles else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved while he spake these things unto them behold there came a certain ruler and worshipped him saying my daughter is even now dead but come and lay thy hand upon her and she shall live and Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples and behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she said within herself if I may but touch his garment I shall be whole but Jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort thy faith hath made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that hour and when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise he said unto them give place for the maid is not dead but sleepeth and they laughed him to scorn but when the people were put forth he went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose and the fame he robbed went abroad into all that land and when Jesus departed thence two blind men followed him crying and saying thou son of David have mercy on us and when he was come into the house the blind men came to him and Jesus saith unto them believe ye that I am able to do this they said unto him ye lord then touched he their eyes saying according to your faith be it unto you and their eyes were opened and Jesus straightly charged them saying see that no man know it but they when they were departed spread abroad his fame in all that country as they went out behold they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil and when the devil was cast out the dumb spake and the multitudes Marveled saying it was never so seen in Israel but the Pharisees said he casteth out devils through the prince of the devils and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd then saith he unto his disciples the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease now the names of the twelve apostles are these the first Simon who is called and Andrew his brother the son of Zebedee and his brother Philip and Bartholomew Thomas and the publican the son of Alphaeus and Lebius whose surname was Thaddeus Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot who also betrayed him these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely ye have received freely give provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses nor script for your journey neither two coats neither shoes nor yet staves for the workman is worthy of his meat and into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter inquire who in it is worthy and there abide till ye go thence and when ye come into an house salute it and if the house be worthy let your peace come upon it but if it be not worthy let your peace return to you and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city shake off the dust of your feet verily I say unto you it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city behold I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves but beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the Gentiles but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what ye shall speak for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak for it is not ye that speak but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death and ye shall be hated of all men for my names sake but he that endureth to the end shall be saved but when they persecute you in the city flee ye into another for verily I say unto you ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the son of man become the disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his lord it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord if they have called the master of the house beelzebub above how much more shall they call them of his household fear them not therefore for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known what I tell you in darkness that speak ye in light and what ye hear in the ear that preach ye upon the housetops and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell are not two sparrows sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father but the very hairs of your Head are all numbered fear ye not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will I confess also before my father which is in heaven but whosoever shall deny me before men him will I also deny before my father which is in heaven think not that I am come to send peace on earth I came not to send peace but a sword for I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter in law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it he that receiveth you receiveth me and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward and whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple verily I say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward and it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities now when had heard in the prison the works of Christ he sent two of his disciples and said unto him art thou he that should come or do we look for another Jesus answered and said unto them go and shew again those things which ye do hear and see the blind receive their sight and the lame walk the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me and as they Departed Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning what went ye out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken with the wind but what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment behold they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses but what went ye out for to see a prophet yea I say unto
them that are born of women there hath not risen a greater than the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he and from the days of the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force for all the prophets and the law prophesied until and if ye will receive it this is Elias which was for to come he that hath ears to hear let him hear but whereunto shall I liken this generation it is like unto children sitting in the ETS and calling unto their fellows and saying we have piped unto you and ye have not danced we have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented for came neither eating nor drinking and they say he hath a devil the son of man came eating and drinking and they say behold a man gluttonous and a wine bibber a friend of publicans and sinners but wisdom is justified of her children then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not woe unto thee Therese and woe unto thee Bethsaida for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes but I say unto you it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you and thou Capernaum which art exalted unto heaven shalt be brought down to hell for if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom it would have remained until this day but I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee at that time Jesus answered and said I thank thee O Father Lord of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes even so Father for so it seemed good in thy sight all things are delivered unto me of my Father and no man knoweth the Son but the Father neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son and he too whomsoever the Son will reveal him come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light at that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were in hunger and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat but when the Pharisees saw it they said unto him behold thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day but he said unto them have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him how he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread which was not lawful for him to eat neither for them which were with him but only for the priests or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless but I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple but if ye had known what this meaneth I will have mercy and not sacrifice ye would not have condemned the guiltless for the son of man is lord even of the sabbath day and when he was departed thence he went into their synagogue and behold there was a man which had his hand withered and they asked him saying is it lawful to heal on the sabbath days that they might accuse him and he said unto them what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and if it fall into a pit on the sabbath day will he not lay hold on it and lift it out how much then is a man better than a sheep wherefore it is lawful to do well on the sabbath days then saith he to the man stretch forth thine hand and he stretched it forth and it was restored whole like as the other then the pharisees went out and held a counsel against him how they might destroy him but when jesus knew it he withdrew himself from thence and great multitudes followed him and he healed them all and charged them that they should not make him known that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esai as the prophet saying behold my servant whom I have chosen my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased I will put my spirit upon him and he shall shew judgment to the Gentiles he shall not strive nor cry neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets a bruised reed shall he not break and smoking flax shall he not quench till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil blind and dumb and he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw and all the people were amazed and said is not this the son of David but when the Pharisees heard it they said this fellow doth not cast out devils but by Beelzebub the prince of the devils and Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand and if Satan cast out Satan he is divided against himself how shall then his kingdom stand and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judges but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God then the kingdom of God is come unto you or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house he that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad wherefore I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men and whosoever speak the word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit O generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak the good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment for by Thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned and certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered saying Master we would see a sign from thee but he answered and said unto them an evil and adulterous generation seeked after a sign and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold a greater than Jonas is here the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold a greater than Solomon is here when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none then he saith I will return into my house from whence I came out and when he is come he findeth it empty swept and garnished and goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation while he yet talked to the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother and who are my brethren and he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother the same day went jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things unto them in parable saying behold a sower went forth to sow and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit some an hundredfold some sixtyfold some thirtyfold who hath ears to hear let him hear and the disciples came and said unto him why speak
whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath therefore speak I to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear not neither do they understand and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias which saith by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them hear ye therefore the parable of the sower when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart this is he which received seed by the wayside but he that received the seed into stony places the same is he that heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it yet hath he not root in himself but heareth for a while for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word by and by he is offended he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful but he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold some sixty some thirty another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then appeared the tears also so the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir didst not thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then hath it tears he said unto them an enemy hath done this the servants said unto him wilt thou then that we go and gather them up but he said nay lest while ye gather up the tears ye root up also the wheat with them let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all seeds but when it is grown it is the greatest among herbs and becko meth tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof another parable spake he unto them it Kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables and without a parable spake he not unto them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying I will open my mouth in parables I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying declare unto us the parable of the tears of the field. He answered and said unto them he that soweth the good seed is the son of man the field is the world the good seed are the children of the kingdom but the tears are the children of the wicked one the enemy that sowed them is the devil the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels as therefore the tears are gathered and burned in the fire so shall it be in the end of this world the son of man shall Send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth and shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear let him hear again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field the which when a man hath found he hight and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind which when it was full they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels but cast the bad away so shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth Jesus saith unto them have ye understood all these things they say unto him ye lord then said he unto them therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables he departed thence and when he was come into his own country he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works is not this the carpenter's son is not his mother called Mary and his brethren and Hoseas and Simon and Judas and his sisters are they not all with us whence then hath this man all these things and they were offended in him but Jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor save in his own country and in his own house and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief at that time Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants this is the Baptist he is risen from the dead and therefore mighty works do shew forth themselves in him for Herod had laid hold on and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias sake his brother Philip's wife for said unto him it is not lawful for thee to have her and when he would have put him to death he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet but when Herod's birthday was kept the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask and she being before instructed of her mother said give me here Baptist's head in a charger and the king was sorry nevertheless for the oath's sake and them which sat with him at meat he commanded it to be given her and he sent and beheaded in the prison and his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel and she brought it to her mother and his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus when Jesus heard of it he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart and when the people had heard thereof they followed him on foot out of the cities and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick and when it was evening his disciples came to him saying this is a desert place and the time is now past send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals but Jesus said unto them they need not depart give ye them to eat and they say unto him we have here but five loaves and two fishes he said bring them hither to me and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude and they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full and they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary and in the fourth watch of the night Jesus went unto them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid and answered him and said Lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and he said come and when was come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to Jesus but when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried saying Lord save me and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him O thou of little faith wherefore didst thou doubt and when they were come into the ship the wind ceased and they that were in the ship came and worshipped him saying of a truth thou art the
Unto them why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition for God commanded saying honor thy father and mother and he that curseth father or mother let him die the death but ye say whosoever shall say to his father or his mother it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me and honor not his father or his mother he shall be free thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition ye hypocrites well did he say as prophesy of you saying this people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me but in vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men and he called the multitude and said unto them here and understand not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man but that which cometh out of the mouth this defileth a man then came his disciples and said unto him knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying but he answered and said every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up let them alone they be blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both shall fall into the ditch then answered and said unto him declare unto us this parable and Jesus said are ye also yet without understanding do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draft but those things which Proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts murders adulteries fornications thefts false witness blasphemies these are the things which defile a man but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon and behold a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him saying have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil but he answered her not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she crieth after us but he answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel then came she and worshipped him saying Lord help me but he answered and said it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs and she said truth Lord yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table then Jesus answered and said unto her O woman great is thy faith be it unto thee even as thou wilt and her daughter was made whole from that very hour and Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there and great multitudes came unto him having with them those that were lame blind dumb maimed and many others and cast them down at Jesus feet and he healed them in so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak the maimed to behold the lame to walk and the blind to see and they glorified the God of Israel then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat and I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way and his disciples say unto him whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude and Jesus saith unto them how many loaves have ye and they said seven and a few little fishes and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and break them and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude and they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full and they that did eat were four thousand men beside women and children and he sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coasts of Magdala. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven he answered and said unto them when it is evening yes say it will be fair weather for the sky is red and in the morning it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering O ye hypocrites ye can discern the face of the sky but can ye not discern the signs of the times a wicked and adulterous generation seek after a sign and there shall no sign be given unto it. But the sign of the prophet Jonas and he left them and departed and when his disciples were come to the other side they had forgotten to take bread then Jesus said unto them take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees and they reasoned among themselves saying it is because we have taken no bread which when Jesus perceived he said unto them O ye of little faith why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread do ye not yet understand. Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up how is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees when Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying whom do men say that I the son of man am and they said some say that thou art the Baptist some Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets he saith unto them but whom say ye that I am and Simon answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon Barjana for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven and I say also unto thee that thou art and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ from that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day then took him and began to rebuke him saying be it far from thee lord this shall not be unto thee but he turned and said unto get thee behind me satan thou art an offense unto me for thou savorest not the things that be of god but those that be of men then said jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his works verily I say unto you there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom and after six days Jesus taketh and his brother and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light and behold there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him then answered and said unto Jesus Lord it is good for us to be here if thou wilt let us make here three tabernacles one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias while he yet spake behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him and when the disciples heard it they fell on their face and were sore afraid and Jesus came and touched them and said arise and be not afraid and when they had lifted up their eyes they saw no man save Jesus only and as they came down from the mountain Jesus charged them saying tell the vision to no man until the son of man be risen again from the dead and his disciples asked him saying why then say the scribes that Elias must first come and Jesus answered and said unto them Elias truly shall first come and restore all things but I say unto you that Elias is come already and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of the Baptist and when they were come to the multitude there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying Lord have mercy on my son for he is lunatic and sore vexed for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water and I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him then Jesus answered
and said why could not we cast him out and Jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for verily I say unto you if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting and while they abode in Galilee Jesus said unto them the son of man shall be betrayed into the hands of men and they shall kill him and the third day he shall be raised again and they were exceeding sorry and when they were come to Capernaum they that received tribute money came to and said doth not your master pay tribute he saith yes and when he was come into the house Jesus prevented him saying what thinkest thou Simon of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers saith unto him of strangers Jesus saith unto him then are the children free notwithstanding lest we should offend them go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up and when thou hast opened his mouth thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and the at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said verily I say unto you except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven and whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea woe unto the world because of offenses for it must needs be that offenses come but woe to that man by whom the offense Cometh wherefore if thy hand or thy foot offend thee cut them off and cast them from thee it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire and if thine eye offend thee pluck it out and cast it from thee it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones for I say unto you that in heaven there angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven for the son of man is come to save that which was lost how think ye if a man have an hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seek that which is gone astray and if so be that he find it verily I say unto you he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray even so it is not the will of your father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone if he shall hear thee thou hast gained thy brother but if he will not hear thee then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established and if he shall neglect to hear them tell it unto the church but if he neglect to hear the church let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a Public and verily I say unto you whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven for where two or three are gathered together in my name there am I in the midst of them then came to him and said Lord how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times Jesus saith unto him I say not unto thee until seven times but until seventy times seven therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants and when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents but for as much as he had not to pay his lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him saying lord have patience with me and I will pay thee all then the lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him an hundred pence and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying pay me that thou owest and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying have patience with me and I will pay thee all and he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt so when his fellow servants saw what was done they were very sorry and came and told unto their lord all that was done and his lord after that he had called him said unto him O thou wicked servant I forgave thee all that debt because thou desiredst me shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant even as I had pity on thee and his lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings he departed from Galilee and came into the coasts of Judea beyond Jordan and great multitudes followed him and he healed them there the Pharisees also came unto him tempting him and saying unto him is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause and he answered and said unto them have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore God hath joined together let not man put asunder they say unto him why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away he saith unto them Moses because of the hardness of your hearts suffered you to put away your wives but from the beginning it was not so and I say unto you whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committeth adultery and whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery his disciples say unto him if the case of the man be so with his wife it is not good to marry but he said unto them all men cannot receive the saying save they to whom it is given for there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake he that is able to receive it let him receive it then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray and the disciples rebuked them but Jesus said suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of heaven and he laid his Hands on them and departed thence and behold one came and said unto him good master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life and he said unto him why callest thou me good there is none good but one that is God but if thou wilt enter into life keep the commandments he saith unto him which Jesus said thou shalt do no murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the young man saith unto him all these things have I kept from my youth up what lack I yet Jesus said unto him if thou wilt be perfect go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me but when the young man heard that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions then said Jesus unto his disciples verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven and again I say unto you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God when his disciples heard it they were exceedingly amazed saying who then can be saved but Jesus beheld them and said unto them with men this is impossible but with God all things are possible then answered and said unto him behold we have forsaken all and followed thee what shall we have therefore and Jesus said unto them verily I say unto you that yet which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory yet also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel and everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or
an householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day he sent them into his vineyard and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the ed place and said unto them go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right I will give you and they went their way again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise and about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them why stand ye here all the day idle they say unto him because no man hath hired us he saith unto them go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right that shall ye receive so when even was come the lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward call the laborers and give them their hire beginning from the last unto the first and when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour they received every man a penny but when the first came they supposed that they should have received more and they likewise received every man a penny and when they had received it they murmured against the good men of the house saying these last have wrought but one hour and thou hast made them equal unto us which have borne the burden and heat of the day but he answered one of them and said friend i do thee no wrong didst not thou agree with me for a penny take that thine is and go thy way i will give unto this last even as unto thee is it not lawful for me to do what i will with mine own is thine i evil because i am good so the last shall be first and the first last for many be called but few chosen and jesus going up to jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them behold we go up to jerusalem and the son of man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him and the third day he shall rise again then came to him the mother of zebedee's children with her sons worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him and he said unto her what wilt thou she saith unto him grant that these my two sons may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom but jesus answered and said ye know not what ye ask are ye able to drink of the cup that i shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that i am baptized with they say unto him we are able and he saith unto them ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that i am baptized with but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father and when the ten heard it they were moved with indignation against the two brethren but jesus called them unto him and said ye know that the princes of the gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority upon them but it shall not be so among you but whosoever will be great among you let him be your minister and whosoever will be chief among you let him be your servant even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many and as they departed from Jericho a great multitude followed him and behold two blind men sitting by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed by cried out saying have mercy on us O Lord thou son of David and the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace but they cried the more saying have mercy on us O Lord thou son of David and Jesus stood still and called them and said what will ye that I shall do unto you they say unto him Lord that our eyes may be opened so Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives then sent Jesus two disciples saying unto them go into the village over against you and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a cold with her loose them and bring them unto me and if any man say aught unto you ye shall say the Lord hath need of them and straightway he will send them all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell ye the daughter of Zion behold thy king cometh unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass and a colt the foal of an ass and the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way and the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying Hosanna to the son of David blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest and when he was come into Jerusalem all the city was moved saying who is this and the multitude said this is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying Hosanna to the son of David they were sore displeased and said unto him hearest thou what these say and Jesus saith unto them ye have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise and he left them and went out of the city into Bethany and he lodged there now in the morning as he returned into the city he hungered and when he saw a fig tree in the way he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and said unto it let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever and presently the fig tree withered away and when the disciples saw it they marveled saying how soon is the fig tree withered away Jesus answered and said unto them verily I say unto you if ye have faith and doubt not ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree but also if ye shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea it shall be done and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer believing ye shall receive and when he was come into the temple the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said by what authority doest thou these things and who gave thee this authority and Jesus answered and said unto them I also will ask you one thing which if ye tell me I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of whence was it from heaven or of men and they reasoned with themselves saying if we shall say from heaven he will say unto us why did ye not then believe him but if we shall say of men we fear the people for all hold as a prophet and they answered Jesus and said we cannot tell and he said unto them neither tell I you by what authority I do these things but what think ye a certain man had two sons and he came to the first and said son go work today in my vineyard he answered and said I will not but afterward he repented and went and he came to the second and said likewise and he answered and said I go sir and went not whether of them twain did the will of his father they say unto him the first Jesus saith unto them verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you for came unto you in the way of righteousness and ye believed him not but the publicans and the harlots believed him and ye when ye had seen it repented not afterward that ye might believe him here another parable there was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country and when the time of the fruit drew near he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it and the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another again he sent other servants more than the first and they did unto them likewise but last of all he sent unto them his son saying they will reverence my son but when the husbandmen saw the son they said among themselves this is the heir come let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance and they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him when the lord therefore of the vineyard cometh what will he do unto those husbandmen they say unto him he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen which shall render him the fruits in their seasons jesus saith unto them did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same is become the head of the corner this is the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes therefore say i unto you the kingdom of god shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof and whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken 
but on whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder and when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables they perceived that he spake of them but when they sought to lay hands on him they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet and Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come again he sent forth other servants saying tell them which are bidden behold I have prepared my dinner my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready come unto the marriage but they made light of it and went their ways one to his farm another to his merchandise and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them but when the king heard thereof he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city then saith he to his servants the wedding is ready but they which were bidden were not worthy go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found both bad and good and the wedding was furnished with guests and when the king came in to see the guests he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment and he saith unto him Friend how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless then said the king to the servants bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk and they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians saying master we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth neither carest thou for any man for thou regardest not the person of men tell us therefore what thinkest thou is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not but Jesus perceived their wickedness and said why tempt ye me ye hypocrites shew me the tribute money and they brought unto him a penny and he saith unto them whose is this image and superscription they say unto him Caesar's then saith he unto them render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's when they had heard these words they marveled and left him and went their way the same day came to him the Sadducees which say that there is no resurrection and asked him saying master Moses said if a man die having no children his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother now there were with us seven brethren and the first when he had married a wife deceased and having no issue left his wife unto his brother likewise the second also and the third unto the seventh and last of all the woman died also therefore in the resurrection whose wife shall she be of the seven for they all had her Jesus answered and said unto them ye do ear not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven but as touching the resurrection of the dead have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God saying I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob God is not the God of the dead but of the living and when the multitude heard this they were astonished at his doctrine but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence they were gathered together then one of them which was a lawyer asked him a question tempting him and saying master which is the great commandment in the law Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets while the Pharisees were gathered together Jesus asked them saying what think ye of Christ whose son is he they say unto him the son of David he saith unto them how then doth David in spirit call him Lord saying the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool if David then call him Lord how is he his son and no man was able to answer him a word neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses seat all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe that observe and do but do not yet after their works for they say and do not for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers but all their works they do for to be seen of men they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the ETS and to be called of men rabbi rabbi but be not yet called rabbi for one is your master even Christ and all ye are brethren and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven neither be ye called masters for one is your master even Christ but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted but woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourselves neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye devour widows houses and for a pretense make long prayer therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye compass and land to make one proselyte and when he is made ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves woe unto you ye blind guides which say whosoever shall swear by the temple it is nothing but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple he is a debtor ye fools and blind for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold and whosoever shall swear by the altar it is nothing but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it he is guilty ye fools and blind for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift whoso therefore shall swear by the altar sweareth by it and by all things thereon and whoso shall swear by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein and he that shall swear by heaven sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and come in and have omitted the weightier matters of the law judgment mercy and faith these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within they are full of extortion and excess thou blind Pharisee cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto whited sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful outward but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say if we had been in the days of our fathers we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets fill ye up then the measure of your fathers ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell wherefore behold I sent unto you prophets and wise men and scribes and some of them yet shall kill and crucify and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah son of Barachias whom ye slew between the temple and the altar verily I say unto you all these things shall come upon this generation O Jerusalem Jerusalem thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee how often would I have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings and ye would not behold your house is left unto you desolate for I say unto you ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord and Jesus went out and departed
left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places all these are the beginning of sorrows then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end of same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whoso readeth let him understand and let them which be in judea flee into the mountains let him which is on the house stop not come down to take anything out of his house neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter neither on the sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened and if any man shall say unto you lo here is Christ or there believe it not for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect behold I have told you before wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert go not forth behold he is in the secret chambers believe it not for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west so shall also the coming of the son of man be for wheresoever the carcass is there will the eagles be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the sun of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branches yet tender and putteth forth leaves ye know that summer is nigh so likewise ye when ye shall see all these things know that it is near even at the doors verily I say unto you this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away but of that day and hour know it no man know not the angels of heaven but my father only but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be then shall two be in the field the one shall be taken and the other left two women shall be grinding at the mill the one shall be taken and the other left watch therefore for ye know not what hour your lord doth come but know this that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season blessed is that servant whom his lord when he cometh shall find so doing verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart my lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken the lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looked not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their Lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out but the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut afterward came also the other virgin saying lord lord open to us but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not watch therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one he gave five talents to another two and to another one two Every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lord's money after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying lord thou deliveredst unto me five talents behold i have gained beside them five talents more his lord said unto him well done thou good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of thy lord he also that had received two talents came and said lord thou deliveredst unto me two talents behold i have gained two other talents beside them his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of thy lord then he which had received the one talent came and said lord i knew thee that thou art an hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw and i was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there thou hast that is thine his lord answered and said unto him thou wicked and slothful servant thou knewest that i reap where i sowed not and gather where i have not straw thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming i should have received mine own with usury take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents for unto every one that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath and cast yet the unprofitable servant into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then shall the king say unto them on his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was in hunger and ye gave me meat i was thirsty and ye gave me drink i was a stranger and ye took me in naked and ye clothed me i was sick and ye visited me i was in prison and ye came unto me then shall the righteous answer him saying lord when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee and the king shall answer and say 
Unto them verily I say unto you inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for I was in hunger and ye gave me no meat I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink I was a stranger and ye took me not in naked and ye clothed me not sick and in prison and ye visited me not then shall they also answer him. Saying Lord when saw we thee an hungered or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee then shall he answer them saying verily I say unto you inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these ye did it not to me and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal and it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings he said unto his disciples ye know that after two days is the feast of it. Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him but they said not on the feast day lest there be an uproar among the people now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat but when his disciples saw it they had indignation saying to what purpose is this waste for this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor when Jesus understood it he said unto them why trouble ye the woman for she hath wrought a good work upon me for ye have the poor always with you but me ye have not always for in that she hath poured this ointment on my body she did it for my burial verily I say unto you Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests and said unto them what will ye give me and I will deliver him unto you and they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver and from that time he sought opportunity to betray him now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover and he said go into the city to such a man and say unto him the master saith my time is at hand I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them and they made ready the Passover now when the even was come he sat down with the twelve and as they did eat he said verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me and they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him Lord is it I and he answered and said he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish the same shall betray me the son of man goeth as it is written of him but woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed it had been good for that man if he had not been born then Judas which betrayed him answered and said master is it I he said unto him thou hast said and as they were eating Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins but I say unto you I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom and when they had sung in him they went out into the mount of olives then saith Jesus unto them all ye shall be offended because of me this night for it is written I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad but after I am risen again I will go before you into Galilee answered and said unto him though all men shall be offended because of thee yet will I never be offended Jesus said unto him verily I say unto thee that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice said unto him though I should die with thee yet will I not deny thee likewise also said all the disciples then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples sit ye here while I go and pray yonder and he took with him and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy then saith he unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying O my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as thou wilt and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto what could ye not watch with me one hour watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak he went away again the second time and prayed saying O my father if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it I will be done and he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them sleep on now and take your rest behold the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners rise let us be going behold he is at hand that doth betray me and while he yet spake lo Judas one of the twelve came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying whomsoever I shall kiss that same as he hold him fast and forthwith he came to Jesus and said hail master and kissed him and Jesus said unto him friend wherefore art thou come then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him and behold one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear then said Jesus unto him put up again thy sword into his place for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be in that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me I sat daily with you teaching in the temple and ye laid no hold on me but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled then all the disciples forsook him and fled and they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest where the scribes and the elders were assembled but followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death but found none yet though many false witnesses came yet found they none at the last came two false witnesses and said this fellow said I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days and the high priest arose and said unto him answerest thou nothing what is it which these witness against thee but Jesus held his peace and the high priest answered and said unto him I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ the son of God Jesus saith unto him thou hast said nevertheless I say unto you hereafter shall ye see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven then the high priest rent his clothes saying he hath spoken blasphemy what further need have we of witnesses behold now ye have heard his blasphemy what think ye they answered and said he is guilty of death then did they spit in his face and buffeted him and others smote him with the palms of their hands saying prophesy unto us thou Christ who is he that smote thee now sat without in the palace and a damsel came unto him saying thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee but he denied before them all saying I know not what thou sayest and when he was gone out into the porch another maid saw him and said unto them that were there this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth and again he denied with an oath I do not know the man and after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to surely thou also art one of them for thy speech bereath thee then began he to curse and to swear saying I know not the man and immediately the cock crew and remembered the word of Jesus which said unto him before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice and he went out and wept bitterly when the morning was come all the chief priests and elders of the people
silver to the chief priests and elders saying I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood and they said what is that to us see thou to that and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself and the chief priests took the silver pieces and said it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood and they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying and they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of him that was valued whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me and Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him saying art thou the king of the Jews and Jesus said unto him thou sayest and when he was accused of the chief priests and elders he answered nothing then said Pilate unto him hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee and he answered him to never a word insomuch that the governor marveled greatly now at that feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas therefore when they were gathered together Pilate said unto them whom will ye that I release unto you Barabbas or Jesus which is called Christ for he knew that for envy they had delivered him when he was set down on the judgment seat his wife sent unto him saying have thou nothing to do with that just man for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus the governor answered and said unto them whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you they said Barabbas Pilate saith unto them what shall I do then with Jesus which is called Christ they all say unto him let him be crucified and the governor said why what evil hath he done but they cried out the more saying let him be crucified when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing but that rather a tumult was made he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying I am innocent of the blood of this just person see ye to it then answered all the people and said his blood be on us and on our children then released he Barabbas unto them and when he had scourged Jesus he delivered him to be crucified then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe and when they had plaid the crown of thorns they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying hail king of the Jews and they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head and after that they had mocked him they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him and as they came out they found a man of Cyrene Simon by name him they compelled to bear his cross and when they were come unto a place called Golgotha that is to say a place of a skull they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall and when he had tasted thereof he would not drink and they crucified him and parted his garments casting lots that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet they parted my garments among them and upon my vesture did they cast lots and sitting down they washed him there and set up over his head his accusation written this is Jesus the king of the Jews then were there two thieves crucified with him one on the right hand and another on the left and they that passed by reviled him wagging their heads and saying thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days save thyself if thou be the son of God come down from the cross likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said he saved others himself he cannot save if he be the king of Israel let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him he trusted in God let him deliver him now if he will have him for he said I am the son of God the thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour and about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying Eli Eli lama sabachthani that is to say my God my God why hast thou forsaken me some of them that stood there when they heard that said this man calleth for Elias and straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink the rest said let be let us see whether Elias will come to save him Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the ghost and behold the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done they feared greatly saying truly this was the son of God and many women were there beholding afar off which followed Jesus from Galilee ministering unto him among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Anhoses and the mother of Zebedee's children when the even was come there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph who also himself was Jesus' disciple he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered and when Joseph had taken the body he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn out in the rock and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed and there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre now the next day that followed the day of the preparation the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate saying sir we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive after three days I will rise again command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so the last error shall be worse than the first Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way make it as sure as ye can so they went and made the sepulchre sure sealing the stone and setting a watch in the end of the sabbath as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the women fear not ye for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen as he said come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you into Galilee there shall ye see him lo I have told you and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word and as they went to tell his disciples behold Jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him and said Jesus unto them be not afraid go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me now when they were going behold some of the watch came into the city and shoot unto the chief priests all the things that were done and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel they gave large money unto the soldiers saying say yet his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and secure you so they took the money and did as they were taught and the saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this Day then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them and when they saw him they worshipped him but some doubted and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of it. World Amen the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ the Son of God as it is written in the prophets behold I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his path straight did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins and there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem
river of Jordan confessing their sins and was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins and he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached saying there cometh one mightier than I after me the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unless I indeed have baptized you with water but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of in Jordan and straightway coming up out of the water he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him and there came a voice from heaven saying thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness and he was there in the wilderness forty days tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him now after that was put in prison Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand repent yet and believe the gospel now as he walked by the sea of Galilee he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers and Jesus said unto them come yet after me and I will make you to become fishers of men and straightway they forsook their nets and followed him and when he had gone a little further thence he saw the son of Zebedee and his brother who also were in the ship mending their nets and straightway he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him and they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us I know thee who thou art the Holy One of God and Jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace and come out of him and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him and they were all amazed insomuch that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with and but Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them and at even when the sun did set they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils and all the city was gathered together at the door and he healed many that were sick of divers diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed and Simon and they that were with him followed after him and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also for therefore came I forth and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils and there came a leper to him beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou wilt thou canst make me clean and Jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him I will be thou clean and as soon as he had spoken immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed and he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away and saith unto him see thou say nothing to any man but go thy way shew thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them but he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noised that he was in the house and straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them and they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay when Jesus saw their faith he said unto the Sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee but there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts why doth this man thus speak blasphemies who can forgive sins but God only and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves he said unto them why reason ye these things in your hearts whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk but that ye may know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sins he saith to the sick of the palsy I say unto thee arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house and immediately he arose took up the bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God saying we never saw it on this fashion and he went forth again by the seaside and all the multitude resorted unto him and he taught them and as he passed by he saw Levi the son of Alphaeus sitting at the receipt of custom and said unto him follow me and he arose and followed him and it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples for there were many and they followed him and when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners they said unto his disciples how is it that he eat and drink with publicans and sinners when Jesus heard it he saith unto them they that are whole have no need of the physician but they that are sick I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance and the disciples of end of the Pharisees used to fast and they come and say unto him why do the disciples of end of the Pharisees fast but thy disciples fast not and Jesus said unto them can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them as long as they have the bridegroom with them they cannot fast but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then shall they fast in those days no man also sew the piece of new cloth on an old garment else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old and the rent is made worse and no man putteth new wine into old bottles else the new wine doth burst the bottles and the wine is spilled and the bottles will be marred but new wine must be put into new bottles and it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the sabbath day and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn and the pharisees said unto him behold why do they on the sabbath day that which is not lawful and he said unto them have ye never read what david did when he had need and was in hunger he and they that were with him how he went into the house of god in the days of abiathar the high priest and did eat the shoe bread which is not lawful to eat but for the priests and gave also to them which were with him and he said unto them the sabbath was made for man and not man for the sabbath therefore the son of man is lord also of the sabbath and he entered again into the synagogue and there was a man there which had a withered hand and they watched him whether he would heal him on the sabbath day that they might accuse him and he saith unto the man which had the withered hand stand forth and he saith unto them is it lawful to do good on the sabbath days or to do evil to save life or to kill but they held their peace and when he had looked round about on them with anger being grieved for the hardness of their hearts he saith unto the man stretch forth thine hand and he stretched it out and his hand was restored whole as the other and the pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the herodians against him how they might destroy him but jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea and a great multitude from galilee followed him and from judea and from jerusalem and from Egemia and from Beyond Jordan and they about Tyre and Sidon a great multitude when they had heard what great things he did came unto him and he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude lest they should throng him for he had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had
Make him known and he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would and they came unto him and he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils and Simon he surnamed and the son of Zebedee and the brother of and he surnamed them Boneurks which is the sons of Thunder and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and, and Thomas and the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. And Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot which also betrayed him and they went into an house and the multitude cometh together again so that they could not so much as eat bread and when his friends heard of it they went out to lay hold on him for they said he is beside himself and the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said he hath Beelzebub and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can Satan cast out Satan and if a kingdom be divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand and if a house be divided against itself that house cannot stand and if Satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but hath an end no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house verily I say unto you all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation because they said he hath an unclean spirit there came then his brethren and his mother and standing without sent unto him calling him and the multitude sat about him and they said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee and he answered them saying who is my mother or my brethren and he looked round about on them which sat about him and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of God the same is my brother and my sister and mother and he began again to teach by the seaside and there was gathered unto him a great multitude so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land and he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine hearken behold there went out a sower to sow and it came to pass as he sowed some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up and some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth but when the sun was up it was scorched and because it had no root it withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit and other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty and some sixty and some an hundred and he said unto them he that hath ears to hear let him hear and when he was alone they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable and he said unto them unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them and he said unto them know ye not this parable and how then will ye know all parables the sower soweth the word and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they have heard satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution or is it for the word's sake immediately they are offended and these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful and these are they which are sown on good ground such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit some thirtyfold some sixty and some an hundred and he said unto them is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested neither was anything kept secret but that it should come abroad if any man have ears to hear let him hear and he said unto them take heed what ye hear with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you and unto you that here shall more be given for he that hath to him shall be given and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath and he said so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not how for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself first the blade then the ear after that the full corn in the ear but when the fruit is brought forth immediately he putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come and he said where unto shall we liken the kingdom of God or with what comparison shall we compare it it is like a Grain of mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth but when it is sown it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and shoot out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it and with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it but without a parable spake he not unto them and when they were alone he expounded all things to his disciples and the same day when the even was come he saith unto them let us pass over unto the other side and when they had sent away the multitude they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea Peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are ye so fearful how is it that ye have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said one to another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes and when he was come out of the ship immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him no not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of the most high God I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not for he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is legion for we are many and he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils besought him saying send us into the swine that we may enter into them and forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea they were about two thousand and were choked in the sea and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine and they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts and when he was come into the ship he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him howbeit Jesus suffered him not but saith unto him go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee and he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel and when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side much people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea and behold there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue Jairus by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet and besought him greatly saying my little daughter Leah at the point of death I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live and Jesus went with him and much people followed him.
and thronged him and a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I may touch but his clothes I shall be whole and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said who touched my clothes and his disciples said unto him thou seest the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched me and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and he said unto her daughter thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague while he yet spake there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said thy daughter is dead why troublest thou the master any further as soon as jesus heard the word that was spoken he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue be not afraid only believe and he suffered no man to follow him save and and the brother of and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly and when he was come in he saith unto them why make ye this ado and weep the damsel is not dead but sleepeth and they laughed him to scorn but when he had put them all out he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entereth in where the damsel was lying and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her talitha kumi which is being interpreted damsel I say unto thee arise and straightway the damsel arose and walked for she was of the age of twelve years and they were astonished with a great astonishment and he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat and he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples follow him and when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence hath this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his Hence is not this the carpenter the son of Mary the brother of and Hosea's and of Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us and they were offended at him but Jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house and he could there do no mighty work save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them and he marveled because of their unbelief and he went round about the villages teaching and he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey save a staff only no script no bread no money in their purse but be shod with sandals and not put on two coats and he said unto them in what place soever ye enter into an house there abide till ye depart from that place and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you when ye depart thence shake off it dust under your feet for a testimony against them verily I say unto you it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city and they went out and preached that men should repent and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them and King Herod heard of him for his name was spread abroad and he said that the Baptist was risen from the dead and therefore mighty works do shew forth themselves in him others said that it is Elias and others said that it is a prophet or as one of the prophets but when Herod heard thereof he said it is whom I beheaded he is risen from the dead for Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon and bound him in prison for Herodias sake his brother Philip's wife for he had married her for had said unto Herod it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him but she could not for Herod feared knowing that he was a just man and an holy and observed him and when he heard him he did many things and heard him gladly and when a convenient day was come that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lord's high captains and chief estates of Galilee and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him the king said unto the damsel ask of me whatsoever thou wilt and I will give it thee and he sware unto her whatsoever thou shalt ask of me I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom and she went forth and said unto her mother what shall I ask and she said the head of the Baptist and she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked saying I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of the Baptist and the king was exceeding sorry yet for his oath's sake and for their sakes which sat with him he would not reject her and immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought and he went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head in a charger and gave it to the damsel and the damsel gave it to her mother and when his disciples heard of it they came and took up his corpse and laid it in a tomb and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things both what they had done and what they had taught and he said unto them come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while for there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat and they departed into a desert place by ship privately and the people saw them departing and many knew him and ran afoot thither out of all cities and out went them and came together unto him and Jesus when he came out saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd and he began to teach them many things and when the day was now far spent his disciples came unto him and said this is a desert place and now the time is far past send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat he answered and said unto them give ye them to eat and they say unto him shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat he saith unto them how many loaves have ye go and see and when they knew they say five and two fishes and he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass and they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes he looked up to heaven and blessed and brake the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fishes divided he among them all and they did all eat and were filled and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes and they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people and when he had sent them away he departed into a mountain to pray and when even was come the ship was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land and he saw them toiling and rowing for the wind was contrary unto them and about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed by them but when they saw him walking upon the sea they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out for they all saw him and were troubled and immediately he talked with them and saith unto them be of good cheer it is I be not afraid and he went up unto them into the ship and the wind ceased and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered for they considered not the miracle of the loaves for their heart was hardened and when they had passed over they came into the land of Genesaret and drew to the shore and when they were come out of the ship straightway they knew him and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was and whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment and as many as touched him were made whole and came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled that is to say with unwashed hands they found fault for the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands oft eat not holding the tradition of the elders and when they come from the ET except they wash they eat not and many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots brazen vessels and of tables and the Pharisees and Scribes asked him why walk
Such like things ye do and he said unto them full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition for Moses said honor thy father and thy mother and whoso curseth father or mother let him die the death but ye say if a man shall say to his father or mother it is korban that is to say a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me he shall be free and ye suffer him no more to do offer his father or his mother making the word of God of none effect. Through your tradition which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye and when he had called all the people unto him he said unto them hearken unto me every one of you and understand there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him but the things which come out of him those are they that defile the man if any man have ears to hear let him hear and when he was entered into the house from the people his disciples asked him concerning the parable and he saith unto them or yes so without understanding also do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man it cannot defile him because it entereth not into his heart but into the belly and goeth out into the draft purging all meats and he said that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts adulteries fornications murders thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lasciviousness and evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness all these evil things come from within and defile the man and from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it but he could not be hid for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet the woman was a Greek a Syrophoenician by nation and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter but Jesus said unto her let the children first be filled for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs and she answered and said unto him yes lord yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs and he said unto her for the saying go thy way the devil is gone out of thy daughter and when she was come to her house she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed and again departing from the coasts of Tyre and Sidon he came unto the sea of Galilee through the midst of the coasts of Decapolis and they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech and they beseech him to put his hand upon him and he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue and looking up to heaven he sighed and saith unto him Ephatha that is be opened and straightway his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plain and he charged them that they should tell no man but the more he charged them so much the more a great deal they published it and were beyond measure astonished saying he hath done all things well he make both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak in those days the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat and if I send them away fasting to their own houses they will faint by the way for divers of them came from far and his disciples answered him from whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness and he asked them how many loaves have ye and they said seven and he commanded the people to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break and gave to his disciples to set before them and they did set them before the people and they had a few small fishes and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them so they did eat and were filled and they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets and they that had eaten were about four thousand and he sent them away and straightway he entered into a ship with his disciples and came into the parts of Dalmanatha and the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him seeking of him a sign from heaven tempting him and he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith why doth this generation seek after a sign verily I say unto you there shall no sign be given unto this generation and he left them and entering into the ship again departed to the other side now the disciples had forgotten to take bread neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf and he charged them saying take heed beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod and they reasoned among themselves saying it is because we have no bread and when Jesus knew it he saith Unto them why reason ye because ye have no bread perceive ye not yet neither understand have ye your heart yet hardened having eyes see ye not and having ears hear ye not and do ye not remember when I break the five loaves among five thousand how many baskets full of fragments took ye up they say unto him twelve and when the seven among four thousand how many baskets full of fragments took ye up and they said seven and he said unto them how is it that ye do not understand and he cometh to Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town and when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him he asked him if he saw and he looked up and said I see men as trees walking after that he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly and he sent him away to his house saying neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town and Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi and by the way he asked his disciples saying unto them whom do men say that I am and they answered the Baptist but some say Elias and others one of the prophets and he saith unto them but whom say ye that I am and answereth and saith unto him thou art the Christ and he charged them that they should tell no man of him and he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again and he spake that saying openly and took him and began to rebuke him but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples he rebuked saying get thee behind me Satan for thou savorest not the things that be of God but the things that be of men and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels the same shall save it for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels and he said unto them verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power and after six days Jesus taketh with him and and, and ledeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them and his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow so as no fuller on earth can white them and there appeared unto them Elias with Moses and they were talking with Jesus and answered and said to Jesus master it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias for he wist not what to say for they were sore afraid and there was a cloud that overshadowed them and a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son hear him and suddenly when they had looked round about they saw no man any more save Jesus only with themselves and as they came down from the mountain he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the son of man were risen from the dead and they kept that saying with themselves questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean and they asked him saying why say the scribes that Elias must first come and he answered and told them Elias verily cometh first and restoreth all things and how it is written of the son of man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed as it is written of him and when he came to his disciples he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them and straightway all the people when they beheld him were greatly amazed and running to him saluted him and he asked the scribes what question ye with them and one of the multitude answered and said master I have brought unto thee my son which hath a dumb 
spirit and wheresoever he taketh him he teareth him and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out and they could not he answereth him and saith O faithless generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I suffer you bring him unto me and they brought him unto him and when he saw him straightway the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming and he asked his father how long is it ago since. This came unto him and he said of a child and oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us Jesus said unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears Lord I believe help thou mine unbelief when Jesus saw that the people came running together he rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him thou dumb and deaf spirit I charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him and the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him and he was as one dead insomuch that many said he is dead but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose and when he was come into the house his disciples asked him privately why could not we cast him out and he said unto them this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting and they departed thence and passed through Galilee and he would not that any man should know before he taught his disciples and said unto them the son of man is delivered into the hands of men and they shall kill him and after that he is killed he shall rise the third day but they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him and he came to Capernaum and being in the house he asked them what was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way but they held their peace for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest and he sat down and called the twelve and saith unto them if any man desire to be first the same shall be last of all and servant of all and he took a child and set him in the midst of them and when he had taken him in his arms he said unto them whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me and whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me but him that sent me and answered him saying master we saw one casting out devils in thy name and he followeth not us and we forbid him because he followeth not us but jesus said forbid him not for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me for he that is not against us is on our part for whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name because ye belong to christ verily i say unto you he shall not lose his reward and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea and if thy hand offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched and if thy foot offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched and if thine eye offend thee pluck it out it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched for every one shall be salted with fire and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt salt is good but if the salt have lost his saltness wherewith will ye season it have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another and he arose from thence and cometh into the coasts of Judea by the farther side of Jordan and the people resort unto him again and as he was wont he taught them again and the Pharisees came to him and asked him is it lawful for a man to put away his wife tempting him and he answered and said unto them what did Moses command you and they said Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away and Jesus answered and said unto them for the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept but from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh so then they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore God hath joined together let not man put asunder and in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter and he saith unto them whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her and if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another she committeth adultery and they brought young children to him that he should touch them and his disciples rebuked those that brought them but when Jesus saw it he was much displeased and said unto them suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of God verily I say unto you whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child he shall not enter therein and he took them up in his arms put his hands upon them and blessed them and when he was gone forth into the way there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him good master what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life and Jesus said unto him why callest thou me good there is none good but one that is God thou knowest the commandments do not commit adultery do not kill do not steal do not bear false witness defraud not honor thy father and mother and he answered and said unto him master all these have I observed from my youth then Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him one thing thou lackest go thy way sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions and Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God and the disciples were astonished at his words but Jesus answereth again and saith unto them children how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God and they were astonished out of measure saying among themselves who then can be saved and Jesus looking upon them saith with men it is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible then began to say unto him lo we have left all and have followed thee and Jesus answered and said verily I say unto you there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life but many that are first shall be last and the last first and they were in the way going up to Jerusalem and Jesus went before them and they were amazed and as they followed they were afraid and he took again the twelve and began to tell them what things should happen unto him saying behold we go up to Jerusalem and the son of man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles and they shall mock him and shall scourge him and shall spit upon him and shall kill him and the third day he shall rise again and, and the sons of Zebedee come unto him saying master we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire and he said unto them what would ye that I should do for you they said unto him grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory but Jesus said unto them ye know not what ye ask can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with and they said unto him we can and Jesus said unto them ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized but to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared and when the ten heard it they began to be much displeased with and but Jesus called them to him and saith unto them ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and there great ones exercise authority upon them but so shall it not be among you but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to
he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to cry out and say Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me and many charged him that he should hold his peace but he cried the more a great deal thou son of David have mercy on me and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called and they called the blind man saying unto him be of good comfort rise he calleth thee and he casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus and Jesus answered and said unto him what wilt thou that I should? Do unto thee the blind man said unto him Lord that I might receive my sight and Jesus said unto him go thy way thy faith hath made thee whole and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way and when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them go your way into the village over against you and as soon as ye be entered into it ye shall find a cold tide whereon never man set loose him and bring him and if any man say unto you why do ye say ye that the Lord hath need of him and straightway he will send him hither and they went their way and found the cold tide by the door without in a place where two ways met and they loose him and certain of them that stood there said unto them what do ye loosing the cold and they said unto them even as Jesus had commanded and they let them go and they brought the cold to Jesus and cast their garments on him and he sat upon him and many spread their garments in the way and others cut down branches off the trees and straw them in the way and they that went before and they that followed cried saying Hosanna blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple and when he had looked round about upon all things and now the eventide was come he went out unto Bethany with the twelve and on the morrow when they were come from Bethany he was hungry and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves he came if haply he might find anything thereon and when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet and Jesus answered and said unto it no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever and his disciples heard it and they come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple and he taught saying unto them is it not written my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves and the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him for they feared him because all the people was astonished at his doctrine and when even was come he went out of the city and in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and calling to remembrance saith unto him Master behold the fig tree which thou cursedst is withered away and Jesus answering saith unto them have faith in God for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them and when ye stand praying forgive if ye have against any that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses but if ye do not forgive neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses and they come again to Jerusalem and as he was walking in the temple there come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders and say unto him by what authority doest thou these things and who gave thee this authority to do these things and Jesus answered and said unto them I will also ask of you one question and answer me and I will tell you by what authority I do these things the baptism of was it from heaven or of men answer me and they reasoned with themselves saying if we shall say from heaven he will say why then did ye not believe him but if we shall say of men they feared the people for all men counted that he was a prophet indeed and they answered and said unto Jesus we cannot tell and Jesus answering saith unto them neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things and he began to speak unto them by parables a certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it and digged the place for the wine pot and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country and at the season he sent to the husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard and they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty and again he sent unto them another servant and at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled and again he sent another and him they killed and many others beating some and killing some having yet therefore one son his well beloved he sent him also last unto them saying they will reverence my son but those husbandmen said among themselves this is the heir come let us kill him and the inheritance shall be ours and they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard what shall therefore the lord of the vineyard do he will come and destroy the husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others and have ye not read the scripture the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner this was the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes and they sought to lay hold on him but feared the people for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them and they left him and went their way and they sent unto him certain of the pharisees and of the herodians to catch him in his words and when they were come they say unto him master we know that thou art true and carest for no man for thou regardest not the person of men but teachest the way of god in truth is it lawful to give tribute to caesar or not shall we give or shall we not give but he knowing their hypocrisy said unto them why tempt ye me bring me a penny that I may see it and they brought it and he saith unto them whose is this image and superscription and they said unto him Caesar's and Jesus answering said unto them render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's and they marveled at him then come unto him the Sadducees which say there is no resurrection and they asked him saying master Moses wrote unto us if a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him and leave no children that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother now there were seven brethren and the first took a wife and dying left no seed and the second took her and died neither left he any seed and the third likewise and the seven had her and left no seed last of all the woman died also in the resurrection therefore when they shall rise whose wife shall she be of them for the seven had her to wife and Jesus answering said unto them do ye not therefore err because ye know not the scriptures neither the power of God for when they shall rise from the dead they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels which are in heaven and as touching the dead that they rise have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him saying I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob he is not the God of the dead but the God of the living ye therefore do greatly err and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well asked him which is the first commandment of all and Jesus answered him the first of all the commandments is here O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is the first commandment and the second is like Namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other commandment greater than these and the scribe said unto him well master thou hast said the truth for there is one God and there is none other but he and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices and when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly he said unto him thou art not far from the kingdom of God and no man after that durst ask him any question and Jesus answered and said while he taught in the temple how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David for David himself said by the Holy Ghost the Lord said to my Lord sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool David therefore himself calleth him Lord and whence is he then his son and the common people heard him gladly and he said unto
of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the et places and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feasts which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers these shall receive greater damnation and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much and there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites which make a farthing and he called unto him his disciples and saith unto them verily I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury for all they did cast in of their abundance but she of her want did cast in all that she had even all her living and as he went out of the temple one of his disciples saith unto him master see what manner of stones and what buildings are here and Jesus answering said unto him seest thou these great buildings there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and as he sat upon the mount of olives over against the temple and and, and Andrew asked him privately tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled and Jesus answering them began to say take heed lest any man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many and when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars be ye not troubled for such things must needs be but the end shall not be yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be earthquakes in divers places and there shall be famines and troubles these are the beginnings of sorrows but take heed to yourselves for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the gospel must first be published among all nations but when they shall lead you and deliver you up take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak neither do ye premeditate but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour that speak ye for it is not ye that speak but the Holy Ghost now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father the son and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved but when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not let him that redeath understand and let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains and let him that is on the house stop not go down into the house neither enter therein to take anything out of his house and let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment but woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days and pray ye that your flight be not in the winter for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time neither shall be and except that the Lord had shortened those days no flesh should be saved but for the elect's sake whom he hath chosen he hath shortened the days and then if any man shall say to you lo here is Christ or lo he is there believe him not for false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce if it were possible even the elect but take ye heed behold I have foretold you all things but in those days after that tribulation the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory and then shall he send his angels and shall Gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven now learn a parable of the fig tree when her branches yet tender and putteth forth leaves ye know that summer is near so ye in like manner when ye shall see these things come to pass know that it is nigh even at the doors verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away but of that day and that hour know it no man know not the angels which are in heaven neither the son but the father take ye heed watch and pray for ye know not when the time is for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch watch ye therefore for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping and what I say unto you I say unto all watch after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death but they said not on the feast day lest there be an uproar of the people and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper as he sat at meat there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard very precious and she break the box and poured it on his head and there were some that had indignation within themselves and said why was this waste of the ointment made for it might have been sold for more than three hundred pence and have been given to the poor and they murmured against her and Jesus said let her alone why trouble ye her she hath wrought a good work on me for ye have the poor with you always and whensoever ye will ye may do them good but me ye have not always she hath done what she could she is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying verily I say unto you wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her and Judas Iscariot one of the twelve went unto the chief priests to betray him unto them and when they heard it they were glad and promised to give him money and he sought how he might conveniently betray him and the first day of unleavened bread when they killed the Passover his disciples said unto him where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover and he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them go ye into the city and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water follow him and wheresoever he shall go and say ye to the goodman of the house the master saith where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples and he will shew you a large upper room furnished and prepared there. Make ready for us and his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them and they made ready the Passover and in the evening he cometh with the twelve and as they sat and did eat Jesus said verily I say unto you one of you which eateth with me shall betray me and they began to be sorrowful and to say unto him one by one is it I and another said is it I and he answered and said unto them it is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed good were it for that man if he had never been born and as they did eat Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and they all drank of it and he said unto them this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many verily I say unto you I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God and when they had sung in him they went out into the Mount of Olives and Jesus saith unto them all ye shall be offended because of me this night for it is written I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered but after that I am risen I will go before you into Galilee but said unto him although all shall be offended yet will not I and Jesus saith unto him verily I say unto thee that this day even in this night before the cock crow twice thou shalt deny me thrice but he spake the more vehemently if I should die with thee I will not deny thee in any wise likewise also said they all and they came to a place which was named Gethsemane and he saith to his disciples sit ye here while I shall pray and he taketh with him and and, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy and saith unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death tarry ye here and watch and he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him and he said Abba Father all things are possible unto thee take away this cup from me nevertheless not what I will but what thou wilt and he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Simon sleepest thou couldest not thou watch one hour watch ye and pray lest ye enter into temptation the spirit truly is ready
and spake the same words and when he returned he found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy neither wist they what to answer him and he cometh the third time and saith unto them sleep on now and take your rest it is enough the hour is come behold the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners rise up let us go lo he that betrayeth me is at hand and immediately while he yet spake cometh Judas one of the twelve and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders and he that betrayed him had given them a token saying whomsoever I shall kiss that same as he take him and lead him away safely and as soon as he was come he goeth straightway to him and saith master master and kissed him and they laid their hands on him and took him and one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear and Jesus answered and said unto them are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me I was daily with you in the temple teaching and ye took me not but the scriptures must be fulfilled and they all forsook him and fled and there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body and the young men laid hold on him and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked and they led Jesus away to the high priest and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes and followed him afar off even into the palace of the high priest and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire and the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none for many bear false witness against him but their witness agreed not together and there arose certain and bear false witness against him saying we heard him say I will destroy this temple that is made with hands and within three days I will build another made without hands but neither so did their witness agree together and the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus saying answerest thou nothing what is it which these witness against thee but he held his peace and answered nothing again the high priest asked him and said unto him art thou the Christ the son of the blessed and Jesus said I am and ye shall see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven then the high priest rent his clothes and saith what need we any further witnesses ye have heard the blasphemy what think ye and they all condemned him to be guilty of death and some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him prophesy and the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands and as was beneath in the palace there cometh one of the maids of the high priest and when she saw warming himself she looked upon him and said and thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth but he denied saying I know not neither understand I what thou sayest and he went out into the porch and the cock crew and a maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by this is one of them and he denied it again and a little after they that stood by said again to surely thou art one of them for thou art a Galilean and thy speech agreed thereto but he began to curse and to swear saying I know not this man of whom ye speak and the second time the cock crew and called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him before the cock crow twice thou shalt deny me thrice and when he thought thereon he wept and straightway in the morning the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate and Pilate asked him art thou the king of the Jews and he answering said unto him thou sayest it and the chief priests accused him of many things but he answered nothing and Pilate asked him again saying answerest thou nothing behold how many things they witness against thee but Jesus yet answered nothing so that Pilate marveled now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner whomsoever they desired and there was one named Barabbas which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection and the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them but Pilate answered them saying will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews for he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy but the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them and Pilate answered and said again unto them what will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews and they cried out again crucify him then Pilate said unto them why what evil hath he done and they cried out the more exceedingly crucify him and so Pilate willing to content the people released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified and the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium and they called together the whole band and they clothed him with purple and plait the crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him hail king of the Jews and they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him and when they had mocked him they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him and they compel one Simon a Cyrenian who passed by coming out of the country the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross and they bring him unto the place Golgotha which is being interpreted the place of a skull and they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh but he received it not and when they had crucified him they parted his garments casting lots upon them what every man should take and it was the third hour and they crucified him and the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews and with him they crucified two thieves the one on his right hand and the other on his left and the scripture was fulfilled which saith and he was numbered with the transgressors and they that passed by railed on him wagging their heads and saying ah thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days save thyself and come down from the cross likewise also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes he saved others himself he cannot save let Christ the king of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe and they that were crucified with him reviled him and when the sixth hour was come there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour and at the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying Eloi Eloi lama sabachthani which is being interpreted my God my God why hast thou forsaken me and some of them that stood by when they heard it said behold he calleth Elias and one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink saying let alone let us see whether Elias will come to take him down and Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost and the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost he said truly this man was the son of God there were also women looking on afar off among whom was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of the less and of Hoses and Salome who also when he was in Galilee followed him and ministered unto him and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem and now when the even was come because it was the preparation that is the day before the Sabbath Joseph of Arimathea an honorable counselor which also waited for the kingdom of God came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus and Pilate marveled if he were already dead and calling unto him the centurion he asked him whether he had been any while dead and when he knew it of the centurion he gave the body to Joseph and he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulcher and Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Hoses beheld where he was laid and when the Sabbath was past Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Ansalome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him and very early in the morning the first day of the week they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun and they said among themselves who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher and when they looked they saw that the stone was rolled away for it was very Great and entering into the sepulchre they saw a young man sitting on the right side clothed in a long white garment and they were affrighted and he saith unto them be not affrighted yes seek Jesus of Nazareth which was crucified he is risen he is not here behold the place where they laid him but go your way tell his disciples and that he goeth before you into Galilee there shall ye see him as he said unto you and they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre for they trembled and 
were amazed neither said they anything to any man for they were afraid now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week he appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils and she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept and they when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her believed not after that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country and they went and told it unto the residue neither believed they them afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so then after the Lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following amen for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed there was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth and they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course according to the custom of the priest's office his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense and when Zacharias saw him he was troubled and fear fell upon him but the angel said unto him fear not Zacharias for thy prayer is heard and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name and thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord and Zacharias said unto the angel whereby shall I know this for I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years and the angel answering said unto him I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to shew thee these glad tidings and behold thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season and the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple and when he came out he could not speak unto them and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless and it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished he departed to his own house and after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months saying thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men and in the sixth month it Angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and the angel came in unto her and said Hail thou that art highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and when she saw him she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be and the angel said unto her fear not Mary for thou hast found favor with God and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end and said Mary unto the angel how shall this be seeing I know not a man and the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God and behold thy cousin Elizabeth she hath also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren for with God nothing shall be impossible and Mary said behold the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost and she spake out with a loud voice and said blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me for lo as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears the babe leaped in my womb for joy and blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord and Mary said my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden for behold from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed for he that is mighty hath done to me great things and holy is his name and his mercy is on them that fear him from Generation to generation he hath shewed strength with his arm he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts he hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree he hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away he hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever and Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had shewed great mercy upon her and they rejoiced with her and it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father and his mother answered and said not so but he shall be called and they said unto her there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name and they made signs to his father how he would have him called and he asked for a writing table and wrote saying his name is and they marveled all and his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue loosed and he spake and praised God and fear came on all that dwelt round about them and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea and all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts saying what manner of child shall this be and the hand of it. Lord was with him and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied saying blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which he sware to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life and thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God whereby the 
Day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his shewing unto Israel and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed every one into his own city and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and lo the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid and the angel said unto them fear not for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior which is Christ the Lord and this shall be a sign unto you ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child his Name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb and when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Ghost was upon him and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ and he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said Lord now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word for mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother behold this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against yea a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed and there was one Anna a prophetess the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Ezer she was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity and she was a widow of about fourscore and four years which departed not from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day and she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem and when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord they returned into Galilee to their own city Nazareth and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover and when he was twelve years old they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast and when they had fulfilled the days as they returned the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it but they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance and when they found him not they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers and when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said unto him son why hast thou thus dealt with us behold thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing and he said unto them how is it that ye sought me wist ye not that I must be about my father's business and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip tetrarch of Iturea and of the region of Trachonitis and Lysanias the tetrarch of Abilene Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests the word of God came unto the son of Zacharias in the wilderness and he came into all the country about Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins as it is written in the book of the words of Esaias the prophet saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his path straight every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire and the people asked him saying what shall we do then he answereth and saith unto them he that hath two coats let him impart to him that hath none and he that hath meat let him do likewise then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him master what shall we do and he said unto them exact no more than that which is appointed you and the soldiers likewise demanded of him saying and what shall we do and he said unto them do violence to no man neither accuse any falsely and be content with your wages and as the people were in expectation and all men mused in their hearts of whether he were the christ or not answered saying unto them all i indeed baptize you with water but one mightier than i cometh the latchet of whose shoes i am not worthy to unless he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable and many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people but herod the tetrarch being reproved by him for herodias his brother philip's wife and for all the evils which herod had done added yet this above all that he shut up in prison now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was opened and the holy ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said thou art my beloved son in thee i am well pleased and jesus himself began to be about thirty years of age being as was supposed the son of joseph which was the son of heli which was the son of mothat which was the son of levi which was the son of melchi which was the son of jana which was the son of joseph which was the son of matathias which was the son of amos which was the son of nom which was the son of
which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Risa, which was the son of Zorobabel, which was the son of Solatiel, which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adi, which was the son of Kosam, which was the son of Elmodom, which was the son of Er, which was the son of Jose, which was the son of Eliezer, which was the son of Joram, which was the son of Mothat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Jonan, which was the son of Eliakim, which was the son of Malia, which was the son of Menon, which was the son of Mattatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Booz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Nasan, which was the son of Ammonadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Esram, which was the son of Phares, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Thra, which was the son of Nachar, which was the son of Sarak, which was the son of Ragal, which was the son of Philip, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Salah, which was the son of Kinan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of No, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Mathuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Melil, which was the son of Kinan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into an high mountain, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it, if thou therefore wilt. Worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began to say unto them this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said is not this Joseph's son and he said unto them yea will surely say unto me this proverb physician heal thyself whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum do also here in thy country and he said verily I say unto you no prophet is accepted in his own country but I tell you of a truth many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias when the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land but unto none of them was Elias sent save unto Sarepta a city of Sidon unto a woman that was a widow and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet and none of them was cleansed saving Naaman the Syrian and all they in the synagogue when they heard these things were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong but he passing through the midst of them went his way and came down to Capernaum a city of Galilee and taught them on the Sabbath days and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us I know thee who thou art the Holy One of God and Jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace and come out of him and when the devil had thrown him in the midst he came out of him and hurt him not and they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying what a word is this for with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out and the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about and he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house and Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever and they besought him for her and he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her and immediately she arose and ministered unto them now when the sun was setting all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them and devils also came out of many crying out and saying thou art Christ the son of God and he rebuking them suffered them not to speak for they knew that he was Christ and when it was day he departed and went into a desert place and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them and he said unto them I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also for therefore am I sent and he preached in the synagogues of Galilee and it came to pass that as the People pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Oh. Lord for he was astonished and all that were with him at the draft of the fishes which they had taken and so was also and the sons of Zebedee which were partners with Simon and Jesus said unto Simon fear not from henceforth thou shalt catch men and when they had brought their ships to land they forsook all and followed him and it came to pass when he was in a certain city behold a man full of leprosy who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying Lord if thou wilt thou canst make me clean and he put forth his hand and touched him saying I will be thou clean and immediately the leprosy departed from him and he charged him to tell no man but go and shew thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the
Know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of fast often and make prayers? And likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but thy eat and drink. And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them, No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old, if otherwise then both the new make they rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeth not with the old, and no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish, but new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better, and it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn, and did eat rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do ye that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days? And Jesus answering them said, Have ye not read so much as this what David did when himself was in hungered, and they which were with him, how he went into the house of God, and did take and eat the shewbread, and gave also to them that were with him, which it is not lawful to eat but for the priests alone, and he said unto them that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath and it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught and there was a man whose right hand was withered and the scribes and Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him but he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand rise up and stand forth in the midst and he arose and stood forth and said Jesus unto them I will ask you one thing is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil to save life or to destroy it and looking round about upon them all he said unto the man stretch forth thy hand and he did so and his hand was restored whole as the other and they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God and when it was day he called unto him his disciples and of them he chose twelve whom also he named Apostle Simon whom he also named and Andrew his brother and Philip and Bartholomew and Thomas the son of Alphaeus and Simon called Zelotes and Judas the brother of and Judas Iscariot which also was the traitor and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed and the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went virtue out of him and healed them all and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said blessed be ye poor for yours is the kingdom of God blessed are ye that hunger now for ye shall be filled blessed are ye that weep now for ye shall laugh blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake rejoice yet in that day and leap for joy for behold your reward is great in heaven for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets but woe unto you that are rich for ye have received your consolation woe unto you that are full for ye shall hunger woe unto you that laugh now for ye shall mourn and weep woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you for so did their fathers to the false prophets but I say unto you which hear love your enemies do good to them which hate you bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you and unto him that smite thee on the one cheek offer also the other and him that taketh away thy cloak forbid not to take thy coat also give to every man that asketh of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods ask them not again and as ye would that men should do to you do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you what thank have ye for sinners also love those that love them and if ye do good to them which do good to you what thank have ye for sinners also do even the same and if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive what thank have ye for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again but love ye your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again and your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the highest for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that ye meet with all it shall be measured to you again and he spake a parable unto them can the blind lead the blind shall they not both fall into the ditch the disciple is not above his master but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye either how canst thou say to thy brother brother let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye thou hypocrite cast out first the beam out of thine own eye and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit for every tree is known by his own fruit for of thorns men do not gather figs nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speak and why Call ye me Lord Lord and do not the things which I say whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doth them I will shew you to whom he is like he is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood arose the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock but he that heareth and doth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people he entered into Capernaum and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die and when he heard of Jesus he sent unto him the elders of the Jews beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant and when they came to Jesus they besought him instantly saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this for he loveth our nation and he hath built us a synagogue then Jesus went with them and when he was now not far from the house the centurion sent friends to him saying unto him Lord trouble not thyself for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee but say in a word and my servant shall be healed for I also am a man set under authority having under me soldiers and I say unto one go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doth it when Jesus heard these things he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him I say unto you I have not found so great faith no not in Isra
Behold there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her and when the Lord saw her he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not and he came and touched the bier and they that bare him stood still and he said young man I say unto thee arise and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother and there came a fear on all and they glorified God saying that a great prophet is risen up among us and that God hath visited his people and this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about and the disciples have shewed him of all these things and calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus saying art thou he that should come or look we for another when the men were come unto him they said Baptist hath sent us unto thee saying art thou he that should come or look we for another and in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind he gave sight and Jesus answering said unto them go your way and tell what things ye have seen and heard how that the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised to the poor the gospel is preached and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me and when the messengers of were departed he began to speak unto the people concerning what went ye out into the wilderness for to see a reed shaken with the wind but what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment behold they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts but what went ye out for to see a prophet yea I say unto you and much more than a prophet this is he of whom it is written behold I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee for I say unto you among those that are born of women there is not a greater prophet than the Baptist but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he and all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of but the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him and the Lord said whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation and to what are they like they are like unto children sitting in the ed place and calling one to another and saying we have piped unto you and ye have not danced we have mourned to you and ye have not wept for the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine and ye say he hath a devil the son of man is come eating and drinking and ye say behold a gluttonous man and a wine bibber a friend of publicans and sinners but wisdom is justified of all her children and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet and behold a woman in the city which was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it he spake within himself saying this man if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner of woman this is that Touch at him for she is a sinner and Jesus answering said unto him Simon I have somewhat to say unto thee and he saith master say on there was a certain creditor which had two debtors the one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty and when they had nothing to pay he frankly forgave them both tell me therefore which of them will love him most Simon answered and said I suppose that he to whom he forgave most and he said unto him thou hast rightly judged and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon cease thou this woman I entered into thine house thou gavest me no water for my feet but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head thou gavest me no kiss but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet my head with oil thou didst not anoint but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment wherefore I say unto thee her sins which are many are forgiven for she loved much but to whom little is forgiven thee. Same loveth little and he said unto her thy sins are forgiven and they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves who is this that forgiveth sins also and he said to the woman thy faith hath saved thee go in peace and it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and shewing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities Mary called. Magdalene out of whom went seven devils and Joanna the wife of Shuza Herod steward and Susanna and many others which ministered unto him of their substance and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city he spake by a parable a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it and some fell upon a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried he that hath ears to hear let him hear and his disciples asked him saying what might this parable be and he said unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand now the parable is this the seed is the word of God those by the wayside are they that hear then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts lest they should believe and be saved they on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and Bring no fruit to perfection but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit with patience no man when he hath lighted a candle covereth it with a vessel or putteth it under a bed but setteth it on a candlestick that they which enter in may see the light for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad take heed therefore how ye hear for. Whosoever hath to him shall be given and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have then came to him his mother and his brethren and could not come at him for the press and it was told him by certain which said thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee and he answered and said unto them my mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them let us go over unto the other side of the lake and they launched forth but as they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm and he said unto them where is your faith and they being afraid wondered saying one to another what manner of man is this for he commanded even the winds and water and they obey him and they arrived at the country of the gadarenes which is over against galilee and when he went forth to land there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes neither abode in any house but in the tombs when he saw jesus he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of god most high I Beseech thee torment me not for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for oftentimes it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness and Jesus asked him saying what is thy name and he said legion because many devils were entered into him and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep and there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them and he suffered them then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked when they that fed them saw what was done they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed s
things God hath done unto thee and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him and behold there came a man named Jairus and he was a ruler of the synagogue and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house for he had one only daughter about twelve years of age and she lay a dying but as he went the people thronged him and a woman having an issue of blood twelve years which had spent all her living upon physicians neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched and Jesus said who touched me when all denied and they that were with him said master the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee and sayest thou who touched me and Jesus said somebody hath touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me and when the woman saw that she was not hit she came trembling and falling down before him she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately and he said unto her daughter be of good comfort thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace while he yet spake there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him thy daughter is dead trouble not the master but when Jesus heard it he answered him saying fear not believe only and she shall be made whole and when he came into the house he suffered no man to go and save and, and, and the father and the mother of the maiden and all wept and bewailed her but he said weep not she is not dead but sleepeth and they laughed him to scorn knowing that she was dead and he put them all out and took her by the hand and called saying made arise and her spirit came again and she arose straightway and he commanded to give her meat and her parents were astonished but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done and he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick and he said unto them take nothing for your journey neither staves nor script neither bread neither money neither have two coats apiece and whatsoever house ye enter into their abide and thence depart and whosoever will not receive you when ye go out of that city shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere now Herod the tetrarch heard of all that was done by him and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that was risen from the dead and of some that Elias had appeared and of others that one of the old prophets was risen again and Herod said have I beheaded but who is this of whom I hear such things and he desired to see him and the apostles when they were returned told him all that they had done and he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida and the people when they knew it followed him and he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing and when the day began to wear away then came the twelve and said unto him send the multitude away that they may go into the towns and country round about and lodge and get victuals for we are here in a desert place but he said unto them give ye them to eat and they said we have no more but five loaves and two fishes except we should go and buy meat for all this people for they were about five thousand men and he said to his disciples make them sit down by fifties in a company and they did so and made them all sit down then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed them and break and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude and they did eat and were all filled and there was taken up of fragments that remained to them twelve baskets and it came to pass as he was alone praying his disciples were with him and he asked them saying whom say the people that I am the answering said the Baptist but some say Elias and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again he said unto them but whom say ye that I am answering said the Christ of God and he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall save it for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the son of man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels but I tell you of a truth there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God and it came to pass about in eight days after these sayings he took an end and went up into a mountain to pray and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering and behold there talked with him two men which were Moses and Elias who appeared in glory and spake of his decease which he should accomplish at Jerusalem but and they that were with him were heavy with sleep and when they were awake they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him and it came to pass as they departed from him said unto Jesus master it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias not knowing what he said while he thus spake there came a cloud and overshadowed them and they feared as they entered into the cloud and there came a voice out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son hear him and when the voice was passed Jesus was found alone and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen and it came to pass that on the next day when they were Come down from the hill much people met him and behold a man of the company cried out saying Master I beseech thee look upon my son for he is mine only child and lo a spirit taketh him and he suddenly crieth out and it teareth him that he foameth again and bruising him hardly departeth from him and I besought thy disciples to cast him out and they could not and Jesus answering said O faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you and suffer you bring thy son hither and as he was yet a coming the devil threw him down and tear him and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father and they were all amazed at the mighty power of God but while they wondered everyone at all things which Jesus did he said unto his disciples let these sayings sink down into your ears for the son of man shall be delivered into the hands of men but they understood not the saying and it was hid from them that they perceived it not. And they feared to ask him of that saying then there arose a reasoning among them which of them should be greatest and Jesus perceiving the thought of their heart took a child and set him by him and said unto them whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me for he that is least among you all the same shall be great and answered and said master we saw one casting out devils in thy name and we forbade him because he Followeth not with us and Jesus said unto him forbid him not for he that is not against us is for us and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him and they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem and when his disciples and saw this they said Lord wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did but he turned and rebuked them and said ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them and they went to another village and it came to pass that as they went in the way a certain man said unto him Lord I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest and Jesus said unto him foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man hath not where to lay his head and he said unto another follow me but he said Lord suffer me first to go and bury my father Jesus said unto him let the dead bury their dead but go thou and preach the kingdom of God and another also said Lord I will follow thee but let me first go bid them farewell which are at home at my house and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God after these things the Lord appointed 
Other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come therefore said he unto them the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest go your ways behold I send you forth as lambs among wolves carry neither purse nor script nor shoes and salute no man by the way and into whatsoever house ye enter first say peace be to this house and if the son of peace be there your peace shall rest upon it if not it shall turn to you again and in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his hire go not from house to house and into whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you eat such things as are set before you and heal the sick that are therein and say unto them the kingdom of god is come nigh unto you but into whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you not go your ways out into the streets of the same and say even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us we do wipe off against you notwithstanding be assured of this that the kingdom of god is come nigh unto you but i say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for sodom than for that city woe unto thee Therese and woe unto thee bethsaida for if the mighty works had been done in tyre and sidon which have been done in you they had a great while ago repented sitting in sackcloth and ashes but it shall be more tolerable for tyre and sidon at the judgment than for you and thou capernaum which art exalted to heaven shall be thrust down to hell he that heareth you heareth me and he that despiseth you despiseth me and he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me and the seventy returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven in that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said I thank thee O Father Lord of heaven and earth that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes even so Father for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father and who the Father is but the Son and he to whom the Son will reveal him and he turned him unto his disciples and said privately blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall I do to inherit eternal life he said unto him what is written in the law how readest thou and he answering said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself and he said unto him thou hast answered right this do and thou shalt lie but he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus and who is my neighbor and Jesus answering said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side and likewise a Levite when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side but a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again I will repay thee which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves and he said he that shewed mercy on him then said Jesus unto him go and do thou Likewise now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house and she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said Lord dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone bid her therefore that she help me and Jesus answered and said unto her Martha Martha thou art careful and troubled about many things but one thing is needful and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased one of his disciples said unto him Lord teach us to pray as also taught his disciples and he said unto them when yet pray say our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done as in heaven so in earth give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed I cannot rise and give thee I say unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth and I say unto you ask and it shall be given you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father will he give him a stone or if he ask a fish will he for a fish give him a serpent or if he shall ask an egg will he offer him a scorpion if yet and being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him and he was casting out a devil and it was dumb and it came to pass when the devil was gone out the dumb spake and the people wondered but some of them said he casteth out devils through beels above the chief of the devils and others tempting him sought of him a sign from heaven but he knowing their thoughts said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and a house divided against a house falleth if Satan also be divided against himself how shall his kingdom stand because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your sons cast them out therefore shall they be your judges but if I with the finger of God cast out devils no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you when a strong man armed keepeth his palace his goods are in peace but when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils he that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none he saith i will return unto my house whence i came out and when he cometh he findeth it swept and garnished and goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first and it came to pass as he spake these things a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked but he said ye rather blessed are they that hear the word of god and keep it and when the people were gathered thick Together he began to say this is an evil generation they seek a sign and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet for as Jonas was a sign unto the nine feet so shall also the son of man be to this generation the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them for she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold a greater than Solomon is here the men of nine shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold a greater than Jonas is here no man when he hath lighted a candle putteth it in a
Light which is in thee be not darkness if thy whole body therefore be full of light having no part dark the whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light and as he spake a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him and he went in and sat down to meet and when the Pharisee saw it he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner and the Lord said unto him now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness ye fools did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also but rather give alms of such things as ye have and behold all things are clean unto you but woe unto you Pharisees for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone woe unto you Pharisees for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and Greetings in the ETS woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye are as graves which appear not and the men that walk over them are not aware of them then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him master thus saying thou reproachest us also and he said woe unto you also ye lawyers for ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers woe unto you for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets and your fathers. Killed them truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers for they indeed killed them and ye build their sepulchres therefore also said the wisdom of God I will send them prophets and apostles and some of them they shall slay and persecute that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias which perished between the altar and the temple verily I say. Unto you it shall be required of this generation woe unto you lawyers for ye have taken away the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourselves and them that were entering in ye hindered and as he said these things unto them the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him in the meantime when they were gathered together in innumerable multitude of people insomuch that they trod one upon another he began to say unto his disciples first of all beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees which is hypocrisy for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed neither hid that shall not be known therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops and I say unto you my friends be not afraid of them that kill the body and after that have no more that they can do but I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell ye I say unto you fear him are not five sparrows sold for two farthings and not one of them is forgotten before God but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered fear not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows also I say unto you whosoever shall confess me before men him shall the son of man also confess before the angels of God but he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God and whosoever shall speak a word against the son of man it shall be forgiven him but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven and when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say and one of the company said unto him master speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me and he said unto him man who made me a judge or a divider over you and he said unto them take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth and he spake a parable unto them saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he thought within himself saying what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits and he said this will I do I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods and I will say to my soul soul thou hast much goods laid up for many years take thine easy drink and be merry but God said unto him thou fool this night thy soul shall be required of thee then who shall those things be which thou hast provided so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God and he said unto his disciples therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life what ye shall eat neither for the body what ye shall put on the life is more than meat and the body is more than rhyme and consider the ravens for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor barn and God feedeth them how much more are ye better than the fowls and which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least why take ye thought for the rest consider the lilies how they grow they toil not they spin not and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these if then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven how much more will he clothe you O ye of little faith and seek not yet what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink neither be ye of doubtful mind for all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father knoweth that yet have need of these things but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom sell that ye have and give alms provide yourselves bags which wax not old a treasure in the heavens that faileth not where no thief approacheth neither moth corrupteth for where your treasure is there will your heart be also let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and yet yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh they may open unto him immediately blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants and this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through be ye therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when ye think not then said unto him Lord speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all and the Lord said who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath but and if that servant say in his heart my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunk in the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looked not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers and that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes for unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required and to whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more I am come to send fire on the earth and what will I if it be already kindled but I have a baptism to be baptized with and how am I straightened Till it be accomplished suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth I tell you nay but rather division for from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided three against two and two against three the father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and he said also to the people when ye see a cloud rise out of the west straightway ye say there cometh a shower and so it is and when ye see the south wind blow ye say there will be heat and it cometh to pass ye hypocrites ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth but how is it that ye do not discern this time ye and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right when thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate as thou art in the way give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him l
thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and the officer cast thee into prison I tell thee thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices and Jesus answering said unto them suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things I tell you nay but except ye repent ye shall all. Likewise perish or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem I tell you nay but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish he spake also this parable a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none and said he unto the dresser of his vineyard behold these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none cut it down why cumbereth it the ground and he answering said unto him Lord let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it and if it bear fruit well and if not then after that thou shalt cut it down and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath and behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself and when Jesus saw her he called her to him and said unto her woman thou art loosed from thine infirmity and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people there are six days in which men ought to work in them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day the Lord then answered him and said thou hypocrite doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and Lead him away to watering and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan hath bound lo these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day and when he had said these things all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him then said he unto what is the kingdom of God like and whereunto shall I resemble it it is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and cast into his garden and it grew and waxed a great tree and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it and again he said whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God it is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened and he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem then said one unto him Lord are there few that be saved and he said unto them strive to enter in at the straight gate for many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying Lord Lord open unto us and he shall answer and say unto you I know you not whence ye are then shall ye begin to say we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets but he shall say I tell you I know you not whence ye are depart from me all ye workers of iniquity there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God and behold there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last the same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him get thee out and depart hence for Herod will kill thee and he said unto them go yet. And tell that fox behold I cast out devils and I do cures today and tomorrow and the third day I shall be perfected nevertheless I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem O Jerusalem Jerusalem which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings and ye would not behold your house is left unto you. Desolate and verily I say unto you ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord and it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him and behold there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy and Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees saying is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day and they held their peace and he took him and healed him and let him go and answered them saying which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day and they could not answer him again to these things and he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he had how they chose out the chief room saying unto them when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding sit not down in the highest room lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him and he that bade the and him come and say to thee give this man place and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room but when thou art bidden go and sit down in the lowest room that when he that bade thee cometh he may say unto thee friend go up higher then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee for whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted then said he also to him that bade him when thou makest a dinner or a supper. Call not thy friends nor thy brethren neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors lest they also bid thee again and a recompense be made thee but when thou makest a feast call the poor the maimed the lame the blind and thou shalt be blessed for they cannot recompense thee for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just and when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things he said unto him blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God then said he. Unto him a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden come for all things are now ready and they all with one consent began to make excuse the first said unto him I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it I pray thee have me excused and another said I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them I pray thee have me excused and another said I have married a wife and therefore I cannot. Come so that servant came and shewed his lord these things then the master of the house being angry said to his servant go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind and the servant said lord it is done as thou hast commanded and yet there is room and the lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled for I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper and there went great multitudes with him and he turned and said unto them if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yet in his own life also he cannot be my disciple and whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold it begin to mock him saying this man began to build and was not able to finish or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand or else while the other is yet a great way off he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace so likewise whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he hath he cannot be my disciple salt is good but if the salt have lost his savour wherewith shall it be seasoned it is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill but men cast it out he that hath ears to hear let him hear then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him and the pharisees and scribes murmured saying this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them and he spake this parable unto them saying what man of you having an hundred sheep if he lose one of them doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it and when he hath found it he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing and when he cometh home he calleth together his friends
persons which need no repentance either what woman having ten pieces of silver if she lose one piece doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it and when she hath found it she calleth her friends and her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for I have found the piece which I had lost likewise I say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him father I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy hired servants and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and the son said unto him father I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fat calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be merry now his elder son was in the field and as he came and drew nigh to the house he heard music and dancing and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father hath killed the fat calf because he hath received him safe and sound and he was angry and would not go and therefore came his father out and I and t him and he answering said to his father lo these many years do I serve thee neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends but as soon as this thy son was come which hath devoured thy living with harlots thou hast killed for him the fat calf and he said unto him son thou art ever with me and all that I have is thine it was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found and he said also unto his disciples there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods and he called him and said unto him how is it that I hear this of thee given account of thy stewardship for thou mayest be no longer steward then the steward said within himself what shall I do for my lord taketh away from me the stewardship I cannot dig to beg I am ashamed I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship they may receive me into their houses so he called every one of his lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first how much owest thou unto my lord and he said an hundred measures of oil and he said unto him take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty then said he to another and how much owest thou and he said an hundred measures of wheat and he said unto him take thy bill and write fourscore and the lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light and i say unto you make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness that when ye fail they may receive you into everlasting habitations he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other ye cannot serve god and mammon and the pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him and he said unto them ye are they which justify yourselves before men but god knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of god the law and the prophets were until since that time the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery and whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame but Abraham said son remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and thou art tormented and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence then he said I pray thee therefore father that thou wouldest send him to my father's house for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment Abraham saith unto him they have Moses and the prophets let them hear them and he said nay father Abraham but if one went unto them from the dead they will repent and he said unto him if they hear not Moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead then said he unto the disciples it is impossible but that offenses will come but woe unto him through whom they come it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones take heed to yourselves if thy brother trespass against thee rebuke him and if he repent forgive him and if he trespass against thee seven times in a day and seven times in a day turn again to thee saying I repent thou shalt forgive him and the apostle said unto the Lord increase our faith and the Lord said if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed ye might say unto the sycamine tree be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you but which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he is come from the field go and sit down to meat and will not rather say unto him make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him I trow not so likewise yet when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you say we are unprofitable servants we have done that which was our duty to do and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and as he entered into a certain village there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and said Jesus master have mercy on us and when he saw them he said unto them go shew yourselves unto the priests and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed and one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan and Jesus answering said were there not ten cleansed but where are the nine there are not found that returned to give glory to God save the stranger and he said unto him arise go thy way Thy faith hath made thee whole and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come he answered them and said the kingdom of God cometh not with observation neither shall they say lo here or lo therefore behold the kingdom of God is within you and he said unto the disciples the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the son of man and ye shall not see it and they shall say to you see here or see there go not after them nor foll
For as a lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven so shall also the Son of Man be in his day but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation and as it was in the days of no so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man they did eat they drank they married wives they were given in marriage until the day that no entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all likewise also as it was in the days of Lot they did eat they drank they bought they sold they planted they built it but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed in that day he which shall be upon the house stop and his stuff in the house let him not come down to take it away and he that is in the field let him likewise not return back remember Lot's wife whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it I tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed the one shall be taken and the other shall be left two women shall be grinding together the one shall be taken and the other left two men shall be in the field the one shall be taken and the other left and they answered and said unto him where Lord and he said unto them wheresoever the body is thither will the eagles be gathered together and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man and there was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying avenge me of mine adversary and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though I fear not God nor regard man yet because this widow troubleth me I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me and the Lord said here what the unjust judge saith and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others two men went up into the temple to pray the one a Pharisee and the other a publican the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this publican I fast twice in the week I give tithes of all that I possess and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast saying God be merciful to me a sinner I tell you this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them but when his disciples saw it they rebuked them but Jesus called them unto him and said suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of God verily I say unto you whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein and a certain ruler asked him saying good master what shall I do to inherit eternal life and Jesus said unto him why? Caiest thou me good none is good save one that is God thou knowest the commandments do not commit adultery do not kill do not steal do not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and he said all these have I kept from my youth up now when Jesus heard these things he said unto him yet lackest thou one thing sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me and when he heard this he was very sorrowful for he was very rich and when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful he said how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God for it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God and they that heard it said who then can be saved and he said the things which are impossible with men are possible with God then said lo we have left all and followed thee and he said unto them verily I say unto you there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them behold we go up to Jerusalem and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the son of man shall be accomplished for he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on and they shall scourge him and put him to death and the third day he shall rise again and they understood none of these things and the saying was hid from them neither knew they the things which were spoken and it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging and hearing the multitude pass by he asked what it meant and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by and he cried saying Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace but he cried so much the more thou son of David have mercy on me and Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him and when he was come near he asked him saying what wilt thou that I shall do unto thee and he said Lord that I may receive my sight and Jesus said unto him receive thy sight thy faith hath saved thee and immediately he received his sight and followed him glorifying God and all the people when they saw it gave praise unto God and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho and behold there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans and he was rich and he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was little of stature and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was to pass that way and when Jesus came to the place he looked up and saw him and said unto him Zacchaeus make haste and come down for today I must abide at thy house and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully and when they saw it they all murmured saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord behold Lord the half of my goods I give to the poor and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation I restore him fourfold and Jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house for so much as he also is a son of Abraham for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost and as they heard these things he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear he said therefore a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them occupy till I come but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying we will not have this man to reign over us and it came to pass that when he was returned having received the kingdom then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading then came the first saying lord thy pound hath gained ten pounds and he said unto him well thou good servant because thou hast been faithful in a very little have thou authority over ten cities and the second came saying lord thy pound hath gained five pounds and he said likewise to him be thou also over five cities and another came saying lord behold here is thy pound which i have kept laid up in a napkin for i feared thee because thou art an austere man thou takest up that thou laidst not down and reapest that thou didst not so and he saith unto him out of thine own mouth will i judge thee thou wicked servant thou knewest that i was an austere man taking up that i laid not down and reaping that i did not so wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank that at my coming i might have required mine own with usury and he said unto them that stood by take from him the pound and give it to him that hath ten pounds and they said unto him lord he hath ten pounds for i say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given and from him that hath not even that he hath shall be taken away from him but those mine enemies which would not that i should reign over them bring hither and slay them before me and when he had thus spoken he went before ascending up to jerusalem and it came to pass when he was come nigh to bathphage and bethany at the mount called the mount of olives he sent two of his disciples saying go ye into the village over against you in the which at your entering ye shall
Need of him and they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them and as they were loosing the colt the owners thereof said unto them why loose ye the colt and they said the Lord hath need of him and they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garments upon the colt and they set Jesus thereon and as he went they spread their clothes in the way and when he was come nigh even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen saying blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest and some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him master rebuke thy disciples and he answered and said unto them I tell you that if these should hold their peace the stones would immediately cry out and when he was come near he beheld the city and wept over it saying if Thou hadst known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace but now they are hid from thine eyes for the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation and he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought saying unto them it is written my house is the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves and he taught daily in the temple but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive to hear him and it came to pass that on one of those days as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders and spake unto him saying tell us by what authority doest thou these things or who is he that gave thee this authority and he answered and said unto them I will also ask you one thing and answer me the baptism of was it from heaven or of men and they reasoned with themselves saying if we shall say from heaven he will say why then believe ye him not but and if we say of men all the people will stone us for they be persuaded that was a prophet and they answered that they could not tell whence it was and Jesus said unto them neither tell I you by what authority I do these things then began he to speak to the people this parable a certain man planted a vineyard and led it forth to husbandmen and went into a far country for a long time and at the season he sent a servant to the husbandmen that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard but the husbandmen beat him and sent him away empty and again he sent Another servant and they beat him also and entreated him shamefully and sent him away empty and again he sent a third and they wounded him also and cast him out and said the Lord of the vineyard what shall I do I will send my beloved son it may be they will reverence him when they see him but when the husbandmen saw him they reasoned among themselves saying this is the ear come let us kill him that the inheritance may be ours so they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him what therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them he shall come and destroy these husbandmen and shall give the vineyard to others and when they heard it they said God forbid and he beheld them and said what is this then that is written the stone which the builders rejected the same is become the head of the corner whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken but on whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder and the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him and they feared the people for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them and they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men that they might take hold of his words that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor and they asked him saying master we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly neither acceptest thou the person of any but teachest the way of God truly is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no but he perceived their craftiness and said unto them why tempt ye me shew me a penny whose image and superscription hath it they answered and said Caesar's and he said unto them render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's and unto God the things which be God's and they could not take hold of his words before the people and they marveled at his answer and held their peace then came to him certain of the Sadducees which Deny that there is any resurrection and they asked him saying Master Moses wrote unto us if any man's brother die having a wife and he die without children that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother there were therefore seven brethren and the first took a wife and died without children and the second took her to wife and he died childless and the third took her and in like manner the seven also and they left no children and died last of all the woman died. Also therefore in the resurrection whose wife of them is she for seven had her to wife and Jesus answering said unto them the children of this world marry and are given in marriage but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage neither can they die any more for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection now that the dead are raised even Moses. Shoot at the bush when he calleth the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob for he is not a God of the dead but of the living for all live unto him then certain of the scribes answering said master thou hast well said and after that they durst not ask him any question at all and he said unto them how say they that Christ is David's son and David himself saith in the book of Psalms the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool David therefore calleth him Lord how is he then his son then in the audience of all the people he said unto his disciples beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the ETS and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts which devour widows houses and for a shoe make long prayers the same shall receive greater damnation and he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury and he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites and he said of a truth I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all for all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God but she of her penury hath cast in all the living that she had and as some spake of the temple how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts he said as for these things which ye behold the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and they asked him saying master but when shall these things be and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass and he said take heed that ye be not deceived for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and the time draweth near go ye not therefore after them but when ye shall hear of wars and commotions be not terrified for these things must first come to pass but the end is not by and by then said he unto them nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven but before all these they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake and it shall turn to you for a testimony settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist and ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends and some of you shall they cause to be put to death and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but there shall not an hair of your head perish in your patience possess ye your souls and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desolation thereof is nigh then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter there into for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the
Things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw it nigh and he spake to them a parable behold the fig tree and all the trees when they now shoot forth yesi and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand so likewise yet when yesi these things come to pass know yet that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand verily I say unto you this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away and take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that day come upon you unawares for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man and in the daytime he was teaching in the temple and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the mount of olives and all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh which is called the passover and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him for they feared the people then entered satan into judah surnamed iscariot being of the number of the twelve and he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them and they were glad and covenanted to give him money and he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed and he sent and saying go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat and they said unto him where wilt thou that we prepare and he said unto them behold when ye are entered into the city there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water follow him into the house where he entereth in and ye shall say unto the goodman of the house the master saith unto thee where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples and he shall shew you a large upper room furnished there make ready and they went and found as he had said unto them and they made ready the Passover and when the hour was come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him and he said unto them with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you. Before I suffer for I say unto you I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God and he took the cup and gave thanks and said take this and divide it among yourselves for I say unto you I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me likewise also the cup after supper saying this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you but behold the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table and truly the son of man goeth as it was determined but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing and there was also a strife among them which of them should be accounted the greatest and he said unto them the kings of the gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors but ye shall not be so but he that is greatest among you let him be as the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve for whether is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth is not he that sitteth at meat but I am among you as he that serveth ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel and the Lord said Simon Simon behold Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren and he said unto him Lord I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death and he said I tell thee the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me and he said unto them when I sent you without purse and script and shoes lacked ye anything and they said nothing then said he unto them but now he that hath a purse let him take it and likewise his script and he that hath no sword let him sell his garment and buy one for I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me and he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end and they said Lord behold here are two swords and he said unto them it is enough and he came out and went as he was wont to the mount of olives and his disciples also followed him and when he was at the place he said unto them pray that ye enter not into temptation and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thine be done and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven strengthening him and being in an agony he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples he found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them why sleep ye rise and pray lest ye enter into temptation and while he yet spake behold a multitude and he that was called Judas one of the twelve went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him but Jesus said unto him Judas betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss when they which were about him saw what would follow they said unto him Lord shall we smite with the sword and one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear and Jesus answered and said suffer ye thus far and he touched his ear and healed him then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves when I was daily with you in the temple ye stretched forth no hands against me but this is your hour and the power of darkness then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house and followed afar off and when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together sat down among them but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said this man was also with him and he denied him saying woman I know him not and after a little while another saw him and said thou art also of them and said man I am not and about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed saying of a truth this fellow also was with him for he is a Galilean and said man I know not what thou sayest and immediately while he yet spake the cock crew and the Lord turned and looked upon and remembered the word of the Lord how he had said unto him before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice and went out and wept bitterly and the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him and when they had blindfolded him they struck him on the face and asked him saying prophesy who is it that smote thee and many other things blasphemously spake they against him and as soon as it was day the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council saying art thou the Christ tell us and he said unto them if I tell you ye will not believe and if I also ask you ye will not answer me nor let me go hereafter shall the son of man sit on the right hand of the power of God then said they all art thou then the son of God and he said unto them yes say that I am and they said what need we any further witness for we ourselves have heard of his own mouth and the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate and they began to accuse him saying we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar saying that he himself is Christ a king and Pilate asked him saying art thou the king of the Jews and he answered him and said thou sayest it then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people I find no fault in this man and they were the more fear saying he stirreth up the people teaching throughout all Jewry beginning from Galilee to this place when Pilate heard of Galilee he asked whether the man were a Galilean and as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction he sent him to Herod who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus he was exceeding glad for he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him then he questioned with him in many words but he answered him nothing and the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him and Herod with his men of war set him at night and moc
were made friends together for before they were at enmity between themselves and Pilate when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people said unto them Yea, have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people and behold I having examined him before you have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him no nor yet Herod for I sent you to him and lo nothing worthy of death is done unto him I will therefore chastise him and release him for of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast and they cried out all at once saying away with this man and release unto us Barabbas who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison Pilate therefore willing to release Jesus spake again to them but they cried saying crucify him crucify him and he said unto them the third time why what evil hath he done I have found no cause of death in him I will therefore chastise him and let him go and they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified and the voices of the men of the chief priests prevailed and Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required and he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison whom they had desired but he delivered Jesus to their will and as they led him away they laid hold upon one Simon a Cyrenian coming out of the country and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it. After Jesus and there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him but Jesus turning unto them said daughters of Jerusalem weep not for me but weep for yourselves and for your children for behold the days are coming in the which they shall say blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck then shall they begin to say to the mountains fall on us and to the hills cover us for if they do these things. In a green tree what shall be done in the dry and there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death and when they were come to the place which is called Calvary there they crucified him and the malefactors one on the right hand and the other on the left and said Jesus father forgive them for they know not what they do and they parted his raiment and cast lots and the people stood beholding and the rulers also with them derided him saying he saved others let him save himself if he be Christ the chosen of God and the soldiers also mocked him coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying if thou be the king of the Jews save thyself and a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew this is the king of the Jews and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him saying if thou be Christ save thyself and us but the other answering rebuked him saying dost not thou fear God seeing thou art in the same condemnation and we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds but this man hath done nothing amiss and he said unto Jesus Lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom and Jesus said unto him verily I say unto thee today shalt thou be with me in paradise and it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice he said father into thy hands I commend my spirit and having said thus he gave up the ghost now when the centurion saw what was done he glorified God saying certainly this was a righteous man and all the people that came together to that sight beholding the things which were done smote their breasts and returned and all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off beholding these things and behold there was a man named Joseph a counselor and he was a good man and a just the same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them he was of Arimathea a city of the Jews who also himself waited for the kingdom of God this man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulchre that was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid and that day was the preparation and the sabbath drew on and the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the sabbath day according to the commandment now upon the first day of the week very early in the morning they came unto the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus and it came to pass as they were much perplexed Thereabout behold two men stood by them in shining garments and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth they said unto them why seek ye the living among the dead he is not here but is risen remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again and they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven. And to all the rest it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles and their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not then arose and ran unto the sepulchre and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed wondering in himself at that which was come to pass and behold two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus which was from. Jerusalem about three score furlongs and they talked together of all these things which had happened and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned Jesus himself drew near and went with them but their eyes were holden that they should not know him and he said unto them what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad and the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days and he said unto them what things and they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel and beside all this today is the third day since these things were done yet and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre and when they found not his body they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said but him they saw not then he said unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went and he made as though he would have gone further but they constrained him saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent and he went into Tari with them and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and there Eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and they said one to another did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them saying the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them peace be unto you but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit and he said unto them why are ye troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have and when he had thus spoken he shewed them his hands and his feet and while they yet believed. Not for joy and wondered he said unto them have ye here any meat and they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb and he took it and did eat before them and he said unto them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them. 
Thus it is written and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and ye are witnesses of these things and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high and he led them out as far as to Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them and it came to pass. While he blessed them he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God Amen in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not there was a man sent from God whose name was the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe he was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth bear witness of him and cried saying this was he of whom I spake he that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace for the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ no man hath seen God at any time the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father he hath declared him and this is the record of when the Jews sent priests and levites from Jerusalem to ask him who art thou and he confessed and denied not but confessed I am not the Christ and they asked him what then art thou Elias and he saith I am not art thou that prophet and he answered no then said they unto him who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us what sayest thou of thyself he said I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord as said the prophet he says and they which were sent were of the Pharisees and they asked him and said unto him why baptizest thou then if thou be not that Christ nor Elias neither that prophet answered them saying I baptize with water but there standeth one among you whom ye know not he it is who coming after me is preferred before me whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose these things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan where was baptizing the next day seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world this is he of whom I said after me cometh a man which is preferred before me for he was before me and I knew him not but that he should be made manifest to Israel therefore am I come baptizing with water and bear record saying I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him and I knew him not but he that sent me to baptize with water the same said unto me upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost and I saw and bear record that this is the son of God again the next day after stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked he saith behold the Lamb of God and the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them what seek ye they said unto him rabbi which is to say being interpreted master where dwellest thou he saith unto them come and see they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day for it was about the tenth hour one of the two which heard speak and followed him was Andrew Simon s brother he first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him we have found the meshes which is being interpreted the Christ and he brought him to Jesus and when Jesus beheld him he said thou art Simon the son of Jonah thou shalt be called Cephas which is by interpretation a stone the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him follow me now Philip was of Bethsaida the city of Andrew and Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph and Nathanael said unto him can there any good thing come out of Nazareth Philip saith unto him come and see Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him behold an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile Nathanael saith unto him whence knowest thou me Jesus answered and said unto him before that Philip called thee when thou wast under the fig tree I saw thee Nathanael answered and saith unto him rabbi thou art the son of God thou art the king of Israel Jesus answered and said unto him because I said unto thee I saw thee under the fig tree believest thou thou shalt see greater things than these and he saith unto him verily verily I say unto you hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage and when they wanted wine the mother of Jesus saith unto him they have no wine Jesus saith unto her woman what have I to do with thee mine hour is not yet come his mother saith unto the servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it and there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece Jesus saith unto them fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and he saith unto them draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him after this he went down to Capernaum he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples and they continued there not many days and the Jews Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting and when he had made a scourge of small cords he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves take these things hence make not my father's house and house of merchandise and his disciples remembered that it was written the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up then answered the Jews and said unto him what sign shewest thou unto us seeing that thou doest these things Jesus answered and said unto them destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up then said the Jews forty and six years was this temple in building and wilt thou rear it up in three days but he spake of the temple of his body when therefore he was risen from the dead his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him Rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God Nicodemus saith unto him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel
Be Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even. So must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of it. Only begotten Son of God and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for everyone that doth evil hate the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved but he that doth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea and there he tarried with them and baptized and also was baptizing in Anon near to Salim because there was much water there and they came and were baptized for was not yet cast into prison then there arose a question between some of his disciples and the Jews about purifying and they came unto and said unto him Rabbi he that was with thee beyond Jordan to whom thou bearest witness behold the same baptizeth and all men come to him answered and said a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven yet yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ but that I am sent before him he that hath the bride is the bridegroom but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice this my joy therefore is fulfilled he must increase but I must decrease he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly and speak of the earth he that cometh from heaven is above all and what he hath seen and heard that he testifieth and no man receiveth his testimony he that hath received his testimony hath said to his seal that God is true for he whom God hath sent speak the words of God for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him the father loveth the son and hath given all things into his hand he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples he left Judea and departed again into Galilee and he must needs go through Samaria then cometh he to a city of Samaria which is called Sychar near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph now Jacob's well was there Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water Jesus saith unto her give me to drink for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat then saith the woman of Samaria unto him how is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me which am a woman of Samaria for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans Jesus answered and said unto her if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee give me to drink thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water the woman saith unto him sir thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep from whence then hast thou that living water art thou greater than our father Jacob which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle Jesus answered and said unto her whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again but whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life the woman saith unto him sir give me this water that I thirst not neither come hither to draw Jesus saith unto her go call thy husband and come hither the woman answered and said I have no husband Jesus said unto her thou hast well said I have no husband for thou hast had five husbands and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband in that saidst thou truly the woman saith unto him sir I perceive that thou art a prophet our fathers worshipped in this mountain and ye say that in Jerusalem is it place where men ought to worship Jesus saith unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the father ye worship ye know not what we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeks such to worship him God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth it woman saith unto him I know that mesh is cometh which is called Christ when he is come he will tell us all things Jesus saith unto her I that speak unto thee am he and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman yet no man said what seekest thou or why talkest thou with her the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men come see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ then they went out of the city and came unto him in the meanwhile his disciples prayed him saying master eat but he said unto them I have meat to eat that ye know not of therefore said the disciples one to another hath any man brought him up to eat Jesus saith unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work say not yet there are yet four months and then cometh harvest behold I say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that sow it and he that reapeth may rejoice together and herein is that saying true one sow it and another reapeth I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor other men labored and ye are entered into their labors and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified he told me all that ever I did so when the Samaritans were come unto him they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days and many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman now we believe not because of thy saying for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ the Savior of the world now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee for Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country then when he was come into Galilee the Galileans received him having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast for they also went unto the feast so Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death then said Jesus unto him except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe it. Nobleman saith unto him sir come down ere my child die Jesus saith unto him go thy way thy son liveth and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and he went his way and as he was now going down his servants met him and told him saying thy son liveth then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend and they said unto him yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him so the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him thy son liveth and himself believed and his whole house this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee after this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep et a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk a blind halt withered waiting for the moving of the water for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had and a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years when Jesus
Jesus saith unto him rise take up thy bed and walk and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the Sabbath the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured it is the Sabbath day it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed he answered them he that made me whole the same said unto me take up thy bed and walk then asked they him what man is that which said unto thee take up thy bed and walk and he that was healed wist not who it was for. Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude being in that place afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him behold thou art made whole sin no more lest a worse thing come unto thee the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day but Jesus answered them my father worketh hitherto and I work therefore the Jews sought it more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath but said also that God was his father making himself equal with God then answered Jesus and said unto them verily verily I say unto you the son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do for what things soever he doth these also doth the son likewise for the father loveth the son and sheweth him all things that himself doth and he will shew him greater works than these that ye may marvel for as the father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them even so the son quickeneth whom he will for the father judgeth no man but hath committed all judgment unto the son that all men should honor the son even as they honor the father he that honoreth not the son honoreth not the father which hath sent him verily verily I say unto you he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life verily verily I say unto you the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God and they that hear shall live for as the father hath life in himself so hath he given to the son to have life in himself and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will but the will of the father which hath sent me if I bear witness of myself my witness is not true there is another that beareth witness of me and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true yes sent unto and he bear witness unto the truth but I receive not testimony from man but these things I say that yet might be saved he was a burning and a shining light and yet were willing for a season to rejoice in his light but I have greater witness than that of for the works which the father hath given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the father hath sent me and the father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape and yet have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent him ye believe not Search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me and ye will not come to me that ye might have life I receive not honor from men but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not if another shall come in his own name him ye will receive how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only do not think that I will accuse you to the father there is one that accuseth you even Moses in whom ye trust for had ye believed Moses ye would have believed me for he wrote of me but if ye believe not his writings how shall ye believe my words after these things Jesus went over the sea of Galilee which is the sea of Tiberias and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased and Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples and it Passover a feast of the Jews was nigh when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him he saith unto Philip whence shall we buy bread that these may eat and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what he would do Philip answered him two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little one of his disciples Andrew Simon's brother saith unto him there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they among so many and Jesus said make the men sit down now there was much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand and Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would when they were filled he said unto his disciples gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten and those men when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did said this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king he departed again into a mountain himself alone and when even was now come his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum and it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them and the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew so when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship and they were afraid but he saith unto them it is I be not afraid then they willingly received him into the ship and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went the day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there save that one wherein his disciples were entered and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat but that his disciples were gone away alone howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after that the Lord had given thanks when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there neither his disciples they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus and when they had found him on the other side of the sea they said unto him Rabbi when camest thou hither Jesus answered them and said verily verily I say unto you yes seek me not because ye saw the miracles but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled labor not for the meat which perisheth but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him hath God the Father sealed and said they unto him what shall we do that we might work the works of God Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent they said therefore unto him what sign shewest thou then that we may see and believe thee what dost thou work our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written he gave them bread from heaven to eat then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you Moses gave you not that bread from heaven but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world then said they unto him Lord evermore give us this bread and Jesus said unto them I am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst but I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not all that the father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out for I came down from heaven not to do mine own will but the will of him that sent me and this is the father's will which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day and this is the will of him that sent me that every one which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day the Jews then murmured at him because he said I am the bread which came down from heaven and they said is not this Jesus the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know how is it then that he saith I came down from heaven Jesus therefore answered and said unto them murmur not among yourselves no man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day it is written in the prophets and they shall be all taught of God every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the father
I say unto you he that believeth on me hath everlasting life I am that bread of life your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world the Jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you whoso eateth my flesh and drink my blood hath eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed he that eateth my flesh and drink my blood dwelleth in me and I in him as the living father hath sent me and I live by the father so he that eateth me even he shall lie by me this is that bread which came down from heaven not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead he that eateth of this bread shall live forever these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum many therefore of his disciples when they had heard this said this is an hard saying who can hear it when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it he said unto them doth this offend you what and if ye shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life but there are some of you that believe not for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him and he said therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him then said Jesus unto the twelve will ye also go away then Simon answered him Lord to whom shall we go thou hast the words of eternal life and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ the son of the living God Jesus answered them have not I chosen you twelve and one of you is a devil he spake of Judas Iscariot the son of Simon for he it was that should betray him being one of the twelve after these things Jesus walked in Galilee for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand his brethren therefore said unto him depart hence and go into Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest for there is no man that doth anything in secret and he himself seeks to be known openly if thou do these things shew thyself to the world for neither did his brethren believe in him and Jesus said unto them my time is not yet come but your time is always ready the world cannot hate you but me it hath. Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil go ye up unto this feast I go not up yet unto this feast for my time is not yet full come when he had said these words unto them he abode still in Galilee but when his brethren were gone up then went he also up unto the feast not openly but as it were in secret then the Jews sought him at the feast and said where is he and there was much murmuring among the people concerning him for some said he is a good man others said nay. But he deceiveth the people howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews now about the midst of the feast Jesus went up into the temple and taught and the Jews marveled saying how knoweth this man letters having never learned Jesus answered them and said my doctrine is not mine but his that sent me if any man will do his will he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory but he that seeketh his glory that sent him the same is true and no unrighteousness is in him did not Moses give you the law and yet none of you keepeth the law why go ye about to kill me the people answered and said thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill thee Jesus answered and said unto them I have done one work and yet all marvel Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision not because it is of Moses but of the fathers and yet on the Sabbath day circumcise a man if a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision that the law of Moses should not be broken are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day judge not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment then said some of them of Jerusalem is not this he whom they seek to kill but lo he speak boldly and they say nothing unto him do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ howbeit we know this man whence he is but when Christ cometh no man know it whence he is then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught saying ye both know me and ye know whence I am and I am not come of myself but he that sent me is true whom ye know not but I know him for I am from him and he hath sent me then they sought to take him but no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come and many of the people believed on him and said when Christ cometh will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him then said Jesus unto them yet a little while am I with you and then I go unto him that sent me ye shall seek me and shall not find me and where I am thither ye cannot come then said the Jews among themselves whither will he go that we shall not find him will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles what manner of saying is this that he said ye shall seek me and shall not find me and where I am thither ye cannot come in the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water but this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified many of the people therefore when they heard this saying said of a truth this is the prophet others said this is the Christ but some said shall Christ come out of Galilee hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was so there was a division among the people because of him and some of them would have taken him but no man laid hands on him then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees and they said unto them why have ye not brought him the officers answered never man spake like this man then answered them the Pharisees are ye also deceived have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him but this people who knoweth not the law are cursed Nicodemus saith unto them he that came to Jesus by night being one of them doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doth they answered and said unto him art thou also of Galilee search and look for out of Galilee or is it no prophet and every man went unto his own house Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery and when they had set her in the midst they say unto him master this woman was taken in adultery in the very act now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned but what sayest thou this they said tempting him that they might have to accuse him but Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not so when they continued asking him he lifted up himself and said unto them he that is without sin among you let him first cast a stone at her and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest even unto the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman he said unto her woman where are those thine accusers hath no man condemned thee she said no man lord and Jesus said unto her neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more then spake Jesus again unto them saying I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life the Pharisees therefore said unto him thou bearest record of thyself thy record is not true Jesus answered and said unto them though I bear record of myself yet my record is true for I know whence I came and whither I go but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go ye judge after the flesh I judge no man and yet if I judge my judgment is true for I am not alone but I and the father that sent me it is
Father Jesus answered ye neither know me nor my father if ye had known me ye should have known my father also these words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple and no man laid hands on him for his hour was not yet come then said Jesus again unto them I go my way and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins whither I go ye cannot come then said the Jews will he kill himself because he saith whither I go ye cannot come and he said unto them ye are from beneath I am from above ye are of this world I am not of this world I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins for if ye believe not that I am he ye shall die in your sins then said they unto him who art thou and Jesus saith unto them even the same that I said unto you from the beginning I have many things to say and to judge of you but he that sent me is true and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him they understood not that he spake to them of the father then said Jesus unto them when ye have lifted up the Son of Man then shall ye know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself but as my Father hath taught me I speak these things and he that sent me is with me the Father hath not left me alone for I do always those things that please him as he spake these words many believed on him then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth and it Truth shall make you free they answered him we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man how sayest thou ye shall be made free Jesus answered them verily verily I say unto you whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin and the servant abideth not in the house forever but the son abideth ever if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed I know that ye are Abraham's seed but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you I speak that which I have seen with my father and ye do that which ye have seen with your father they answered and said unto him Abraham is our father Jesus saith unto them if ye were Abraham's children ye would do the works of Abraham but now ye seek to kill me a man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God this did not Abraham ye do the deeds of your father then said they to him we be not born of fornication we have one father even God Jesus said unto them if God were your father ye would love me for I proceeded forth and came from God neither came I of myself but he sent me why do ye not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speak the lie he speak of his own for he is a liar and the father of it and because I tell you the truth ye believe me not which of you convinceth me of sin and if I say the truth why do ye not believe me he that is of God heareth God's words ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God then answered the Jews and said unto him say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil Jesus answered I have not a devil but I honor my father and ye do to see anew me and I seek not mine own glory there is one that seeketh and judgeth verily verily I say unto you if a man keep my saying he shall never see death then said the Jews unto him now we know that thou hast a devil Abraham is dead and the prophets and thou sayest if a man keep my saying he shall never taste of death art thou greater than our father Abraham which is dead and the prophets are dead who makest thou thyself Jesus answered if I honor myself my honor is nothing it is my father that honoreth me of whom ye say that he is your God yet ye have not known him but I know him and if I should say I know him not I shall be a liar like unto you but I know him and keep his saying your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad then said the Jews unto him thou art not yet fifty years old and hast thou seen Abraham Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you before Abraham was I am then took the up stones to cast at him but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by and as Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind Jesus answered neither hath this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can work as long as I am in the world I am the light of the world when he had thus spoken he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him go wash in the pool of Siloam which is by interpretation sent he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that he was blind said is not this he that sat and begged some said this is he other said he is like him but he said I am he therefore said they unto him how were thine eyes opened he answered and said a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me go to the pool of Siloam and wash and I went and washed and I received sight and said they unto him where is he he said I know not they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight he said unto them he put clay upon mine eyes and I washed and do see therefore said some of the Pharisees this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day others said how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles and there was a division among them they say unto the blind man again what sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes he said he is a prophet but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight and they asked them saying is this your son who yes was born blind how then doth he now see his parents answered them and said we know that this is our son and that he was born blind but by what means he now seeth we know not or who hath opened his eyes we know not he is of age ask him he shall speak for himself these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ he should be put out of the synagogue therefore said his parents he is of age ask him then again called they the man that was blind and said Unto him give God the praise we know that this man is a sinner he answered and said whether he be a sinner or no I know not one thing I know that whereas I was blind now I see then said they to him again what did he to thee how opened he thine eyes he answered them I have told you already and ye did not hear wherefore would ye hear it again will ye also be his disciples then they reviled him and said thou art his disciple but we are Moses disciples we know that God spake unto Moses as for this fellow we know not from whence he is the man answered and said unto them why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is and yet he hath opened mine eyes now we know that God heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshipper of God and doth his will him he heareth since the world began was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind if this man were not of God he could do nothing they answered and said unto him Thou wast altogether born in sins and dost thou teach us and they cast him out Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him he said unto him dost thou believe on the son of God he answered and said who is he Lord that I might believe on him and Jesus said unto him thou hast both seen him and it is he that talketh with thee and he said Lord I believe and he worshipped him and Jesus said for judgment I am come into this world that they which see not might see and that they which see might be made blind and some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him are we blind also Jesus said unto them if ye were blind ye should have no sin but now ye say we see therefore your sin remaineth verily verily I say unto you he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold but climbeth up some other way the same is a thief and a robber but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep to him the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and letteth them out and when he putteth forth his own sheep he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice and a stranger will they not follow
All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not seeth it. Wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleet and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep the hireling fleet because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine as the father knoweth me even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd therefore doth. My father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again no man taketh it from me but I lay it down of myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again this commandment have I received of my father there was a division therefore again among the Jews for these sayings and many of them said he hath a devil and is mad why hear ye him others said these are not the words of him that hath a devil can a devil open the eyes of the blind and it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication and it was winter and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch then came the Jews round about him and said unto him how long dost thou make us to doubt if thou be the Christ tell us plainly Jesus answered them I told you and ye believe not the works that I do in my father's name they bear witness of me but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand I and my father are one then the Jews took up stones again to stone him Jesus answered them many good works have I shewed you from my father for which of those works do ye stone me the Jews answered him saying for a good work we stone thee not but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man makest thyself God Jesus answered them is it not written in your law I said ye are gods if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken say ye of him whom the father hath sanctified and sent into the world thou blasphemest because I said I am the son of God if I do not the works of my father believe me not but if I do though ye believe not me believe the works that ye may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him therefore they sought again to take him but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where at first baptized and there he abode and many resorted unto him and said did no miracle but all things that spake of this man were true and many believed on him there now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick therefore his sister sent unto him saying Lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick when Jesus heard that he said the sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus when he had heard therefore that he was sick he abode two days still in the same place where he was then after that saith he to his disciples let us go into Judea again his disciples say unto him master the Jews of late sought to stone thee and goest thou thither again Jesus answered are there not twelve hours in the day if any man walk in the day he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world but if a man walk in the night he stumbleth because there is no light in him these things said he and after that he saith unto them our friend Lazarus sleepeth but I go that I may awake him out of sleep then said his disciples lord if he sleep he shall do well howbeit Jesus spake of his death but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep then said Jesus unto them plainly Lazarus is dead and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe nevertheless let us go unto him then said Thomas which is called Didymus unto his fellow disciples let us also go that we may die with him then when Jesus came he found that he had lain in the grave four days already now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem about fifteen furlongs off and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother then Martha as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming went and met him but Mary sat still in the house then said Martha unto Jesus Lord if thou hadst been here my brother had not died but I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God God will give it thee Jesus saith unto her thy brother shall rise again Martha saith unto him I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believest thou this she saith unto him Ye Lord I believe that thou art the Christ the Son of God which should come into the world and when she had so said she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly saying the master is come and calleth for thee as soon as she heard that she arose quickly and came unto him now Jesus was not yet come into the town but was in that place where Martha met him the Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out followed her saying she goeth unto the grave to weep there then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him she fell down at his feet saying unto him Lord if thou hadst been here my brother had not died when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said where have ye laid him they said unto him Lord come and see Jesus wept then said the Jews behold how he loved him and some of them said could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave it was a cave and a stone lay upon it Jesus said take ye away the stone Martha the sister of him that was dead saith unto him Lord by this time he stink for he hath been dead four days Jesus saith unto her said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of God then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank thee that thou hast heard me and I knew that thou hearest me always but because of the people which stand by I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me and when he thus had spoken he cried with a loud voice Lazarus come forth and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin Jesus saith unto them loose him and let him go then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him but some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said what do we for this man doth many miracles if we let him thus alone all men will believe on him and they shall come and take away both our place and nation and one of them named Caiaphas being the high priest that same year said unto them ye know nothing at all nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not and this spake he not of himself but being high priest that year he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation and not for that nation only but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness into a city called Ephraim and there continued with his disciples and the Jews Passover was nigh at hand and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple what think ye that he will not come to the feast now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he
was one of them that sat at the table with him and took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment then saith one of his disciples Judas Iscariot Simon's son which should betray him why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor this he said not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put there and then said Jesus let her alone against the day of my burying hath she kept this for the poor always ye have with you but me ye have not always much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus sake only but that they might see Lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead but the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus on it. Next day much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried Hosanna blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord and Jesus when he had found a young ass sat thereon as it is written fear not daughter of Zion behold thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt these things understood not his disciples at the first but when Jesus was glorified then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him the people therefore that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead bear record for this cause the people also met him for that they heard that he had done this miracle the Pharisees therefore said among themselves perceive ye how yet prevail nothing behold the world is gone after him and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip which was a Bethsaida of Galilee and desired him saying sir we would see Jesus Philip cometh and telleth Andrew and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus and Jesus answered them saying the hour is come that the son of man should be glorified verily verily I say unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abide alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit he that loveth his life shall lose it and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal if any man serve me let him follow me and where I am there shall also my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor now is my soul troubled and what shall I say father save me from this hour but for this cause came I unto this hour father glorify thy name then came there a voice from heaven saying I have both glorified it and will glorify it again the people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered others said an angel spake to him Jesus answered and said this voice came not because of me but for your sakes now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast out and I if I be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me this he said signifying what death he should die the people answered him we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever and how sayest thou the son of man must be lifted up who is the son of man then Jesus said unto them yet a little while is the light with you walk while ye have the light lest darkness come upon you for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth while ye have light believe in the light that ye may be the children of light these things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them but though he had done so many miracles before them yet they believed not on him that the saying of Esau as the prophet might be fulfilled which he spake Lord who hath believed our report and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed therefore they could not believe because that Esau said again he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them these things said Esau when he saw his glory and spake of him nevertheless among the chief rulers also many believed on him but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God Jesus cried and said he that believeth on me believeth not on me but on him that sent me and he that seeth me seeth him that sent me I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness and if any man hear my words and believe not I judge him not for I came not to judge the world but to save the world he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that Judgeth him the word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day for I have not spoken of myself but the father which sent me he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak and I know that his commandment is life everlasting whatsoever I speak therefore even as the father said unto me so I speak now before the feast of the Passover when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the father having loved his own which were in the world he loved them unto the end and supper being ended the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot Simon's son to betray him Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself after that he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded then cometh he to Simon and saith unto him Lord dost thou wash my feet Jesus answered and said unto him what I do thou knowest not now but thou shalt know hereafter saith unto him thou shalt never wash my feet Jesus answered him if I wash thee not thou hast no part with me Simon saith unto him Lord not my feet only but also my hands and my head Jesus saith to him he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet but is clean every whit and ye are clean but not all for he knew who should betray him therefore said he ye are not all clean so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again he said unto them know ye what I have done to you ye call me master and lord and ye say well for so I am if I then your lord and master have washed your feet ye also ought to wash one another's feet for I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you verily verily I say unto you the servant is not greater than his lord neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him if ye know these things happy are ye if ye do them I speak not of you all I know whom I have chosen but that the scripture may be fulfilled he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass ye may believe that I am he verily verily I say unto you he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me when Jesus had thus said he was troubled in spirit and testified and said verily verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me then the disciples looked one on another doubting of whom he spake now there was leaning on Jesus bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved Simon therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake he then lying on Jesus breast saith unto him Lord who is it Jesus answered he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it and when he had dipped the sop he gave it to Judas Iscariot the son of Simon and after the sop Satan entered into him then said Jesus unto him that thou doest do quickly now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him for some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him by those things that we have need of against the feast or that he should give something to the poor he then having received the sop went immediately out and it was night therefore when he was gone out Jesus said now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him if God be glorified in him God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him little children yet a little while I am with you ye shall seek me and as I said unto the Jews whither I go ye cannot come so now I say to you a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have loved one to another Simon said unto him Lord whither goest thou Jesus answered him whither I go thou canst not follow me now but thou shalt follow me afterwards said unto him Lord why cannot I follow thee now I will lay down
Also in me and my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also and whither I go ye know and the way ye know Thomas saith unto him Lord we know not whither thou goest and how can we know the way Jesus saith unto him I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me if ye had known me ye should have known my father also and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him Philip saith unto him Lord shew us the father and it sufficeth us Jesus saith unto him have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me Philip he that hath seen me hath seen the father and how sayest thou then shew us the father believest thou not that I am in the father and the father in me the words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself but the father that dwelleth in me he doth the works believe me that I am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very works sake verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son if ye shall ask anything in my name I will do it if ye love me keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but ye see me because I live ye shall live also at that day ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him Judah saith unto him not Iscariot Lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which yet here is not mine but the fathers which sent me these things have I spoken unto you being yet present with you but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid ye have heard how I said unto you I go away and come again unto you if ye love me ye would rejoice because I said I go unto the father for my father is greater than I am now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass ye might believe hereafter I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me but that the world may know that I love the father and as the father gave me commandment even so I do arise let us go hence I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me I am the vine ye are the branches he that abide in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing if a man Abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples as the father hath loved me so have I loved you continue ye in my love if ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his lord doth but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it you these things I command you that ye love one another if the world hate you ye know that it hated me before it hated you if ye were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world but I have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hate you remember the word that I said unto you the servant is not greater than his lord if they have persecuted me they will also persecute you if they have kept my saying they will keep yours also but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake because they know not him that sent me if I had not come and spoken unto them they had not had sin but now they have no cloak for their sin he that hate me hate my father also if I had not done among them the works which none other man did they had not had sin but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law they hated me without a cause but when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father he shall testify of me and yet also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning these things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended they shall put you out of the synagogues yet the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doth God's service and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me but these things have I told you that when the time shall come ye may remember that I told you of them and these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you but now I go my way to him that sent me and none of you asketh me whither goest thou but because I have said these things unto you sorrow hath filled your heart nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if I depart I will send him unto you and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now howbeit when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will shew you things to come he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you all things that the father hath are mine therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall shew it unto you a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the father then said some of his disciples among themselves what is this that he saith unto us a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me and because I go to the father they said therefore what is this that he saith a little while we cannot tell what he saith now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me verily verily I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into joy a woman when she is in travail hath sorrow because her hour is come but as soon as she is delivered of the child she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world and ye now therefore have sorrow but I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily I say unto you whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it you hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full these things have I spoken unto you in proverbs but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in proverbs but I shall shew
shall ask in my name and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you for the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again I leave the world and go to the Father his disciples said unto him lo now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee by this we believe that thou camest forth from God Jesus answered them do ye now believe behold the hour cometh yet is now come that ye shall be scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said Father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent I have glorified thee on the earth I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do and now O Father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world thine they were and thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine and all mine are thine and thine are Mine and I am glorified in them and now I am no more in the world but these are in the world and I come to thee Holy Father keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are while I was with them in the world I kept them in thy name those that thou gavest me I have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled and now come I to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy. Fulfilled in themselves I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil they are not of the world even as I am not of the world sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth as thou hast sent me into the world even so have I also sent them into the world and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me father I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world O righteous father the world hath not known thee but I have known thee and these have known that thou hast sent me and I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them when Jesus had Spoken these words he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples and Judas also which betrayed him knew the place for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples Judas then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them whom seek yet. They answered him Jesus of Nazareth Jesus saith unto them I am he and Judas also which betrayed him stood with them as soon then as he had said unto them I am he they went backward and fell to the ground and asked he them again whom seek ye and they said Jesus of Nazareth Jesus answered I have told you that I am he if therefore ye seek me let these go their way that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me have I lost none then Simon having a sword drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear the servant's name was Malchus then said Jesus unto put up thy sword into the sheath the cup which my father hath given me shall I not drink it then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first for he was father in law to Caiaphas which was the high priest that same year now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people and Simon followed Jesus and so did another disciple that disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest but stood at the door without then went out that other disciple which was known unto the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in and saith the damsel that kept the door unto art not thou also one of this man's disciples he saith I am not and the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals for it was cold and they warmed themselves and stood with them and warmed himself the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine Jesus answered him I spake openly to the world I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whither the Jews always resort and in secret have I said nothing why askest thou me ask them which heard me what I have said unto them behold they know what I said and when he had thus spoken one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand saying answerest thou the high priest so Jesus answered him if I have spoken evil bear witness of the evil but if well why smitest thou me now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest and Simon stood and warmed himself they said therefore unto him art not thou also one of his disciples he denied it and said I am not one of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman whose ear cut off Seth did not I see thee in the garden with him then denied again and immediately the cock crew then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment and it was early and they themselves went not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover Pilate then went out unto them and said what accusation bring ye against this man they answered and said unto him if he were not a male factor we would not have delivered him up unto thee then said Pilate unto them take ye him and judge him according to your law the Jews therefore said unto him it is not lawful for us to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake signifying what death he should die then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him art thou the king of the Jews Jesus answered him sayest thou this thing of thyself or did others tell it thee of me Pilate answered am I a Jew thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me what hast thou done Jesus answered my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews but now is my kingdom not from hence Pilate therefore said unto him art thou a king then Jesus answered thou sayest that I am a king to this end was I born and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice Pilate saith unto him what is truth and when he had said this he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them I find in him no fault at all but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews then cried they all again saying not this man but Barabbas now Barabbas was a robber then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him and the soldiers plied the crown of thorns and put it on his head and they put on him a purple robe and said hail king of the Jews and they smote him with their hands Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them behold I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe and Pilate
Crucify him for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have Allah and by our law he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying he was the more afraid and went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever make himself a king speak against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. And said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. And the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam woven from the top throughout. They said, Therefore, among themselves, let us not rent it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved he saith unto his mother woman behold thy son then saith he to the disciple behold thy mother and from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home after this Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled saith I thirst now there was set a vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost the Jews therefore because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day for that Sabbath day was an high day besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away then came the soldiers and break the legs of it first and of the other which was crucified with him but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already they break not his legs but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water and he that saw it bear record and his record is true and he knoweth that he saith true that ye might believe for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled a bone of him shall not be broken and again another scripture saith they shall look on him whom they pierced and after this Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus but secretly for fear of the Jews besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate gave him leave he came therefore and took the body of Jesus and there came also Nicodemus which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes about an hundred pound weight then took they the body of Jesus and wounded in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new sepulchre wherein was never man yet laid there lay they Jesus therefore because of the Jews preparation day for the sepulchre was nigh at hand the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre then she runneth and cometh to Simon and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre and we know not where they have laid him therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre so they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun and came first to the sepulchre and he stooping down and looking and saw the linen clothes lying yet went he not and then cometh Simon following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulchre and he saw and believed for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead then the disciples went away again unto their own home but Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping and as she wept she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and see two angels in white sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain and they say unto her woman why weepest thou she saith unto them because they have taken away my lord and I know not where they have laid him and when she had thus said she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus Jesus saith unto her woman why weepest thou whom seekest thou she supposing him to be the gardener saith unto him sir if thou have borne him hence tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him Away Jesus saith unto her Mary she turned herself and saith unto him Rabbani which is to say Master Jesus saith unto her touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren and say unto them I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them peace be unto you and when he had so said he shewed unto them his hands and his side then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord then said Jesus to them again peace be unto you as my father hath sent me even so sent I you and when he had said this he breathed on them and saith unto them receive ye the Holy Ghost whosoever sins ye remit they are remitted unto them and whosoever sins ye retain they are retained but Thomas one of the twelve called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came the other disciples therefore said unto him we have seen the Lord but he said unto them except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe and after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them then came Jesus the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said peace be unto you then saith he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing and Thomas answered and said unto him my Lord and my God Jesus saith unto him Thomas because thou hast seen me thou hast believed blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name after these things Jesus shewed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias and on this wise shewed he himself there were together Simon and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples Simon saith unto them I go a fishing they say unto him we also go with thee they went forth and entered into a ship immediately and that night they caught nothing but when the morning was now come Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples
Seth unto it is the Lord now when Simon heard that it was the Lord he girt his fisher's coat unto him for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea and the other disciples came in a little ship for they were not far from land but as it were two hundred cubits dragging the net with fishes as soon then as they were come to land they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread Jesus saith unto them bring of the fish which ye have now caught Simon went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes an hundred and fifty and three and for all there were so many yet was not the net broken Jesus saith unto them come and dine and none of the disciples durst ask him who art thou knowing that it was the Lord Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise this is now the third time that Jesus shewed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead so when they had dined Jesus saith to Simon Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me more than these he saith unto him ye Lord thou knowest that I love thee he saith unto him feed my lambs he saith to him again the second time Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me he saith unto him ye Lord thou knowest that I love thee he saith unto him feed my sheep he saith unto him the third time Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me was grieved because he said unto him the third time lovest thou me and he said unto him Lord thou knowest all things thou knowest that I love thee Jesus saith unto him feed my sheep verily verily I say unto thee when thou wast young thou girdest thyself and walkedst whither thou wouldest but when thou shalt be old thou shalt stretch forth thy hands and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not this spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God and when he had spoken this he saith unto him follow me then turning about seek the disciple whom Jesus loved following which also leaned on his breast at supper and said Lord which is he that betrayeth thee seeing him saith to Jesus Lord and what shall this man do Jesus saith unto him if I will that he tarry till I come what is that to thee follow thou me then went the saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die yet Jesus said not unto him he shall not die but if I will that he tarry till I come what is that to thee this is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things and we know that his testimony is true and there are also many other things which Jesus did the which if they should be written every one I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written amen the former treatise have I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he shewed himself alive. After his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he ye have heard of me for truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence when they therefore were come together they asked of him saying Lord wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven the same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey and when they were come in they went up into an upper room where abode both Anna and Andrew Philip and Thomas Bartholomew and the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas the brother of these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren and in those days stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about an hundred and twenty men and brethren this scripture must needs have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas which was guide to them that took Jesus for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much as that field is called in their proper tongue Aseldama that is to say the field of blood for it is written in the book of Psalms let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from the baptism of unto that same day that he was taken up from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection and they appointed two Joseph called Barzabas who was surnamed Justus and Matthias and they prayed and said thou Lord which knowest the hearts of all men shew whether of these two thou hast chosen that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place and they gave forth their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias and he was numbered with the eleven apostles and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven now when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all these which speak Galileans and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome Jews and proselytes Cretes and Arabians we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God and they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another what meaneth this others mocking said these men are full of new wine but standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem be this known unto you and hearken to my words for these are not drunken as ye suppose seeing it is but the third hour of the day but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel and it shall come to pass in the last day saith God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will shew wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it for David speak concerning him I foresaw the Lord always before my face for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad
Sepulchre is with us unto this day therefore being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell neither his flesh did see corruption this Jesus hath God raised up whereof we all are witnesses therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear for David is not ascended into the heavens but he saith himself the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do then said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this untoward generation and they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved now and went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seeing and about to go into the temple asked an alms and fastening his eyes upon him with said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them then said silver and gold have I none but such as I have given thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him and as the lame man which was healed held and all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering and when saw it he answered unto the people ye men of Israel why marvel yet at this or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or Holiness we had made this man to walk the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go but ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom ye see. And know ye the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all and now brethren I what that through ignorance ye did it as did also your rulers but those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer he hath so fulfilled repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began for Moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people yet. And all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed unto you first God having raised up his son Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities and as they spake unto the people the priests and the captain of the temple. And the Sadducees came upon them being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead and they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day for it was now eventide howbeit many of them which heard the word believed and the number of the men was about five thousand and it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and honest the high priest and Caiaphas and, and Alexander and as many as were of it. Kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem and when they had set them in the midst they asked by what power or by what name have ye done this then filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom ye crucified whom God raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand here before you whole this is the stone which was set at not of you builders which is become the head of the corner neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved now when they saw the boldness of an and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus and beholding the man which was healed standing with them they could say nothing against it but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves saying what shall we do to these men for that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it but that it spread no further among the people let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus but and answered and said unto them whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard so when they had further threatened them they let them go finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people for all men glorified God for that which was done for the man was above forty years old on whom this miracle of healing was shoot and being let go they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them and when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said Lord thou art God which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is who by the mouth of thy servant David hast said why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done and now Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child. Jesus and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all neither. 
Was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need and Hosea's who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas which is being interpreted the son of consolation a Levite and of the country of Cyprus having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet but said Ananias why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land whilst it remained was it not thine own and after it was sold was it not in thine own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart thou hast not lied unto men but unto God and Ananias hearing these words fell down and gave up the ghost and great fear came on all them that heard these things and the young men arose wound him up and carried him out and buried him and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife not knowing what was done came in and answered unto her tell me whether ye sold the land for so much and she said ye for so much then said unto her how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord behold the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost and the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth buried her by her husband and great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch and of the rest durst no man join himself to them but the people magnified them and believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes both of men and women insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of passing by might overshadow some of them there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed every one then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him which is the sect of the Sadducees and were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life and when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught but the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought but when the officers came and found them not in the prison they returned and told saying the prison truly found we shut with all safety and the keepers standing without before the doors but when we had opened we found no man within now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things they doubted of them whereunto this would grow then came one and told them saying behold the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned and when they had brought them they set them before the council and the high priest asked them saying did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name and behold ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us then and the other apostles answered and said we ought to obey God rather than men the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins and we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him when they heard that they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them then stood there up one in the council a Pharisee named Gamaliel a doctor of the law had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them ye men of Israel take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men for before these days rose up Theodos boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men about four hundred joined themselves who was slain and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to not after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him he also perished and all even as many as obeyed him were dispersed and now I say unto you refrain from these men and let them alone for if this counsel or this work be of men it will come to naught but if it be of God ye cannot overthrow it lest haply ye be found even to fight against God and to him they agreed and when they had called the apostles and beaten them they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name and daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against them because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables wherefore brethren look ye out among you seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word and the saying pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost and Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas a proselyte of Antioch whom they set before the apostles and when they had prayed they laid their hands on them and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith and Stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people then there arose certain of the synagogue which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and of Asia disputing with Stephen and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake then they suborned men which said we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us and all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel then said the high priest are these things so and he said men brethren and fathers hearken the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. Before he dwelt in Sharon and said unto him get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall shew thee then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Sharon and from thence when his father was dead he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell and he gave him none inheritance in it no not so much as to set his foot on yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him when as yet he had no child and God spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge said God and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place and he gave him the covenant of circumcision and so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day and Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs and the Patriarchs moved with envy sold Joseph into Egypt but God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Chanon and great affliction and our fathers found no sustenance but when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt he sent out our fathers first and at the second time Joseph was made known to 
his brethren and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh and sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred threescore and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died he and our fathers and were carried over into Sichem and laid in the sepulchre that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emmer the father of Sichem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh which God had sworn to Abraham the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose which knew not Joseph the same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months and when he was cast out Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds and when he was full forty years old it came into his heart to visit his brethren the children of Israel and seeing one of them suffer wrong he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them but they understood not and the next day he shewed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again saying sirs ye are brethren why do ye wrong one to another but he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away saying who made thee a ruler and a judge over us wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday then fled Moses at the saying and was a stranger in the land of Madian where he begot two sons and when forty years were expired there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush when Moses saw it he wondered at the sight and as he drew near to behold it the voice of the Lord came unto him saying I am the God of thy fathers the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob then Moses trembled and durst not behold and said the Lord to him put off thy shoes from thy feet for the place where thou standest is holy ground I have seen I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt and I have heard their groaning and am come down to deliver them and now come I will send thee into Egypt this Moses whom they refused saying who made thee a ruler and a judge the same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush he brought them out after that he had shewed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us to whom our fathers would not obey but thrust him from them and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt saying unto Aaron make us gods to go before us for as for this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt we wot not what is become of him and they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven as it is written in the book of the prophets O ye house of Israel have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness ye ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan figures which ye made to worship them and I will carry you away beyond Babylon our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob but Solomon built him an house howbeit the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands as saith the prophet heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool what house will ye build me saith the Lord or what is the place of my rest hath not my hand made all these things yes stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did so do ye which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and they have slain them which shoot before of the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it when they heard these things. They were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth but he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said behold I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice Lord lay not the sin to their charge and when he had said this he fell asleep and Saul was consenting unto his death and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him as for Saul he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city but there was a certain man called Simon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God and to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women then Simon himself believed also and when he was baptized he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God they sent unto them and who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost for as yet he was fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost and when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles hands the Holy Ghost was given he offered them money saying give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost but said unto him thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter for thy heart is not right in the sight of God repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee for I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity then answered Simon and said pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me and they when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is desert and he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia and eunuch of great authority under Candace queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot ready says the prophet then the spirit said unto Philip go near and join thyself to this chariot and Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet he says and said understandest thou what thou readest and he said how can
mouth in its humiliation his judgment was taken away and who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth and the eunuch answered Philip and said I pray thee of whom speak the prophet this of himself or of some other man then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus and as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized and Philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest and he answered and said I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the water both Philip and the eunuch and he baptized him and when they were come up out of the water the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing but Philip was found at Ezodus and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me? And he said who art thou Lord and the Lord said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and he trembling and astonished said Lord what wilt thou have me to do and the Lord said unto him arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice but seeing no man and Saul arose from the earth and when his eyes were opened he saw no man but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus and he was three days without sight and neither did eat nor drink and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to him said the Lord in a vision Ananias and he said behold I am here Lord and the Lord said unto him arise and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus for behold he and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight then Ananias answered Lord I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem and here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name but the Lord said unto him go thy way for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel for I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said brother Saul the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized and when he had received meat he was strengthened and was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God but all that heard him were amazed and said is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that this is very Christ and after that many days were fulfilled the Jews took counsel to kill him but their laying away was known of Saul and they watched the gates day and night to kill him then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket and when Saul was come to Jerusalem he essayed to join himself to the disciples but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians but they went about to slay him which when the brethren knew they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied and it came to pass as passed throughout. All quarters he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda and there he found a certain man named Aeneas which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy and said unto him Aeneas Jesus Christ make thee whole arise and make thy bed and he arose immediately and all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha which by interpretation is called Dorcas this woman was full of good works and alms deeds which she did and it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died whom when they had washed they laid her in an upper chamber and forasmuch as Lydda was nigh to Joppa and the disciples had heard that was there they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them then arose and went with them when he was come they brought him into the upper chamber and all the widows stood by him weeping and shewing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them but put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body said Tabitha arise and she opened her eyes and when she saw she sat up and he gave her his hand and lifted her up and when he had called the saints and widows presented her alive and it was known throughout all Joppa and many believed in the Lord and it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a tanner there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band a devout man and one that feared God with all his house which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him Cornelius and when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it Lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God and now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is he lodgeth with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do and when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually and when he had declared all these things unto them he sent them to Joppa on the morrow as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city went up upon the house top to pray about the sixth hour and he became very hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great cheatnet at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him rise kill and eat but said not so lord for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean and the voice spake unto him again the second time what God hath cleansed that call not thou common this was done thrice and the vessel was received up again into heaven now while doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean behold the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon which was surnamed were lodged there while thought on the vision the spirit said unto him behold three men seek thee arise therefore and get thee down and go with them doubting nothing for I have sent them then went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said behold I am he whom ye seek what is the cause wherefore ye are come and they said Cornelius the centurion a just man and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee then called he them in and lodged them and on the morrow went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and
Then you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation but God hath shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean therefore came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me and Cornelius said four days ago I was fasting until this hour and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house and behold a man stood before me in bright clothing and said. Cornelius thy prayer is heard and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon whose surname is he is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside who when he cometh shall speak unto thee immediately therefore I sent to thee and thou hast well done that thou art come now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God then opened his mouth and said of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him the word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ he is Lord of all that word I say ye know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of it. Devil for God was with him and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly not to all the people but unto witnesses chosen before of God even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead to him. Give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins while yet spake these words the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God then answered can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord then prayed they him to tarry certain days and the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God and when was come up to Jerusalem they that were of the circumcision contended with him saying thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them but rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them saying I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision a certain vessel descend as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners and it came even to me upon the which when I had fastened mine eyes I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and I heard a voice saying unto me arise slay and eat but I said not so Lord for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth but the voice answered me again from heaven what God hath cleansed that call not thou common and this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven and behold immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me and the spirit bade me go with them nothing doubting moreover these six brethren accompanied me and we entered into the man's house and he shewed us how he had seen an angel in his house which stood and said unto him send men to Joppa and call for Simon whose surname is who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved and as I began to speak the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning then remembered I the word of the Lord how that he said indeed baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost for as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ what was I that I could withstand God when they heard these things they held their peace and glorified God saying then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenice and Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only and some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene which when they were come to Antioch spake unto the Grecians preaching the Lord Jesus and the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord for he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch and there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar then the disciples every man according to his ability determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church and he killed the brother of with the sword and because he saw it pleased the Jews he proceeded further to take also then were the days of unleavened bread and when he had apprehended him he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison and behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands and the angel said unto him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he saith unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me and he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision when they were past the first and the second ward they came unto the iron gate that ledeth unto the city which opened to them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him and when was come to himself he said now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews and when he had considered the thing he came to the house of Mary the mother of whose surname was where many were gathered together praying and as knocked at the door of the gate a damsel came to Hearken named Rhoda and when she knew S voice she opened not the gate for gladness but ran in and told how stood before the gate and they said unto her thou art mad but she constantly affirmed that it was even so then said they it is his angel but continued knocking and when they had opened the door and saw him they were astonished but he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison and he said go shew these things unto and to the brethren and he departed and went into another place now as soon as it was day there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of and when Herod had sought for him and found him not he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death and he went down from Judea to Caesarea and their abode and Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon but they came with one accord to him and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country and upon a set day Herod arrayed in royal apparel sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them and the people gave a shout saying it is the voice of a god and not of a man and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him
They had fulfilled their ministry and took with them whose surname was now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Mon and which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them. They sent them away so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus and when they were at Salamis they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews and they had also to their minister and when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos they found a certain sorcerer a false prophet a Jew whose name was Barchus which was with the deputy of the country Sergius Paulus a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God but Elimus the sorcerer for so is his name by interpretation withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith then Saul who also is called Paul filled with the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him and said O full of all subtlety and all mischief thou child of the devil thou enemy of all righteousness wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord and now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee and thou shalt be blind not seeing the sun for a season and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand and the deputy when he saw what was done believed being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos they came to Perga in Pamphylia and departing from them returned to Jerusalem but when they departed from Perga they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down and after the reading of the law and the prophets the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them saying Yemen and brethren if ye have any word of exhortation for the people say on then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said men of Israel and yet that fear God give audience the God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and with an high arm brought he them out of it and about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness and when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Chanan he divided their land to them by lot and after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years until Samuel the prophet and afterward they desired a king and God gave unto them Saul the son of Sis a man of the tribe of Benjamin by the space of forty years and when he had removed him he raised up unto them David to be their king to whom also he gave testimony and said I have found David the son of Jesse a man after mine own heart which shall fulfill all my will of this man's seed hath God according to his promise raised unto Israel a savior Jesus when had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel and as fulfilled his course he said whom think ye that I am I am not he but behold there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose men and brethren children of the stock of Abraham and whosoever among you feareth God to you is the word of the salvation sent for they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers because they knew him not nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day they have fulfilled them in condemning him and though they found no cause of death in him yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain and when they had fulfilled all that was written of him they took him down from the tree and laid him in a Sepulcher but God raised him from the dead and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem who are his witnesses unto the people and we declare unto you glad tidings how that the promise which was made unto the fathers God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children in that he hath raised up Jesus again as it is also written in the second psalm thou art my son this day have I begotten thee and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead now. No more to return to corruption he said on this wise I will give you the sure mercies of David wherefore he saith also in another psalm thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption for David after he had served his own generation by the will of God fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption but he whom God raised again saw no corruption be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses beware therefore lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets behold ye despisers and wonder and perish for I work a work in your days a work which ye shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath now when the congregation was broken up many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God but when the Jews saw the multitudes they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul contradicting and blaspheming then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you but seeing yet put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life lo we turn to the Gentiles for so hath the Lord commanded us saying I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth and when the Gentiles heard this they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed and the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost and it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands but the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles and when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and derb cities of Lycania and unto the region that leath round about and there they preached the gospel and there sat a certain man at Lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked the same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he leaped and walked and when the people saw what Paul had done they lifted up their voices saying in the speech of like any of the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men and they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker then the priest of Jupiter which was before their city brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying sirs why do ye these things we also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways nevertheless he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness and with these saying scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead howbeit as the disciples stood round about him
the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed and after they had passed throughout Pisidia they came to Pamphylia and when they had preached the word in Perga they went down into Adelia and then sailed to Antioch from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled and when they were come and had gathered the church together they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles and there they abode long time with the disciples and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses ye cannot be saved when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation. With them they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question and being brought on their way by the church they passed through Phenice and Samaria declaring the conversion of the Gentiles and they caused great joy unto all the brethren and when they were come to Jerusalem they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders and they declared all things that God had done with them but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter and when there had been much disputing rose up and said unto the men and brethren ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe and God which knoweth the hearts bear them. Witness giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them and after they had held their peace answered saying men and brethren hearken unto me Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down and I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called saith the Lord who doth all these things known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood for Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas namely Judas surnamed Barzabas and Silas chief men among the brethren and they wrote letters by them after this matter the apostles and elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting. Your soul saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we have sent therefore Judas and Silas who shall also tell you the same things by mouth for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication from which if ye keep yourselves ye shall do well fare ye well so when they were dismissed they came to Antioch and when they had gathered the multitude together they delivered the epistle which when they had read they rejoiced for the consolation and Judas and Silas being prophets also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them and after they had tarried there a space they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles notwithstanding it pleased Silas to abide there still Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also and some days after Paul said unto Barnabas let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do and Barnabas determined to take with them whose surname was but Paul thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other and so Barnabas took and sailed unto Cyprus and Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God and he went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches then came he to Derb and Lystra and behold a certain disciple was there named Timotheus the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess and believed but his father was a Greek which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters for they knew all that his father was a Greek and as they went through the cities they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem and so were the church is established in the faith and increased in number daily now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia after they were come to Mysia they essayed to go into Bithynia but the spirit suffered them not and they passing by Mysia came down to Troas and a vision appeared to Paul in the night there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying come over into Macedonia and help us and after he had seen a vision immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them therefore loosing from Troas we came with a straight course to Samothracia and the next day to Nepolis and from thence to Philippi which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony and we were in that city abiding certain days and on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither and a certain woman named Lydia a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira which worshipped God heard us whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul and when she was baptized and her household she besought us saying if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord come into my house and abide there and she constrained us and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by sooth saying the same followed Paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the most high God which shew unto us the way of salvation and this did she many days but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour and when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the ed place unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive neither to observe being and the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them and when they had laid many stripes upon them they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing 
that the prisoners had been fled but Paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straightway and when he had brought them into his house he set meat before them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house and when it was day the magistrates sent the sergeants saying let those men go and the keeper of the prison told the saying to Paul the magistrates have sent to let you go now therefore depart and go in peace but Paul said unto them they have beaten us openly uncondemned being and have cast us into prison and now do they thrust us out privily nay verily but let them come themselves and fetch us out and the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates and they feared when they heard that they were and they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city and they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia and when they had seen the brethren they comforted them and departed now when they had passed through Amphipolis. And Apollonia they came to Thessalonica where was a synagogue of the Jews and Paul as his manner was went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ and some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks a great multitude and of the chief women not a few but the Jews which believed not. Moved with envy took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people and when they found them not they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crying these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also whom Jason hath received and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar saying that there is another king one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things and when they had taken security of Jason and of the other they let them go and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so therefore many of them. Believed also of honorable women which were Greeks and of men not a few but when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea they came thither also and stirred up the people and then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea but Silas and Timotheus abode there still and they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the et daily with them that met with him and certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him and some said what will this babbler say other some he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection and they took him and brought him unto Areopagus saying may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears we would know therefore what these things mean for all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said ye men of Athens I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious for as I passed by and beheld your devotions I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him declare I unto you God that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if haply they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said for we are also his offspring for as much then as we are the offspring of God we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device and the times of this ignorance God winked at but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead some mocked and others said we will hear thee again of this matter so Paul departed from among them howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris and others with them after these things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila born in Pontus lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them and because he was of the same craft he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation they were tent makers and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks and when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed he shook his raiment and said unto them your blood be upon your own heads I am clean from henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles and he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice one that worshipped God whose house joined hard to the synagogue and Crispus the chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his house and many of the hearing believed and were baptized and spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace for I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for I have much people in the city and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them and when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat saying this fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law and when Paul was now about to open his mouth Gallio said unto the Jews if it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness O ye Jews reason would that I should bear with you but if it be a question of words and names and of your law look yet to it for I will be no judge of such matters and he drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes the chief ruler of the synagogue and beat him before the judgment seat and Gallio cared for none of those things and Paul after this tarried there yet a good while and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria and with him Priscilla and Aquila having shorn his head in Sencre for he had a vow and he came to Ephesus and left them there but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews when they desired him to tarry longer time with them he consented not but bade them farewell saying I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem but I will return again unto you if God will and he sailed from Ephesus and when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church he went down to Antioch and after he had spent some time there he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order strengthening all the disciples and a certain Jew named Apollos. Born at Alexandria an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus this man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord knowing only the baptism of and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto
disciples to receive him who when he was come helped them much which had believed through grace for he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly shewing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples he said unto them have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed and they said unto him we have not so much as heard whether there be any holy ghost and he said unto them unto what then were ye baptized and they said unto us baptism then said Paul verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Christ Jesus when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had laid his hands upon them the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied and all the men were about twelve and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God but when divers were hardened and believed not but spake evil of that way before the multitude he departed from them and separated the disciples disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus and this continued by the space of two years so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus both Jews and Greeks and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus saying we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached and there were seven sons of one of a Jew and chief of the priests which did so and the evil spirit answered and said Jesus I know and Paul the first know but who are ye and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified and many that believed came and confessed and shewed their deeds many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed after these things were ended Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem saying after I have been there I must also see Rome so he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him Timotheus and Erastus but he himself stayed in Asia for a season and the same time there arose no small stir about that way for a certain man named Demetrius a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana brought no small gain unto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said sirs ye know that by this craft we have our wealth moreover ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus but almost throughout all Asia this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worshipeth and when they heard these sayings they were full of wrath and cried out saying great is Diana of the and the whole city was filled with confusion and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus men of Macedonia Paul's companions in travel they rushed with one accord into the theatre and when Paul would have entered in unto the people the disciples suffered him not and certain of the chief of Asia which were his friends sent unto him desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theatre some therefore cried one thing and some another for the assembly was confused and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together and they drew Alexander out of the multitude the Jews putting him forward and Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defence unto the people but when they knew that he was a Jew all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out great is Diana of the and when the town clerk had appeased the people he said ye men of Ephesus what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of thee is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly for ye have brought hither these men which are neither robbers of churches nor yet blasphemers of your goddess wherefore if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man the law is open and there are deputies let them implead one another but if ye inquire anything concerning other matters it shall be determined in a lawful assembly for we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse and when he had thus spoken he dismissed the assembly and after the uproar was ceased Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia and when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation he came into Greece and there abode three months and when the Jews laid wait for him as he was about to sail into Syria he purposed to return through Macedonia and there accompanied him into Asia so Peter of Berea and of the Aristarchus and Secundus and Gaius of Derb and Timotheus and of Asia Tychicus and Trophimus these going before tarried for us at Troas and we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread and came unto them to Troas in five days where we abode seven days and upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread Paul preached unto them ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight and there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together and there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep and as Paul was long preaching he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead and Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said trouble not yourselves for his life is in him when he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked along while even till break of day so he departed and they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted and we went before to ship and sailed unto Assos there intending to take in Paul for so had he appointed minding himself to go afoot and when he met with us at Assos we took him in and came to Mytilene and we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios and the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trogilium and the next day we came to Miletus for Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia for he hasted if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church and when they were come to him he said unto them ye know from the first day that I came into Asia after what manner I have been with you at all seasons serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but have shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ and now behold I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem not knowing the things that shall befall me there save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me but none of these things move me neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God and now behold I know that yet all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood for I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them therefore watch and remember
Among all them which are sanctified I have coveted no man silver or gold or apparel ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me I have shewed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive and when he had thus spoken he kneeled down and prayed with them all and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck. And kissed him sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake that they should see his face no more and they accompanied him unto the ship and it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched we came with a straight course unto Coos and the day following unto Rhodes and from thence unto Patara and finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia we went aboard and set forth now when we had discovered Cyprus we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria and landed. At Tyre for there the ship was to unlade her burden and finding disciples we tarried there seven days who said to Paul through the spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem and when we had accomplished those days we departed and went our way and they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed and when we had taken our leave one of another we took ship and they returned home again and when we had finished our course from Tyre we came to Ptolemy and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day and the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist which was one of the seven and abode with him and the same man had four daughters virgins which did prophesy and as we tarried there many days there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus and when he was come unto us he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said thus saith the Holy Ghost so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles and when we heard these things both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem then Paul answered what mean ye to weep and to break mine heart for I am ready not to be bound only but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus and when he would not be persuaded we ceased saying the will of the Lord be done and after those days we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem there went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one nason of Cyprus an old disciple with whom we should lodge and when we were come to Jerusalem the brethren received us gladly and the day following Paul went in with us unto and all the elders were present and when he had saluted them he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry and when they heard it they glorified the Lord and said unto him thou seest brother how many thousands of Jews there are which believe and they are all zealous of the law and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses saying that they ought not to circumcise their children neither to walk after the customs what is it therefore the multitude must needs come together for they will hear that thou art come do therefore this that we say to thee we have four men which have a vow on them them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law as touching the Gentiles which believe we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication and Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself with them entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them and when the seven days were almost ended the Jews which were of Asia when they saw him in the temple stirred up all the people and laid hands on him crying out men of Israel help this is a man that teak hate all men everywhere against the people and the law in this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place for they had seen before with him in the city Trophimus and Ephesian whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple and all the city was moved and the people ran together and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple and forthwith the doors were shut and as they went about to kill him. Tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them and when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers they left beating up Paul then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done and some cried one thing some another among the multitude and when he could not know the certainty for the tumult he commanded him to be carried into the castle and when he came upon the stairs so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people for the multitude of the people followed after crying away with him and as Paul was to be led into the castle he said unto the chief captain may I speak unto thee who said canst thou speak Greek art not thou that Egyptian which before these days madest an uproar and ledest out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers. But Paul said I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus a city in Cilicia a citizen of no mean city and I beseech thee suffer me to speak unto the people and when he had given him license Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people and when there was made a great silence he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue saying men brethren and fathers hear ye my defense which I make now unto you and when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them they kept the more silence and he saith I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus a city in Cilicia yet brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous toward God as yet all are this day and I persecuted this way unto the death binding and delivering into prisons both men and women as also the high priest doth bear me witness and all the estate of the elders from whom also I received letters unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished and it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me and I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me Saul Saul why persecutest thou me and I answered who art thou Lord and he said unto me I am Jesus of Nazareth whom thou persecutest and they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me and I said what shall I do Lord and the Lord said unto me arise and go into Damascus and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do and when I could not see for the glory of that light being led by the hand of them that were with me I came into Damascus and one Ananias a devout man according to the law having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there came unto me and stood and said unto me brother Saul receive thy sight and the same hour I looked up upon him and he said the God of our fathers hath chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth for thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard and now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins calling on the name of the Lord and it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem even while I prayed in the temple I was in a trance and saw him saying unto me make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me and I said Lord they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee and when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him and he said unto me depart for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles and they gave him audience unto this word and then lifted up their voices and said away with such a fellow from the earth for it is not fit that he should live and as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging that he might know wherefore they cried so against him and as they bound him with thongs Paul said unto the centurion that stood by
Lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned when the centurion heard that he went and told the chief captain saying take heed what thou doest for this man is a Roman and the chief captain came and said unto him tell me art thou a Roman he said yeah and the chief captain answered with a great sum obtained I this freedom and Paul said but I was freeborn then straightway they departed from him which should have examined him and the chief captain also was afraid. After he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him on the morrow because he would have known the certainty wherefore he was accused of the Jews he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them and Paul earnestly beholding the council said men and brethren I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day and the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth then said Paul unto him God shall smite thee thou whited wall for sittest thou to judge me after the law and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law and they that stood by said revilest thou God's high priest then said Paul the first wist not brethren that he was the high priest for it is written thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people but when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees he cried out in the council men and brethren I am a Pharisee the son of a Pharisee of the hope and resurrection of the dead I am called in question and when he had so said there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the multitude was divided for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection neither angel nor spirit but the Pharisees confess both and there arose a great cry and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove saying we find no evil in this man but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him let us not fight against God and when there arose a great dissension the chief captain fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle and the night following the Lord stood by him and said be of good cheer Paul for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem so must thou bear witness also at Rome and when it was day certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul and they were more than forty which had made this conspiracy and they came to the chief priests and elders and said we have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul now therefore ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him and we or ever he come near are ready to kill him and when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait he went and entered into the castle and told Paul then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said bring this young man unto the chief captain for he hath a certain thing to tell him so he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said Paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee who hath something to say unto thee then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him what is that thou hast to tell me and he said the Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly but do not thou yield unto them for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready looking for a promise from thee so the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him see thou tell no man that thou hast shewed these things to me and he called unto him two centurions saying make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea and horsemen threescore and ten and spearmen two hundred at the third hour of the night and provide them beasts that they may set Paul on and bring him safe unto Felix the governor and he wrote a letter. After this matter Claudius Lysias unto the most excellent governor Felix sendeth greeting this man was taken of the Jews and should have been killed of them then came I with an army and rescued him having understood that he was a Roman and when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him I brought him forth into their council whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds and when it was told me. How that the Jews laid wait for the man I sent straightway to thee and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him farewell then the soldiers as it was commanded them took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatries on the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him and returned to the castle who when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor presented Paul also before him and when the governor had read the letter he asked of what province he was and when he understood that he was of Cilicia I will hear thee said he when thine accusers are also come and he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall and after five days Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullus who informed the governor against Paul and when he was called forth Tertullus began to accuse him saying seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence we accept it always and in all places most noble Felix with all thankfulness notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words for we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes who also hath gone about to profane the temple whom we took and would have judged according to our law but the chief captain Lysias came upon us and with great violence took him away out of our hands commanding his accusers to come unto thee by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things whereof we accuse him and the Jews also assented saying that these things were so then Paul after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak answered for as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation I do the more cheerfully answer for myself because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship and they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man neither raising up the people neither in the synagogues nor in the city neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me but this I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy so worship by the God of my fathers believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets and have hope toward God which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and unjust and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple neither with multitude nor with tumult who ought to have been here before thee and objective they had ought against me or else let these same here say if they have found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them touching the resurrection of the dead I am called in question by you this day and when Felix heard these things having more perfect knowledge of that way he deferred them and said when Lysias the chief captain shall come down I will know the uttermost of your matter and he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him and after certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla which was a Jewess he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ and as he reasoned of righteousness temperance and judgment to come Felix trembled and answered go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season I will call for thee he hoped also that money should have been given him a Paul that he might lose him wherefore he sent for him the oftener and communed with him but after two years Porcius Festus came into Felix's room and Felix willing to shew the Jews a pleasure left Paul bound now when Festus was come into the province after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem laying 
Wait in a way to kill him but Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly thither let them therefore said he which among you are able go down with me and accuse this man if there be any wickedness in him and when he had tarried among them more than ten days he went down unto Caesarea and the next day sitting on the judgment seat commanded Paul to be brought and when he was come the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul which they could not prove while he answered for himself neither against the law of the Jews neither against the temple nor yet against Caesar have I offended anything at all but Festus willing to do the Jews a pleasure answered Paul and said wilt thou go up to Jerusalem and there be judged of these things before me then said Paul the first stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged to the Jews have I done no wrong as thou very well knowest for if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death I refuse not to die but if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me no man may deliver me unto them I appeal unto Caesar then Festus when he had conferred with the council answered hast thou appealed unto Caesar unto Caesar shalt thou go and after certain days King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus and when they had been there many days Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king saying there is a certain man left in bonds by Felix about whom when I was at Jerusalem the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me desiring to have judgment against him to whom I answered it is not the matter of it to deliver any man to die before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him therefore when they were come hither without any delay on the morrow I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth against whom when the accusers stood up they brought none accusation of such things as I supposed but had certain questions against him of their own superstition and of one Jesus which was dead whom Paul affirmed to be alive and because I doubted of such manner of questions I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters but when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar then Agrippa said unto Festus I would also hear the man myself tomorrow said he thou shalt hear him and on the morrow when Agrippa was come and Bernice with great pomp and was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city at Festus commandment Paul was brought forth and Festus said King Agrippa and all men which are here present with us yes see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me both at Jerusalem and also here crying that he ought not to live any longer but when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death and that he himself hath appealed to Augustus I have determined to send him of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my lord wherefore I have brought him forth before you and specially before the O king Agrippa that after examination had I might have somewhat to write for it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner. And not withal to signify the crimes laid against him then Agrippa said unto Paul thou art permitted to speak for thyself then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself I think myself happy king Agrippa because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently my manner of life from my youth which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem know all the Jews which knew me from the beginning if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come for which hope sake King Agrippa I am accused of the Jews why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth which thing I also did in Jerusalem and many of the saints did I shut up in prison having received authority from the chief priests and when they were put to death I gave my voice against them and I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them I persecuted them even unto strange cities whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday O king I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me and when we were all fallen to the earth I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and I said who art thou lord and he said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest but rise and stand upon thy feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me whereupon O King Agrippa I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision but shewed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance for these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me having therefore obtained help of God I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should shew light unto the people and to the Gentiles and as he thus spake for himself Festus said with a loud voice Paul thou art beside thyself much learning doth make thee mad but he said I am not mad most noble Festus but speak forth the words of truth and soberness for the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him for this thing was not done in a corner king Agrippa believest thou the prophets I know that thou believest then Agrippa said unto Paul almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian and Paul said I would to God that not only thou but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds and when he had thus spoken the king rose up and the governor and Bernice and they that sat with them and when they were gone aside they talked between themselves saying this man doth nothing worthy of death or of bonds then said Agrippa unto Festus this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar and when it was determined that we should sail into Italy they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius a centurion of Augustus band and entering into a ship of Adramidium we launched meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia one Aristarchus a Macedonian of Thessalonica being with us and the next day we touched at Sidon and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself and when we had launched from thence we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary and when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia we came to Myra a city of Lycia and there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy and he put us therein and when we had sailed slowly many days and scarce were come over against it as the wind not suffering us we sailed under Crete over against Salmon and hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens nigh where unto was the city of Lacia now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already past Paul admonished them and said unto them sirs I perceive that this voyage will be with her and much damage not only of the lading and ship but also of our lives nevertheless the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul and because the haven was not commodious to winter in the more part
Loosing thence they sailed close by Crete but not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Euryclidon and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind we let her drive and running under a certain island which is called Clotto we had much work to come by the boat which when they had taken up they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand strake sail and so were driven and we being exceedingly tossed. With a tempest the next day they lightened the ship and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us all hope that we should be saved was then taken away but after long abstinence Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said sirs ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss and now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve saying fear not Paul thou must be brought before Caesar and lo God hath given thee all them that sail with thee wherefore sirs be of good cheer for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island but when the fourteenth night was come as we were driven up and down in Adria about. Midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country and sounded and found it twenty fathoms and when they had gone a little further they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship Paul said. To the centurion and to the soldiers except these abide in the ship ye cannot be saved then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off and while the day was coming on Paul besought them all to take meat saying this day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting having taken nothing wherefore I pray you to take some meat for this is for your health for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you and when he had thus spoken he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all and when he had broken it he began to eat then were they all of good cheer and they also took some meat and we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls and when they had eaten enough they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea and when it was day they knew not the land but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship and when they had taken up the anchors they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoist up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore and falling into a place where two seas met they ran the ship aground and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves and the soldiers counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape but the centurion willing to save. Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land and the rest some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land and when they were escaped then they knew that the island was called Melita and the barbarous people shewed us no little kindness for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand and when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand they said among themselves no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he hath escaped the sea yet vengeance suffereth not to live and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him they changed their minds and said that he was a god in the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island whose name was Publius who received us and lodged us three days courteously and it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him so when this was done others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed who also honored us with many honors and when we departed they laded us with such things as were necessary and after three months we departed in a ship of Alexandria which had wintered in the isle whose sign was Castor and Pollux and landing at Syracuse we tarried there three days and from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium and after one day the south wind blew and we came the next day to Puteoli where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them. Seven days and so we went toward Rome and from thence when the brethren heard of us they came to meet us as far as a pie forum and the three taverns whom when Paul saw he thanked God and took courage and when we came to Rome the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldier that kept him and it came to pass that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together and when they were come together he said unto the men and brethren though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the who when they had examined me would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me but when the Jews spake against it I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar not that I had ought to accuse my nation of for this cause therefore have I called for you to see you and to speak with you because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain and they said unto him we neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee neither any of the brethren that came shoot or spake any harm of thee but we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest for as concerning the sect we know that everywhere it is spoken against and when they had appointed him a day there came many to him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God persuading them concerning Jesus both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening and some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not and when they agreed not among themselves they departed after that Paul had spoken one word well spake the Holy Ghost by Esai as the prophet unto our father saying go unto this people and say hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and not perceive for the heart of this people is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it and when he had said these words the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence no man forbidding him Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the Resurrection from the dead by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom are yet also the called of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established that is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me now I would not have you ignorant brethren that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you but was led hitherto that 
I might have some fruit among you also even as among other Gentiles I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise so as much as in me as I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall lie by faith for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath shewed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to disanure their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever amen for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder debate deceit molly good nighty whispers backbiters haters of God despiteful proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable unmerciful who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judgest doest the same things but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things and thinkest thou this O man that judgest them which do such things and doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God ledeth thee to repentance but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds to them who by patient continuance in well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile but glory honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile for there is no respect of persons with God for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law for not the hearers of the law are just before God but the doers of the law shall be justified for when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law these having not the law are a law unto themselves which shew the work of the Lord written in their hearts their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel behold thou art called a Jew and restest in the law and makest thy boast of God and knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind a light of them which are in darkness an instructor of the foolish a teacher of babes which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law thou therefore which teachest another teachest thou not thyself thou that preachest a man should not steal dost thou steal thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery dost thou commit adultery thou that abhorrest idols dost thou commit sacrilege thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law to see anurest thou God for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law thy circumcision is made uncircumcision therefore if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision and shall not uncircumcision which is by nature if it fulfill the law judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God what advantage then hath the Jew or what profit is there of circumcision much every way chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God for what if some did not believe shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect God forbid ye let God be true but every man a liar as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged but if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God what shall we say is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance I speak as a man God forbid for then how shall God judge the world for if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory why yet am I also judged as a sinner and not rather as we be slanderously reported and as some affirm that we say let us do evil that good may come whose damnation is just what then are we better than they know in no wise for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin as it is written there is none righteous no not one there is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after God they are all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable there is none that doth good no not one their throat is an open sepulchre with their tongues they have used to seed the poison of asps is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness their feet are swift to shed blood destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace have they not known there is no fear of God before their eyes now we know that what things soever the law saith it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay but by the law of faith therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law is he the God of the Jews only is he not also of the Gentiles yes of the Gentiles also seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith do we then make void the law through faith God forbid ye we establish the law what shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found for if Abraham were justified by works he hath whereof to glory but not before God for what saith the scripture Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God 
Impute righteousness without work saying blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision not in circumcision but in uncircumcision and he received the sign of circumcision a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe though they be not circumcised that righteousness might be imputed unto them also and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham which he had being yet uncircumcised for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith for if they which are of the law be heirs faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law worketh wrath for where no law is there is no transgression therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God and not only so but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us for when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life and not only so but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression who is the figure of him that was to come but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many and not as it was by one that sin so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous moreover the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace did much more abound that as sin hath reigned unto death even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin for he that is dead is freed from sin now if we be dead with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more death hath no more dominion over him for in that he died he died unto sin once but in that he liveth he liveth unto God likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace what then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace God forbid know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you being then made free from sin ye became the servants of righteousness I speak after the manner of men because of it infirmity of your flesh for as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity even so now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness for when ye were the servants of sin ye were free from righteousness what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed for the end of those things is death but now being made free from sin and become servants to God ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord know ye not brethren for I speak to them that know the law how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth for the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth but if the husband be dead she is loosed from the law of her husband so then if while her husband liveth she be married to another man she shall be called an adulteress but if her husband be dead she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another man wherefore my brethren ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God for when we were in the flesh the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter what shall we say then is the law sin God forbid nay I had not known sin but by the law for I had not known lust except the law had said thou shalt not covet but sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence for without the law sin was dead for I was alive without the law once but when the commandment came sin revived and I died and the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death for sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good was then that which is good made death unto me God forbid but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but I am carnal sold under sin for that which I do I allow 
Not for what I would that do I not but what I hate that do I if then I do that which I would not I consent unto the law that it is good now then it is no more I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for jewel is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not for the good that I would I do not but the evil which I would not that I do now if I do that I would not it is no more I that do it but sin. That dwelleth in me I find then a law that when I would do good evil is present with me for I delight in the law of God after the inward man but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members a wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now if any man have not. The spirit of Christ he is none of his and if Christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh for if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live for as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature wait for the manifestation of the sons of God for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of our body for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth why doth he yet hope for but if we hope for that we see not then do we with patience wait for it likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified what shall we then say to these things if God before us who can be against us he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elected is God that justifieth who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died ye rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord I say the truth in Christ I lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren my kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God blessed forever amen not as though the word of God hath taken none effect for they are not all Israel which are of Israel neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children but in Isaac shall thy seed be called that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of God but the children of the promise are counted for the seed for this is the word of promise at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son and not only this but when Rebekah also had conceived by one even by our father Isaac for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works but of him that Calith it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I hated what shall we say then is there unrighteousness with God God forbid for he saith to Moses I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion so then it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but of God that sheth mercy for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh even for the same purpose have I raised thee up that I might shew my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he hardeneth thou wilt say then unto me why doth he yet find fault for who hath resisted his will nay but O man who art thou that repliest against God shall the thing formed say to him that formed it why hast thou made me thus hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto disanure what if God willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only but also of the Gentiles as he saith also in Asi I will call them my people which were not my people and her beloved which was not beloved and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there shall they be called the children of the living God he says also crieth concerning Israel though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea a remnant shall be saved for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth and as he says said before except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah what shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness even the righteousness which is of faith but Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness wherefore because they sought it not by faith but as it were by the works of the law for they stumbled at that stumbling stone as it is written behold I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense and whosoever believeth on him 
Shall not be ashamed brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth for Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. That the man which doth those things shall live by them but the righteousness which is of faith speak on this wise say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Esaias saith Lord who hath believed our report so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God but I say have they not heard yes verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world but I say did not Israel know first Moses saith I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation I will anger you but he says is very bold and saith I was found of them that sought me not I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me but to Israel he saith all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people I say then hath God cast away his people God forbid for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew what ye not what the scripture saith of Elias how he maketh intercession to God against Israel saying Lord they have killed thy prophets and digged down thine altars and I am left alone and they seek my life but what saith the answer of God unto him I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace and if by grace then is it no more of works otherwise grace is no more grace but if it be of works then is it no more grace otherwise work is no more work what then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeked for but the election hath obtained it and the rest were blinded according as it is written God hath given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day and David saith let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all way I say then have they stumbled that they should fall God forbid but rather through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles. How much more their fullness for I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles I magnify mine office if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead for if the first fruit be holy the lump is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches and if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree wert grafted in among them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in well because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest by faith be not high minded but fear for if God spared not the natural branches take heed lest he also spare not thee Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity but toward thee goodness if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou also shalt be cut off and they also if they abide not still in unbelief shall be grafted in for God is able to graft them in again for if thou wert cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree for I would not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins as concerning the gospel they are enemies for your sakes but as touching the election they are beloved for the father's sakes for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance for as yet in times past have not believed God yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy for God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all o the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out for who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever amen I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that yet present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry let us wait on our ministering or he that teach hate on teaching or he that exhortate on exhortation he that giveth let him do it with simplicity he that ruleth with diligence he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness let love be without dissimulation abhor that which is evil cleave to that which is good be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the Lord rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality bless them which persecute you bless and curse not rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep be of the same mind one toward another mind not high things but condescend to men of low estate be not wise in your own conceits recompense to no man evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men if it be possible as much as lieth in you live peaceably with all men dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine I will repay saith the Lord therefore if thine enemy hunger feed him if he thirst give him drink for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head be not overcome of evil but overcome evil. With good let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of God the powers that be are ordained of God whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation for rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil wilt thou then not be afraid of the power do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same for he is the minister of God to thee for good but if th
which is evil be afraid for he beareth not the sword in vain for he is the minister of God a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doth evil wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath but also for conscience sake for for this cause pay ye tribute also for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing render therefore to all their dues tribute to whom tribute is due custom to whom custom fear to whom fear honor to whom honor owe no man any thing but to love one another for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law for this thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not kill thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness thou shalt not covet and if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in the saying namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself love worketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying but put ye on the lord jesus christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof him that is weak in the faith receive ye but not to doubtful disputations for one believeth that he may eat all things another who is weak eat herbs let not him that eat despise him that eat not and let not him which eat not judge him that eat for God hath received him who art thou that judgest another man's servant to his own master he standeth or falleth yea he shall be holden up for God is able to make him stand one man as deemeth one day above another another as deemeth every day alike let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it he that eateth to the Lord for he giveth God thanks and he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not and giveth God thanks for none of us liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself for whether we live we live unto the Lord and whether we die we die unto the Lord whether we live therefore or die we are the Lord's for to this end Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and living but why dost thou judge thy brother or why dost thou set at not thy brother for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ for it is written as I live saith the Lord every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God let us not therefore judge one another any more but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean to him it is unclean but if thy brother be grieved with thy meat now walkest thou not charitably destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died let not then your good be evil spoken of for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost for he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another for meat destroy not the work of God all things indeed are pure but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense it is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made we cast thou faith have it to thyself before God happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he allowed and he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith for whatsoever is not of faith is sin we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification for even Christ pleased not himself but as it is written the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name and again he saith rejoice ye Gentiles with his people and again praise the Lord all ye Gentiles and laud him all ye people and again he saith saith there shall be a root of Jesse and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles in him shall the Gentiles trust now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost and I myself also am persuaded of you my brethren that ye also are full of goodness filled with all knowledge able also to admonish one another nevertheless brethren I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ yes so have I strive to preach the gospel not where Christ was named lest I should build upon another man's foundation but as it is written to whom he was not spoken of they shall see and they that have not heard shall understand for which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you but now having no more place in these parts and having a great desire these many years to come unto you whensoever I take my journey into Spain I will come to you for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you at first I be somewhat filled with your company but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints for it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem it hath pleased them verily and their debtors they are for if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things when therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit I will come by you into Spain and I am sure that when I come unto you I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ now I beseech you brethren for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may with you be refreshed now the God of peace be with you all amen I commend unto you Phoebe our sister which is a servant of the church which is at Sencre that ye receive her in the Lord as Becometh saints and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you for she hath been a succorer of many and of myself also greet Priscilla and Aquila my helpers in Christ Jesus who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks but also all the churches of the Gentiles likewise greet the church that is in their house salute my well-beloved Epanetus who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ greet Mary who bestowed much labor on us salute Andronicus and Unia my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me greet Amplias my beloved in the Lord salute Urbane our helper in Christ and Statius my beloved salute Apollese approved in Christ salute them which are of Aristobulus household salute Herodion my kinsmen greet them that be of the household of Narcissus which are in the Lord salute Trophina and Trephosa
which are with them salute one another with an holy kiss the churches of Christ salute you now I beseech you brethren them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple for your obedience is come abroad unto all men I am glad therefore on your behalf but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you amen Timotheus my work fellow and Lucius and Jason and Sosipater my kinsmen salute you I Tertius who wrote this epistle salute you and the Lord Gaius mine host and of the whole church salute you Erastus the chamberlain of the city salute you and Cordus a brother the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever amen Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and so stannies are brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that ye come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall also confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord now I beseech you brethren by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment for it hath been declared unto me of you my brethren by them which are of the house of Chloe that there are contentions among you now this I say that every one of you saith I am of Paul and I of Apollos and I of Cephas and I of Christ is Christ divided was Paul crucified for you or were ye baptized in the name of Paul the first thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name and I baptized also the household of Stephanas besides I know not whether I baptized any other for Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of God for it is written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this world hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world for after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks Christ. The power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men for yes see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen yet and things which are not to bring to not things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence but of him are yet in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord and I brethren when I came to you came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the Lord of glory but as it is written I hath not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yet the deep things of God for what man Knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teak hate but which the Holy Ghost teak hate comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he that is spiritual judgeth all things yet he himself is judged of no man for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ and I brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even as unto babes in Christ I have fed you with milk and not with meat for hitherto ye were not able to bear it neither yet now. Are ye able for ye are yet carnal for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions are ye not carnal and walk as men for while one saith I am of Paul and another I am of Apollos are ye not carnal who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believed even as the Lord gave to every man I have planted Apollos watered but God gave the increase so then neither is he that plantateth anything neither he that watereth but God that giveth the increase. Now he that plantateth and he that watereth are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor for we are laborers together with God ye are God's husbandry ye are God's building according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you if any man defile the temple of God him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy which temple ye are let no man deceive himself if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world let him become a fool that he may be wise for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God for it is written he taketh the wise in their own craftiness and again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain therefore let no man glory in men for all things are yours whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come all are yours and ye are Christ's and Christ is God's let a man so account of us
Yet am I not hereby justified but he that judgeth me is the Lord therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts and then shall every man have praise of God and these things brethren I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written that no one of you be puffed up for one. Against another for who make thee to differ from another and what hast thou that thou didst not receive now if thou didst receive it why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it now ye are full now ye are rich ye have reigned as kings without us and I would to God ye did reign that we also might reign with you for I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men we are fools for Christ's sake but ye are wise in Christ we are weak but ye are strong ye are honorable but we are despised even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands being reviled we bless being persecuted we suffer it being defamed we entreat we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day I write not these things to Shame you but as my beloved sons I warn you for though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ yet have ye not many fathers for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel wherefore I beseech you be ye followers of me for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up but the power for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power what will ye shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you for I verily as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortionists or with idolaters for then must ye needs go out of the world but now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat for what have I to do to judge them also that are without do not ye judge them that are within but them that are without God judgeth therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life if then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church I speak to your shame is it so that there is not a wise man among you know not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren but brother goeth to law with brother and that before the unbelievers now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because ye go to law one with another why do ye not rather take wrong why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded nay ye do wrong and defraud and that your brethren know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God be not deceived neither fornicators nor Idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortionists shall inherit the kingdom of God and such were some of you but ye are washed but ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God all things are lawful unto me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but I will not be brought under the power of any meats for the belly and the belly for meats but God shall destroy both it and them now the body is not for fornication but for the Lord and the Lord for the body and God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot God forbid what know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body for two saith he shall be one flesh but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit flee fornication every sin that a man doth is without the body but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God and ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me it is good for a man not to touch a woman nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband the wife hath not power of her own body but the husband and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body but the wife defraud ye not one the other except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that satan tempt you not for your incontinency but i speak this by permission and not of commandment for i would that all men were even as i myself but every man hath his proper gift of god one after this matter and another after that i say therefore to the unmarried and widows it is good for them if they abide even as i but if they cannot contain let them marry for it is better to marry than to burn and unto the married i command yet not i but the lord let not the wife depart from her husband but and if she depart let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife but to the rest speak i not the lord if any brother hath a wife that believeth not and she be pleased to dwell with him let him not put her away and the woman which hath an husband that believeth not and if he be pleased to dwell with her let her not leave him for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband else were your children unclean but now are they holy but if the unbelieving depart let him depart a brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases but God hath called us to peace for what knowest thou O wife whether thou shalt save thy husband or how knowest thou O man whether thou shalt save thy wife but as God hath distributed to every man as the Lord hath called every one so let him walk and so ordain I in all churches is any man called being circumcised let him not become uncircumcised is any called in uncircumcision let him not be circumcised circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of God let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called art thou called being a servant care not for it but if thou mayest be made free use it rather for he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant ye are bought with a price be not ye the servants of men brethren let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God now concerning virgins I have no commandment of the Lord yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress I say that it is good for a man so to be art thou bound unto a wife seek not to be loosed art thou lo
But and if thou marry thou hast not sinned and if a virgin marry she hath not sinned nevertheless such shall have trouble in the flesh but I spare you but this I say brethren the time is short it remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none and they that weep as though they wept not and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not and they that buy as though they possess not and they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world. Passeth away but I would have you without carefulness he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord how he may please the Lord but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world how he may please his wife there is difference also between a wife and a virgin the unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit but she that is married careth for the things of the world how she may please her husband and this I speak for your own profit not that I may cast a snare upon you but for that which is comely and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction but if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin if she pass the flower of her age and need so require let him do what he will he sinneth not let them marry nevertheless he that standeth steadfast in his heart having no necessity but hath power over his own will and hath so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin doth well so then he that giveth her in marriage doth well but he that giveth her not in marriage doth better the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth but if her husband be dead she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord but she is happier if she so abide after my judgment and I think also that I have the spirit of God now as touching things offered unto idols we know that we all have knowledge knowledge puffeth up but charity edifieth and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know but if any man love God the same is known of him as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one for though there be that are called gods whether in heaven or in earth as there be gods many and lords many but to us there is but one God the Father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled but meat commendeth us not to God for neither if we eat are we the better neither if we eat not are we the worse but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak for if any man see thee which hast knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died but when yes and so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience yes and against Christ wherefore if meat make my brother to offend I will eat no flesh while the world standeth lest I make my brother to offend am I not an apostle am I not free have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord are not yet my work in the Lord if I be not an apostle unto others yet doubtless I am to you for the seal of mine apostleship are yet in the Lord mine answer to them that do examine me is this have we not power to eat and to drink have we not power to lead about a sister a wife as well as other apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas or I only and Barnabas have not. We power to forbear working who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges who planteth the vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof or who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock say I these things as a man or saith not the law the same also for it is written in the law of Moses thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn doth God take care for oxen or saith he it altogether for our sakes for our sakes no doubt this is written that he that plough it should plough in hope and that he that thre sheth in hope should be partaker of his hope if we have sown unto you spiritual things is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things if others be partakers of this power over you or not we rather nevertheless we have not used this power but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel but I have used none of these things neither have I written these things that it should be so done unto me for it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glorying void for though I preach the gospel I have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me ye woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel for if I do this thing willingly I have a reward but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me what is my reward then verily that when I preach the gospel I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel for though I be free from all men yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more and unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law to them that are without law is without law being not without law to God but under the law to Christ that I might gain them that are without law to the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some and this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that ye may obtain and every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible I therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight I not as one that beat the air but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway moreover brethren I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ but with many of them God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as it is written that people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents neither murmur yet as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer now all these things happened unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come wherefore let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it wherefore my dearly beloved flee from idolatry I speak as to wise men judge ye what I say the cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ the bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ for we being many are one bread and one body for we are all partakers of that one bread behold Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar what say I then that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to devils and not to God and I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils do we provoke the Lord to jealousy are we stronger than he all things are lawful for me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but all things edify not let no man seek his own but every man another's wealth whatsoever is sold in the shambles that he asking no question for conscience sake for the earth is the Lord's and the 
Fullness thereof if any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go whatsoever is set before you eat asking no question for conscience sake but if any man say unto you this is offered in sacrifice unto idols eat not for his sake that shoot it and for conscience sake for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof conscience I say not thine own but of the other for why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience for if I by grace be a partaker? Why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of God give none offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles nor to the church of God even as I please all men in all things not seeking mine own profit but the profit of many that they may be saved be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ now I praise you brethren that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God every man praying or prophesying having his head covered to see anurth his head but every woman that prith or prophesieth with her head uncovered to see anurth her head for that is even all one as if she were shaven for if the woman be not covered let her also be shorn but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven let her be covered for a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God but the woman is the glory of the man for the man is not of the woman but the woman of the man neither was the man created for the woman but the woman for the man for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels nevertheless neither is the man without the woman neither the woman without the man in the Lord for as the woman is of it Man even so is the man also by the woman but all things of God judge in yourselves is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair it is a shame unto him but if a woman have long hair it is a glory to her for her hair is given her for a covering but if any man seem to be contentious we have no such custom neither the churches of God now in this that I declare unto you I praise you not that ye come together not for the better but for the worse for first of all when ye come together in the church I hear that there be divisions among you and I partly believe it for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you when ye come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the Lord's supper for in eating every one taketh before other his own supper and one is hungry and another is drunk and what have ye not houses to eat and to drink in or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not what shall I say to you shall I praise you in this I praise you not for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he brake it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do shew the Lord's death till he come wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eat and drink unworthily eat and drink Damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body for this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep for if we would judge ourselves we should not be judged but when we are judged we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world wherefore my brethren when ye come together to eat tarry one for another and if any man hunger let him eat at home that ye come not together unto condemnation and the rest will I set in order when I come now. Concerning spiritual gifts brethren I would not have you ignorant ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were led wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit and there are differences of administrations but the same Lord and there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another divers kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ for by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one Spirit for the body is not one member but many if the foot shall say because I am not the hand I am not of it. Body is it therefore not of the body and if the ear shall say because I am not the eye I am not of the body is it therefore not of the body if the whole body were an eye where were the hearing if the whole were hearing where were the smelling but now hath God set the members every one of them in the body as it hath pleased him and if they were all one member where were the body but now are they many members yet but one body and the eye cannot say unto the hand I have no need of thee nor again the head to the feet I have no need of you nay much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness for our comely parts have no need but God hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked that there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another and whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it or one member be honored all the members rejoice with it now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular and God hath set some in the church first apostles secondarily prophets thirdly teachers after that miracles and gifts of healings helps governments diversities of tongues are all apostles are all prophets are all Teachers are all workers of miracles have all the gifts of healing do all speak with tongues do all interpret but covet earnestly the best gifts and yet you I unto you a more excellent way though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity I am nothing and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burnt and have not charity it profiteth me nothing charity suffereth long and is kind charity envieth not charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked think no evil rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoiceth in the truth beareth all things believeth all things hopeth all things endureth all things charity never faileth but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away when I was a child I spake as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now I know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known and now abide the faith hope charity these three but the greatest of these is charity follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts but rather that ye may prophesy for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God for no man understandeth him howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort he 
that speak in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that yet all spake with tongues, but rather that yet prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speak with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, except I shall speak to you either by or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine, and even things without life? Giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise, yet except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the ear, there are it may be so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speak the barbarian, and he that speaks shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so, ye for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prith, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say Amen at thy giving of thanks seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest for thou verily givest thanks well but the other is not edified I thank my God I speak with tongues more than yet all yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue brethren be not children in understanding howbeit in malice be ye children but in understanding be men in the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people and yet for all that will they not hear me saith the Lord wherefore tongues are for a sign not to them that believe but to them that believe not but prophesying serveth not for them that believe not but for them which believe if therefore they Whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers will they not say that ye are mad but if all prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned he is convinced of all he is judged of all and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest and so falling down on his face he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth how is it then brethren when ye come together every one of you hath a psalm hath a doctrine hath a tongue hath a hath an interpretation let all things be done unto edifying if any man speak in an unknown tongue let it be by two or at the most by three and that by course and let one interpret but if there be no interpreter let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by let the first hold his peace for ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets for God is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all churches of the saints let your women keep silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law and if they will learn anything let them ask their husbands at home for it is a shame for women to speak in the church what came the word of God out from you or came it unto you only if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord but if any man be ignorant let him be ignorant wherefore brethren covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues let all things be done decently and in order moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas then of the twelve after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are fallen asleep after that he was seen of then of all the apostles and last of all he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time for I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I laboured more abundantly than they all yet not I but the grace of God which was with me therefore whether it were I or they so we preach and so ye believe now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead but if there be no resurrection of the dead then is Christ not risen and if Christ be not risen then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not for if the dead rise not then is not Christ raised and if Christ be not raised your faith is vain ye are yet in your sins then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God even the father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death for he hath put all things under his feet but when he saith all things are put under him it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him and when all things shall be subdued unto him then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all why are they then baptized for the dead and why stand we in jeopardy every hour I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord I die daily if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus what advantage hath it me if the dead rise not let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die be not deceived evil communications corrupt good manners awake to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of God I speak this to your shame but some man will say how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come thou fool that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die and that which thou sowest thou sowest not that body that shall be but bare grain it may chance of wheat or of some other grain but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him and to every seed his own body all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beasts another of fishes and another of birds there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star different from another star in glory so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption it is sown in disanure it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body and so it is written the first man Adam was made a living soul the last Adam was made a quickening spirit howbeit that was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual the first man is of the earth earthy the second man is the Lord from heaven as is the earthy such are they also that are earthy and as is the heavenly such are they also that are heavenly and as we have borne the image of the earthy we shall also bear the image of the heavenly now this I say brethren 
that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither doth corruption inherit incorruption behold I shew you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord now concerning the collection for the saints as I have given order to the churches of Galatia even so do ye upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come and when I come whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem and if it be meet that I go also they shall go with me now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia for I do pass through Macedonia and it may be that I will abide ye and winter with you that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go for I will not see you now by the way but I trust to tarry a while with you if the Lord permit but I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost for a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries now if Timotheus come see that he may be with you without fear for he worketh the work of the Lord as I also. Do let no man therefore despise him but conduct him forth in peace that he may come unto me for I look for him with the brethren as touching our brother Apollos I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren but his will was not at all to come at this time but he will come when he shall have convenient time watch ye stand fast in the faith quit you like men be strong let all your things be done with charity I beseech you brethren ye know the house of Stephan is that it is the first fruits of Achaia and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints that ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and Labureth I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied for they have refreshed my spirit and yours therefore acknowledge ye them that are such the churches of Asia salute you Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord. With the church that is in their house all the brethren greet you greet ye one another with an holy kiss the salutation of me Paul with mine own hand if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ let him be anathema maranatha the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you my love be with you all in Christ Jesus amen Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and our brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ blessed be God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer or whether we be comforted it is for your consolation and salvation and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings so shall ye be also of the consolation for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raiseth the dead who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us yet also helping together by prayer for us that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons thanks may be given by many on our behalf for our rejoicing is this the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity not with fleshly wisdom but by the grace of God we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you word for we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end as also ye have acknowledged us in part that we are your rejoicing even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus and in this confidence I was minded to come unto you before that ye might have a second benefit and to pass by you into Macedonia and to come again out of Macedonia unto you and of you to be brought on my way toward Judea when I therefore was thus minded did I use lightness or the things that I purpose do I purpose according to the flesh that with me there should be a and nay nay but as God is true our word toward you was not yet and nay for the Son of God Jesus Christ who was preached among you by us even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus was not yet and nay but in him was yet for all the promises of God in him are yet and in him amen unto the glory of God by us now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts moreover I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you I came not as yet unto Corinth not for that we have dominion over your faith but are helpers of your joy for by faith ye stand but I determined this with myself that I would not come again to you in heaviness for if I make you sorry who is he then that make me glad but the same which is made sorry by me and I wrote the same unto you lest when I came I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all for out of much affliction and anguish of heart I wrote unto you with many tears not that ye should be grieved but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you but if any have caused grief he hath not grieved me. But in part that I may not overcharge you all sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many so that contrariwise ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow wherefore I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him for to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you whether ye be obedient in all things to whom ye forgive anything I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices furthermore when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel and a door was opened unto me of the Lord I had no rest in my spirit because I found not my brother but taking my leave of them I went from thence into Macedonia now thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place for we are unto God a sweet savour of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish to the one we are the savour of death unto death and to the other the savour of life unto life and who is sufficient for these things for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God but as of sincerity but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you ye are our epistle written in our hearts known and read of all men for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God not in tables of stone but in fleshy tables of the heart and such trust have we through Christ to God ward not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of God who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of
glory much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth for if that which is done away was glorious much more that which remaineth is glorious seeing then that we have such hope we use great plainness of speech and not as Moses which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished but their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ but even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe. Not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them for we preach not ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus sake for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us we are. Troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh so then death worketh in us but life in you we having the same spirit of faith according. As it is written I believed and therefore have I spoken we also believe and therefore speak knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God who also hath given unto us the earnest of the spirit therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men but we are made manifest unto God and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences for we commend not ourselves again unto you but give you occasion to glory on our behalf that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart for whether we be beside ourselves it is to God or whether we be sober it is for your cause for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then were all dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yet though we have known Christ after the flesh yet now henceforth know we him no more therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain for he saith I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I succored thee behold now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience in afflictions in necessities in distresses in stripes in imprisonments in tumults in labors in watchings in fastings by pureness by knowledge by long suffering by kindness by the Holy Ghost by love unfeigned by the word of truth by the power of God by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left by honor and to by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true as unknown and yet well known as dying and behold we live as chastened and not killed as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing all things oh yet our mouth is open unto you our heart is enlarged yet are not straightened in us but yet are straightened in your own bowels now for a recompense in the same I speak as unto my children be ye also enlarged be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness and what concord hath Christ with Belial or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God as God hath said I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters saith the Lord Almighty having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God receive us we have wronged no man we have corrupted no man we have defrauded no man I speak not this to condemn you for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you great is my boldness of speech toward you great is my glorying of you I am filled with comfort I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation for when we were come into Macedonia our flesh had no rest but we were troubled on every side without were fightings within were fears nevertheless God that comforteth those that our cast down comforted us by the coming of and not by his coming only but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire your mourning your fervent mind toward me so that I rejoiced the more for though I made you sorry with a letter I do not repent though I did repent for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry though it were but for a season now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry but that ye sorrowed to repentance for ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of but the sorrow of the world worketh death for behold the self same thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sword what carefulness it wrought in you ye what clearing of yourselves ye what indignation ye what fear ye what vehement desire ye what zeal ye what revenge in all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear
This matter wherefore though I wrote unto you I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong nor for his cause that suffered wrong but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you therefore we were comforted in your comfort yea and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of because his spirit was refreshed by you all for if I have boasted anything to him of you I am not ashamed but as we spake all things to you in truth even so our boasting which I made. Before is found a truth and his inward affection is more abundant toward you whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all how with fear and trembling ye received him I rejoice therefore that I have confidence in you in all things moreover brethren we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia how that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality for to their power. I bear record yea and beyond their power they were willing of themselves praying us with much int red that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints and this they did not as we hoped but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God insomuch that we desired that as he had begun so he would also finish in you the same grace also therefore as yea abound in everything in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us see that yea abound in this grace also I speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love for yea know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that yea through his poverty might be rich and herein I give my advice for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it that as there was a readiness to will so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have for if there be first a willing mind it is accepted according to that a man hath and not according to that he hath not for I mean not that other men be eased and yet burdened but by inequality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want that their abundance also may be a supply for your want that there may be. Equality as it is written he that had gathered much had nothing over and he that had gathered little had no lack but thanks be to God which put the same earnest care into the heart of for you for indeed he accepted the exhortation but being more forward of his own accord he went unto you and we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches and not that only but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this. Grace which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind avoiding this that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us providing for honest things not only in the sight of the Lord but also in the sight of men and we have sent with them our brother whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you whether any do inquire of he is. My partner and fellow helper concerning you or our brethren be inquired of they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ wherefore she yet to them and before the church is the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf for as touching the ministering to the saints it is superfluous for me to write to you for I know the forwardness of your mind for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia that Achaia was ready a year ago and your zeal hath provoked very. Many yet have I sent the brethren lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf that as I said ye may be ready lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared we that we say not ye should be ashamed in the same confident boasting therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty whereof ye had notice before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness but this I say he which sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully every man according as he purposeth in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that yet always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work as it is written he hath dispersed abroad he hath given to the poor his righteousness remaineth forever now he that ministereth seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness being enriched in everything to all bountifulness which causeth through us thanksgiving to God for the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men and by their prayer for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift now I Paul myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in presence am base among you but being absent am bold toward you but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled do ye look on things after the outward appearance if any man trust to himself that he is Christ's let him of himself think this again that as he is Christ's even so are we Christ's for though I should boast somewhat more of our authority which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters for his letters say they are weighty and powerful but his Bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible let such an one think this that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent such will we be also indeed when we are present for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise but we will not boast of things without our measure but according to the measure of the rule. Which God hath distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reached not unto you for we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ not boasting of things without our measure that is of other men's labors but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in. Another man's line of things made ready to our hand but he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord for not he that commendeth himself is approved but whom the Lord commendeth would to God yet could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled he through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ for if he that cometh preach at another Jesus whom we have not preached or if he receive another spirit which ye have not received or another gospel which ye have not accepted ye might well bear with him for I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles but though I be rude in speech yet not in knowledge but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely I robbed other churches taking wages of them to do you service and when I was present with you and wanted I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied and in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you and so will I keep myself as the truth of Christ is in me no man shall stop me of this boasting in the 
Regions of Achaia wherefore because I love you not God know it but what I do that I will do that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion that wherein they glory they may be found even as we for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose and shall be according to their works I say again let no man think me a fool if otherwise yet as a fool receive me that I may boast myself a little that which I speak I speak it not after the Lord but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting seeing that many glory after the flesh I will glory also for ye suffer fools gladly seeing ye yourselves are wise for ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage if a man devour you if a man take of you if a man exalt himself. If a man smite you on the face I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak howbeit wherein soever any is bold I speak foolishly I am bold also are they so am I are they Israelites so am I are they the seed of Abraham so am I are they ministers of Christ I speak as a fool I am more in labors more abundant in stripes above measure in prisons more frequent in deaths oft of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned thrice I suffered shipwreck a night and a day I have been in the deep in journeyings often in perils of waters in perils of robbers in perils by mine own countrymen in perils by the heathen in perils in the city in perils in the wilderness in perils in the sea in perils among false brethren in weariness and painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches who is weak and I am not weak who is offended and I burn not if I must needs glory I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which is blessed forevermore knoweth that I lie not in Damascus the governor under Arad as the king kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison desirous to apprehend me and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hence it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory I will come to visions and as of the Lord I knew a man in Christ above fourteen years ago whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven and I knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter of such an one will I glory yet of myself I will not glory but in mine infirmities for though I would desire to glory I shall not be a fool for I will say the truth but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be or that he heareth of me and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the s there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure for this thing I besought thee. Lord thrice that it might depart from me and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me therefore I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake for when I am weak then am I strong I am become a fool in glory and ye have compelled me for I ought to have been commended of you for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles though I be nothing truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds for what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you forgive me this wrong behold the third time I am ready to come to you and I will not be burdensome to you for I seek not yours but you for the children ought not to lay up for the parents but the parents for the children and I will very gladly spend and be spent for you though the more abundantly I love you the less I be loved but be it so I did not burden you nevertheless being crafty I caught you with guile did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you I desired and with him I sent a brother did make a gain of you walked we not in the same spirit walked we not in the same steps again think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you we speak before God in Christ but we do all things dearly beloved for your edifying for I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not lest there be debates envyings wrath strifes backbitings whispering swellings tumults and lest when I come again my God will humble me among you and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed this is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established I told you before and foretell you as if I were present the second time and being absent now I write to them which heretofore have sinned and to all other that if I come again I will not spare since yes seek a proof of Christ speaking in me which to you word is not weak but is mighty in you for though he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth by the Power of God for we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except ye be reprobates but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates now I pray to God that ye do no evil not that we should appear approved but that ye should do that which is honest though we be as reprobates for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth for we are glad when we are weak and yet are strong and this also we wish even your perfection therefore I write these things being absent lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction finally brethren farewell be perfect be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace and the God of love and peace shall be with you greet one another with an holy kiss all the saints salute you the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all amen Paul an apostle not of men neither by man but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father to whom be glory forever and ever amen I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before so say I now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you then that ye have received let him be accursed for do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men for if I yet pleased men I should not be the servant of Christ but I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man for I neither received it of man neither was I taught it but by the of Jesus Christ for ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews religion how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews religion above many my equals in mine own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see and abode with him fifteen days but other of the apostles saw I none save the Lord's brother now the things which I write unto you behold before God I lie not afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the
After I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took with me also and I went up by and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles but privately to them which were of reputation lest by any means I should run or had run in vain but neither who was with me being a Greek was compelled to be circumcised and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage to whom we gave place by subjection no not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you but of these who seemed to be somewhat whatsoever they were it make no matter to me God accepteth no man's person for they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me but contrarywise when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto for he that wrought effectually into the apostleship of the circumcision the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles and when Cephas and who seemed to be pillars perceived the grace that was given unto me they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision only they would that we should remember the poor the same which I also was forward to do but when was come to Antioch I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed for before that Certain came from he did eat with the Gentiles but when they were come he withdrew and separated himself fearing them which were of the circumcision and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel I said unto before them all if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified but if while we seek to be justified by Christ we ourselves also are found sinners is therefore Christ the minister of sin God forbid for if I build again the things which I destroyed I make myself a transgressor for I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law then Christ is dead in vain O foolish who hath bewitched you that yet should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you this only would I learn of you received yet a spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith are ye so foolish having begun in the spirit are ye now made perfect by the flesh have ye suffered so many things in vain if it be yet in vain he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you doth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God it is evident for the just shall lie by faith and the law is not of faith but the man that doth them shall live in them Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith brethren I speak after the manner of men though it be but a man's covenant yet if it be confirmed no man disannulleth or addeth thereto now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he saith not and to seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law which was four hundred and thirty years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect for if the inheritance be of the law it is no more a promise but God gave it to Abraham by promise wherefore then serveth the law it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator now a mediator is not a mediator of one but God is one is the law then against the promises of God God forbid for if there had been a law given which could have given life verily righteousness should have been by the law but the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe but before faith came we were kept under the law shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith but after that faith is come we are no longer under a schoolmaster for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus and if ye be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise now I say that the heir as long as he is a child differeth nothing from a servant though he be lord of all but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world but when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because ye are sons God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying Abba Father wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of God through Christ howbeit then when ye knew not God ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods but now after that ye have known God or rather are known of God how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage ye observe days and months and times and years I am afraid of you lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain brethren I beseech you be as I am for I am as ye are ye have not injured me at all ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first and my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not nor rejected but received me as an angel of God even as Christ Jesus where is then the blessedness ye spake of for I bear you record that if it had been possible ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth they zealously affect you but not well ye they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing and not only when I am present with you my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you tell me ye that desire to be under the law do ye not hear the law for it is written that Abraham had two sons the one by a bond made the other by a free woman but he who was of the bond woman was born after the Flesh but he of the free woman was by promise which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants the one from the Mount Sinai which gendereth to bondage which is Agar for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem which now is and is in bondage with her children but Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all for it is written rejoice thou barren that bearest not break forth and cry thou that travailest not for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband now we brethren as Isaac was are the children of promise but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit even so it is now nevertheless what saith the scripture cast out the bondwoman and her son for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of
hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold I Paul say unto you that if ye be circumcised Christ shall profit you nothing for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law Christ is become of no effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law ye are fallen from grace for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love ye did run well who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you a little love and leaveneth the whole lump I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be and I brethren if I yet preach circumcision why do I yet suffer persecution then is the offense of the cross ceased I would they were even cut off which trouble you for brethren ye have been called unto liberty only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself but if ye bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consumed one of another this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies and beings murders drunkenness revelings and such like of the which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not be desirous of vainglory provoking one another envying one another brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault ye which are spiritual restore such an one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself lest thou also be tempted bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing he deceiveth himself but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for every man shall bear his own burden let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teach hate in all good things be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith yes see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand as many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature and as many as walk according to this rule peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God from henceforth let no man trouble me for I bear in my body the s of the Lord Jesus brethren the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit amen Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption. Through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated. According to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us ward who believe. According to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all and you have. He quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ. Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world but now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom
Jesus Christ for you Gentiles if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you ward how that by he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end amen I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling one Lord one faith one baptism one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men now that he ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part make the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness but ye have not so learned Christ if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath neither give place to the devil let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as becometh saints neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks for this ye know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience be not ye therefore partakers with them for ye were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the Lord walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light wherefore he saith awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light see then that ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the Savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto Christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth and yet fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ not with eyes or vice as men pleasers but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doth the same shall he receive of the Lord whether he be bond or free and ye masters do the same things unto them forbearing
of his might put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do take a a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that ye might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord. Jesus Christ grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity Amen Paul and Timotheus the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ even as it is meet for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel yet all are partakers of my grace for God is my record how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God but I would ye should understand brethren that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill the one preach Christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds but the other of love knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel what then notwithstanding every way whether in pretense or in truth Christ is preached and I therein do rejoice yet and will rejoice for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness as always so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body whether it be by life or by death for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain but if I live in the flesh this is the fruit of my labor yet what I shall choose I what not for I am in a strait betwixt two having a desire to depart and to be with Christ which is far better nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more needful for you and having this confidence I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel and in nothing terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition but to you of salvation and that of God for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which ye saw in me and now here to be in me if there be therefore any consolation in Christ if any comfort of love if any fellowship of the spirit if any bowels and mercies fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure do all things without murmurings and disputings that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither labored in vain yet and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith I joy and rejoice with you all for the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state for I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state for all seek their own not the things which are Jesus Christ's but ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father he hath served with me in the gospel him therefore I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see how it will go with me but I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick for indeed he was sick nigh unto death but God had mercy on him and not on him only but on me also lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow I sent him therefore the more carefully that when ye see him again ye may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me finally my brethren rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you to me indeed is not grievous but for you it is safe beware of dogs beware of evil workers beware of the concision for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh though I might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the as touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal persecuting the church touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless but what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ yet doubtless and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by
This one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if in anything ye be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you nevertheless whereto we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing brethren be followers together of me and them which walk so. As ye have us for an example for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is. Able even to subdue all things unto himself therefore my brethren dearly beloved and longed for my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord my dearly beloved I beseech you it is and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord and I entreat thee also true yoke fellow help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice let your moderation be known unto all men the Lord is at hand be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again wherein ye were also careful but ye lacked opportunity not that I speak in respect of want for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction now ye know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving but ye only for even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift but I desire fruit that may abound to your account but I have all and abound I am full having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you an odor of a sweet smell a sacrifice acceptable well pleasing to God but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever amen salute every saint in Christ Jesus the brethren which are with me greet you all the saints salute you chiefly they that are of Caesar's household the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus our brother to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colus grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth as ye also learned of Epaphras our dear fellow servant who is for you a faithful minister of Christ who also declared unto us your love in the spirit for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind. By wicked works yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprobable in his sight if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I Paul am made a minister who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body sake which is the church whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus whereunto I also labor striving according to his working which worketh in me mightily for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and this I say lest any man should beguile you with enticing words for though I be absent in the flesh yet am I with you in the spirit joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of christ let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding the head from which all the
of the world why as though living in the world are yes subject to ordinances touch not taste not handle not which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh if yet and be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affection on things above not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanness inordinate affection evil concupiscence and covetousness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them but now ye also put off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth lie not one to another seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision nor uncircumcision barbarian Scythian bond nor free but Christ is all and in all put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you so also do ye and above all these things put on charity which is the bond of perfectness and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them children obey your parents in all things for this is well pleasing unto the Lord fathers provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eyes or vice as men pleasers but in singleness of heart fearing God and whatsoever ye do do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ but he that doth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done and there is no respect of persons masters give unto your servants that which is just and equal knowing that ye also have a master in heaven continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man all my state shall Tychicus declare unto you who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts with one's I am as a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you they shall make known unto you all things which are done here Aristarchus my fellow prisoner salute you and Marcus sister's son to Barnabas touching whom ye received commandments if he come unto you receive him and Jesus which is called just as who are of the circumcision these only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God which have been a comfort unto me Epaphras who is one of you a servant of Christ salute you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God for I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in higher Apollos the beloved physician and Demas greet you salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphas and the church which is in his house and when this epistle is read among you cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea and say to Archippus take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it the salutation by the hand of me Paul remember my bonds grace be with you amen Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ grace be unto you and peace from God. Our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ we give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father knowing brethren beloved your election of God for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake and yet became followers of us and of the Lord having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia for from you sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything for they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how ye turned to God from idols to serve it living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come for yourselves brethren know our entrance in unto you that it was not in vain but even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated as ye know at Philippi we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention for our exhortation was not of deceit nor of uncleanness nor in guile but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men but God which trieth our hearts for neither at any time used we flattering words as ye know nor a cloak of covetousness God is witness nor of men sought we glory neither of you nor yet of others when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ but we were gentle among you even as a nursery sheth her children so being affectionately desirous of you we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only but also our own souls because ye were dear unto us for ye remember brethren our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we would not be chargeable unto any of you we preached unto you the gospel of God ye are witnesses and God also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe as ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children that ye would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory for this cause also thank we God without ceasing because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us ye received it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe for ye brethren became followers of the churches of God which in Judea are in Christ Jesus for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen even as they have of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins all way for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost but we brethren being taken from you for a short time in presence not in heart endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire wherefore we would have come unto you even I Paul once and again but Satan hindered us for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even yet in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming for ye are our glory and joy wherefore when we could no longer forbear we thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent Timotheus our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed there unto for verily when we were with you we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass and ye know for this cause when I could no longer forbear I sent to know your faith
As we also to see you therefore brethren we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith for now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord for what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints furthermore then we beseech you brethren and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God so ye would abound more and more for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus for this is the will of God even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor not in the lust of concupiscence even as the Gentiles which know not God that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified for God hath not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness he therefore that despiseth despiseth not man but God who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit but as touching brotherly love ye need not that I write unto you for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another and indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia but we beseech you brethren that ye increase more and more and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words but of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief ye are all the children of light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation for God hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live together with him wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do and we beseech you brethren to know them which labor among you and are over you and the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves now we exhort you brethren warn them that are unruly comfort the feeble minded support the weak be patient toward all men see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men rejoice evermore pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you quench not the spirit despise not prophesying prove all things hold fast that which is good abstain from all appearance of evil and the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it brethren pray for us greet all the brethren with an holy kiss I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you amen Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ we are bound to thank God always for you brethren as it is meet because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and yet in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God shewing himself that he is God remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you brethren beloved of the Lord because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work finally brethren pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil and we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you and the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ now we command you brethren in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us for yourselves know how ye ought to follow us
ourselves disorderly among you neither did we eat any man's bread for naught but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you not because we have not power but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us for even when we were with you this we commanded you that if any would not work neither should he eat for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly working not at all but our busy bodies now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread but yet brethren be not weary in well doing and if any man obey not our word by this epistle note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed yet count him not as an enemy but admonish him as a brother now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means the Lord be with you all the salutation of Paul with mine own hand which is the token in every epistle so I write the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ which is our hope unto my own son in the faith grace mercy and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient for the ungodly and for sinners for unholy and profane for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers for manslayers for whoremongers for them that defile themselves with mankind for men stealers for liars for perjured persons and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting now unto the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever amen this charge I commit unto thee son according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth for there is one God and one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle I speak the truth in Christ and lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which becometh women professing godliness with good works let the woman learn in silence with all subjection but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man but to be in silence for Adam was first formed and even Adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in the transgression notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety this is a true saying if a man desire the office of a bishop he desire the good work a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife vigilant sober of good behavior given to hospitality apt to teach not given to wine no striker not greedy of filthy lucre but patient not a brawler not covetous one that ruleth well his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity for if a man know not how to rule his own house how shall he take care of the church of God not a novice lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil moreover he must have a good report of them which are without lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil likewise must the deacons be grave not double tongued not given to much wine not greedy of filthy lucre holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience and let these also first be proved then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless even so must their wives be grave not slanderers sober faithful in all things let the deacons be the husbands of one wife ruling their children and their own houses well for they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus these things write I unto thee hoping to come unto thee shortly but if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God which is the church of the living God the pillar and ground of the truth and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles believed on in the world received up into glory now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness for bodily exercise profiteth little but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men specially of those that believe these things command and teach let no man despise thy youth but be thou an example of the believers in word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity till I come give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery meditate upon these things give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee rebuke not an elder but entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren the elder women as mothers the younger as sisters with all purity honor widows that are widows indeed but if any widow have children or nephews let them learn first to shew piety at home and to requite their parents for that is good and acceptable before God now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth and these things give in charge that they may be blameless but if any provide not for his own and specially for those of his own house he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old having been the wife of one man well reported of for good works if she have brought up children if she have lodged strangers if she have washed the saints feet if she have rel
If she have diligently followed every good work but the younger widows refuse for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ they will marry having damnation because they have cast off their first faith and withal they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house and not only idle but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not I will therefore that the younger women marry bear children guide the house give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully for some are already turned aside after Satan if any man or woman that believeth have widows let them relieve them and let not the church be charged that it may relieve them that are widows indeed let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in the word and doctrine for the scripture saith thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn and the laborer is worthy of his reward against an elder receive not an accusation but before two or three witnesses them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another doing nothing by partiality lay hands suddenly on no man neither be partaker of other men's sins keep thyself pure drink no longer water but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmity some men's sins are open beforehand going before to judgment and some men they follow after likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand and they that are otherwise cannot be hid let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed and they that have believing masters let them not despise them because they are brethren but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit these things teach and exhort if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy strife railings evil surmisings perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and raiment let us be there with content but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows but thou O man of God flee these things and follow after righteousness godliness faith love patience meekness fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord. Jesus Christ which in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentate the King of kings and Lord of lords who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man hath seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting amen charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good that they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life O keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called which some professing have heard concerning the faith grace be with thee amen Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus too my dearly beloved son grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose. And grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles for the which cause I also suffer these things nevertheless I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed. Unto him against that day hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus that good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us this thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me of whom are Figelis and Hermogens the Lord give mercy unto the house of one Sephorus for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain but when he was in Rome he sought me out very diligently and found me the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus thou knowest very well thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier and if a man also strive for masteries yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits consider what I say and the Lord give thee understanding in all things remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer even unto bonds but the word of God is not bound therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory it is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him we shall also live with him if we suffer we shall also reign with him if we deny him he also will deny us if we believe not yet he abide faithful he cannot deny himself of these things put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearer study to shew thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus who concerning the truth have heard saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure having the seal the Lord knoweth them that are his and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to disinure if a man therefore purge himself from these he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work flee also youthful lusts but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the
Him at his will this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boastous proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy without natural affection truce breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with divers lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth now as Yannis and Jammers withstood Moses so do these also resist the truth men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith but they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was but thou hast fully known my doctrine manner of life purpose faith long suffering charity patience persecutions afflictions which came unto me at Antioch at Iconium at Lystra what persecutions I endured but out of them all the Lord delivered me and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight I have finished my course I have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love is appearing do thy diligence to come shortly unto me for Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica Crest sends to Galatia unto Dalmatia only is with me take and bring him with thee for he is profitable to me for the ministry and Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus when thou comest bring with thee and the books but especially the parchments Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil the Lord reward him according to his works of whom be thou where also for he hath greatly withstood our words at my first answer no man stood with me but all men forsook me I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory for ever and ever amen salute Prisca and Aquila and the household of one Sephorus Erastus abode at Corinth but Trophimus have I left at Mildum sick do thy diligence to come. Before winter Eubulus greet thee and Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brethren the Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit grace be with you amen Paul a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior to mine own son after the common faith grace mercy and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior for this cause left I thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee if any be blameless the husband of one wife having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God not self-willed not soon angry not given to wine no striker not given to filthy lucre but a lover of hospitality a lover of good men sober just holy tempered holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers specially they of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake one of themselves even a prophet of their own said the Cretans are always liars evil beasts slow bellies this witness is true wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth unto the pure all things are pure but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure but even their mind and conscience is defiled they profess that they know God but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine that the aged men be sober grave tempered sound in faith in charity in patience the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers not given to much wine teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children to be discreet chaste keepers at home good obedient to their own husbands that the word of God be not blasphemed young men likewise exhort to be sober minded in all things shewing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine shewing uncorruptness gravity sincerity sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things not answering again not purloining but shewing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates to be ready to every good work to speak evil of no man to be no brawlers but gentle shewing all meekness unto all men for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish disobedient deceived serving divers lusts and pleasures living in malice and envy hateful and hating one another but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior that being justified by his grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life this is a faithful saying and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto men but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself when i shall send artemis unto thee or Tychicus be diligent to come unto me to nicopolis for i have determined there to winter bring zenas the lawyer and apollos on their journey diligently that nothing be wanting unto them and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful all that are with me salute thee greet them that love us in the faith grace be with you all amen paul
God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus for we have great joy and consolation in thy love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee brother wherefore though I might be much bold in Christ too. Enjoin thee that which is convenient yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee being such an one as Paul the aged and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ I beseech thee for my son once I whom I have begotten in my bonds which in time past was to the unprofitable but now profitable to thee and to me whom I have sent again thou therefore receive him that is mine own bowels whom I would have retained with me that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of it. Gospel but without thy mind would I do nothing that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity but willingly for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever not now as a servant but above a servant a brother beloved specially to me but how much more unto thee both in the flesh and in the Lord if thou count me therefore a partner receive him as myself if he hath wronged thee or oweth thee ought put that on mine account I Paul have written it with mine own hand I will repay it albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides ye brother let me have joy of thee in the Lord refresh my bowels in the Lord having confidence in thy obedience I wrote unto thee knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say but withal prepare me also a lodging for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you there salute the Epiphras my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus Marcus Aristarchus Demas Lucas my fellow laborers the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit amen God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they for unto which of the angels said he at any time thou art my son this day have I begotten thee and again I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son and again when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world he saith and let all the angels of God worship him and of the angels he saith who make his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire but unto the son he saith thy throne O God is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore God even thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows and thou Lord in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thine hands they shall perish but thou remainest and they all shall wax old as doth a garment and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up and they shall be changed but thou art the same and thy years shall not fail but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them slip for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak but one in a certain place testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visitest him thou madest him a little lower than the angels thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of thy hands thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all in subjection under him he left nothing that is not put under him but now we see not yet all things put under him but we see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren saying i will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will i sing praise unto thee and again i will put my trust in him and again behold i and the children which god hath given me for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage for verily he took not on him the nature of angels but he took on him the seed of abraham wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to god to make reconciliation for the sins of the people for in that he himself hath suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and high priest of our profession christ jesus who was faithful to him that appointed him as also moses was faithful in all his house for this man was counted worthy of more glory than moses inasmuch as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house for every house is builded by some man but he that built all things is god and moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after but christ as a son over his own house whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of it hope firm unto the end wherefore as the holy ghost saith today if ye will hear his voice harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted me proved me and saw my works forty years wherefore i was grieved with that generation and said they do all wear in their heart and they have not known my way so i swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest take heed brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living god but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin for we are made partakers of christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end while it is said today if ye will hear his voice harden not your hearts as in the provocation for some when they had heard did provoke howbeit not all that came out of egypt by moses but with whom was he grieved forty years was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest but to them that believed not so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard if for we which have believed do enter into rest as he said as I have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise and God did rest the seventh day from all his works and in this place again if they shall enter into my rest seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief again he limiteth a certain day saying in David today after so long a time as it is said today if ye will hear his voice harden not your hearts for if Jesus had given them rest then would he not afterward have spoken of another day there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God for he
Unbelief for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast our profession for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity and by reason hereof he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sins and no man taketh this honor unto himself but he that is called of God as was Aaron so also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest but he that said unto him thou art my son today have I begotten thee as he saith also in another place thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared though he were a son yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing ye are dull of hearing for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment and this will we do if God permit for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame for the earth which drink in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessing from God but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned but beloved we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation though we thus speak for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have shewed toward his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister and we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises for when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater he swear by himself saying surely blessing I will bless thee and multiplying I will multiply thee and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise for men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife wherein God willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which entereth into that within the veil whither the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek for this Melchizedek king of Salem priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of God abide the priest continually now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils and verily they that are of the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren though they come out of the loins of Abraham but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better and here men that die receive tithes but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth and as I may so say Levi also who receiveth tithes paid tithes in Abraham for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood for under it the people received the law what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron for the priesthood being changed there is made of necessity a change also of the law for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood and it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there is another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment but after the power of an endless life for he testifieth thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof for the law made nothing perfect but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw nigh unto God and inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest for those priests were made without an oath but this with an oath by him that said unto him the Lord swear and will not repent thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament and they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death but this man because he continueth ever hath an unchangeable priesthood wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them for such an high priest became us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the peoples for this he did once when he offered up himself for the law make men high priests which have infirmity but the word of the oath which was since the law make the son who is consecrated forevermore now of the things which we have spoken this is the sum we have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the lord pitched and not man for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer for if he were on earth he should not be a priest seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see saith he that thou make all things according to the pattern shoot to thee in the mount but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises for if that first covenant had been faultless then should no place have been sought for the second for finding fault with them he saith behold the days come saith the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them 
Not saith the Lord for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days saith the Lord I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I. Remember no more in that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old now that which decayeth and waxed old is ready to vanish away then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary for there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread which is called the sanctuary and after the second veil the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that buddied and the tables of the covenant and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly now when these things were thus ordained the priests went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God but into the second went the high priest alone once every year not without blood which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people the Holy Ghost this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation but Christ being come an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God and for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance for where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator for a testament is a force after men are dead otherwise it is of no Strength at all while the testator liveth whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you moreover he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins wherefore when he cometh into the world he saith sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not but a body hast thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure then said I lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O God above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not neither hadst pleasure therein which are offered by the law then said he lo I come to do thy will O God he taketh away the first that he may establish the second by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us for after that he had said before this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days saith the Lord I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more now where remission of these is there is no more offering for sin having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having an high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries he that despised Moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sorrow punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace for we know him that hath said vengeance spelling geth unto me I will recompense saith the Lord and again the Lord shall judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated ye endured a great fight of afflictions partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used for ye had compassion of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry now the just shall lie by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speak by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he 
is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance abate and he went out not knowing whither he went by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the sea. Sure innumerable these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country and truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out they might have had opportunity to have returned but now they desire a better country that is in heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God for he hath prepared for them a city by faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come by faith Jacob when he was a dying blessed both it sons of Joseph and worship leaning upon the top of his staff by faith Joseph when he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones by faith Moses when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment by faith Moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace and what shall I more say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped it. Mouths of lions quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong waxed valiant in fight turned to flight the armies of the aliens women received their dead raised to life again and others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings yea moreover of bonds and imprisonment they were stoned they were sawn asunder were tempted were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins being destitute afflicted tormented of whom the world was not worthy they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speak unto you as unto children my son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord nor faint when thou art rebuked of him for whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth if ye endure chastening God dealeth with you as with sons for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not but if ye be without chastisement whereof all our partakers then are ye bastards and not sons furthermore we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lamb may be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled lest there be any fornicator or profane person as esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright for ye know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears for ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they that heard int are that the word should not be spoken to them any more for they could not endure that which was commanded and if so much as a beast touch the mountain it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart and so terrible was the sight that moses said i exceedingly fear and quake but ye are come unto mount zion and unto the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to god the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect and to jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speak Better things than that of Abel see that ye refuse not him that speak for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speak from heaven whose voice then shook the earth but now he hath promised saying yet once more I shake not the earth only but also heaven and this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire let brotherly love continue be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares remember them that are in bonds as bound with them and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have for he hath said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein we have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. 
suffered without the gate let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach for here have we no continuing city but we seek one to come by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name but to do good and to communicate forget not for with such sacrifices God is well pleased obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you pray for us for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly but I beseech you the rather to do this that I may be restored to you the sooner now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen and I beseech you brethren suffer the word of exhortation for I am written a letter unto you in few words know yet that our brother is set at liberty with whom if he come shortly I will see you salute all them that have the rule over you and all the saints they of Italy salute you grace be with you all amen a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greeting my brethren count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and Tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted but the rich in that he is made low because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed and when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death do not ear my beloved brethren every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures wherefore my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak slow to wrath for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of god wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls but be a doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was but whoso looked into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain pure religion and undefiled before god and the father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world my brethren have not the faith of our lord jesus christ the lord of glory with respect of persons for if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing and say unto him sit thou here in a good place and say to the poor stand thou there or sit here under my footstool are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts hearken my beloved brethren hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him but ye have despised the poor do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself ye do well but if ye have respect to persons ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point he is guilty of all for he that said do not commit adultery said also do not kill now if thou commit no adultery yet if thou kill thou art become a transgressor of the law so speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty for he shall have judgment without mercy that hath shewed no mercy and mercy rejoiceth against judgment what doth it profit my brethren though a man say he hath faith and have not works can faith save him if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body what doth it profit even so faith if it hath not works is dead being alone ye man may say thou hast faith and i have works shew me thy faith without thy works and i will shew thee my faith by my works thou believest that there is one god thou doest well the devils also believe and tremble but wilt thou know o vain man that faith without works is dead was not abraham our father justified by works when he had offered isaac his son upon the altar seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled which saith abraham believed god and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of god yes see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only likewise also was not rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation for in many things we offend all if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body behold we put bits in the horses mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body behold also the ships which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds yet are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listeth even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things behold how great a matter a little fire kind leth and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell for every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison therewith bless we God even the father and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing my brethren these things ought not so to be doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter can the fig tree my brethren bear olive berries either a vine fig so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts glory not and lie not against the truth this wisdom descendeth not from above but is earthly sensual devilish for where envying and strife is there is confusion and every evil work but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle and easy to be int are eated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace from whence come wars and fight 
things among you come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members ye lust and have not yet kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war yet ye have not because ye ask not ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God do ye think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy but he giveth more grace wherefore he saith God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double minded be afflicted and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up speak not evil one of another brethren he that speak the evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speak the evil of the law and judgeth the law but if thou judge the law thou art not a doer of the law but a judge there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy who art thou that judgest another go to now ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow for what is your life it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away for that ye ought to say if the Lord will we shall live and do this or that but now ye rejoice in your boastings all such rejoicing is evil therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doth it not to him it is sin. Go to now ye rich men weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire ye have heaped treasure together for the last days behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields which is of you kept back by fraud crieth and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears. Of the Lord of Sabaoth ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter ye have condemned and killed the just and he doth not resist you be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the Lord behold the husbandman wait for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain be ye also patient establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draw it nigh grudge not one against another brethren lest ye be condemned behold the judge standeth before the door take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience behold we count them happy which endure ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy but above all things my brethren swear not neither by heaven neither by the earth neither by any other oath but let your ye and your nay lest ye fall into condemnation is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven him confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from Death and shall hide a multitude of sins and apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus Galatia Cappadocia Asia and Bithynia elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ whom having not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into wherefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the of Jesus Christ as obedient Children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance but as he which hath called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for I am holy and if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation. Received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away but the word of the Lord endureth forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of God and precious ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ wherefore also it is contained in the scripture behold I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you therefore which believe he is precious but unto them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy dearly beloved I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul having your conversation honest among the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers they may by your good works which they shall behold glorify God
King servants be subject to your masters with all fear not only to the good and gentle but also to the froward for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffering wrongfully for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently but if when ye do well and suffer for it ye take it patiently this is acceptable with God for even here unto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example. That ye should follow his steps who did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed for ye were as sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls likewise ye wives. Be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great. Price for after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands even as Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered finally be yet. All of one mind having compassion one of another love as brethren be pitiful be courteous not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing but contrarywise blessing knowing that ye are there unto called that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile let him eschew evil and do good let him seek peace and ensue it for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil and who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good but and if ye suffer for righteousness sake happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror neither be troubled but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear having a good conscience that Whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing for Christ also hath one suffered for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water the like figure where unto even baptism doth also now save us not the putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him for as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin that he no longer should lie the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men but to the will of God for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness lust excess of wine rebellings banquetings and abominable idolatries wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead for for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead that they might be judged according to men in the flesh but live according to God in the spirit but the end of all things is at hand be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins use hospitality one to Another without grudging as every man hath received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of God if any man minister let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever amen beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy if ye be reproached for the name of Christ happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters yet if any man suffer as a Christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God on this behalf for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing as unto a faithful creator the elders which are among you I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed feed the flock of God which is among you taking the oversight thereof not by constraint but willingly not for filthy lucre but of a ready mind neither as being lords over God's heritage but being examples to the flock and when the chief shepherd shall appear ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away likewise ye younger submit yourselves unto the elder ye all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him for he careth for you be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world but the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that ye have suffered a while make you perfect establish strength and settle you to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen by Silvanus a faithful brother unto you as I suppose I have written briefly exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand the church that is at Babylon elected together with you salute you and so doth Marcus my son greet ye one another with a kiss of charity peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus amen Simon a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make
everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things though ye know them and be established in the present truth ye I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath shewed me moreover I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not for if God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world but saved Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly and deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from Day to day with their unlawful deeds the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Bozer who loved the wages of unrighteousness but was rebuked for his iniquity the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet these are wells without water clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever for when they speak great swelling words of vanity they allure through the lusts of the flesh through much wantonness those that were clean escape from them who live in error while they promise them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire the second epistle beloved i now write unto you in both which i stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us the apostles of the lord and savior knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of god the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought yet to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness wherefore beloved seeing that ye look for such things be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction ye therefore beloved seeing ye know these things before beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be glory both now and forever amen that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ and these things write we unto you that your joy may be. Full this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us my little children these things write I unto you that yes and not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected hereby know we that we are in him he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked brethren I write no new commandment unto you but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning the old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning again a new commandment I write unto you which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past
forgiven you for his name's sake I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one I write unto you little children because ye have known the father I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doth the will of god abideth forever little children it is the last time and as ye have heard that antichrist shall come even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time they went out from us but they were not of us for if they had been of us they would no doubt have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us but ye have an unction from the holy one and ye know all things i have not written unto you because ye know not the truth but because ye know it and that no lie is of the truth who is a liar but he that denieth that jesus is the christ he is antichrist that denieth the father and the son whosoever denieth the son the same hath not the father but he that acknowledgeth the son hath the father also let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you ye also shall continue in the son and in the father and this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life these things have i written unto you concerning them that seduce you but the anointing which ye have received of him abide in you and ye need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing teachate you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it hath taught you ye shall abide in him and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming if ye know that he is righteous ye know that every one that doth righteousness is born of him behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not beloved now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth hath not seen him neither known him little children let no man deceive you he that doth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous he that committeth sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil whosoever is born of god doth not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of god in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doth not righteousness is not of god neither he that loveth not his brother for this is the message that ye heard from the beginning that we should love one another not as cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous marvel not my brethren if the world hate you we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abideth in death whosoever hath his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren but whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of God in him my little children let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him for if our heart condemn us God is greater than our heart and know it all things beloved if our heart condemn us not then have we confidence toward God and whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world hereby know ye the spirit of God every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God and this is that spirit of antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world they are of the world therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them we are of God he that knoweth God heareth us he that is not of God heareth not us hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error beloved let us love one another for love is of God and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love and this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him herein is love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins beloved if God so loved us we ought also to love one another no man hath seen God at any time if we love one another God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God God dwelleth in him and he in God and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love we love him because he first loved us if a man say I love God and hate his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen how can he love God whom he hath not seen and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and every one that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God this is he that came by water and blood even Jesus Christ not by water only but by water and blood and it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth for there are three that bear record in heaven the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost and these three are one and there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit and the water and the blood and these three agree in one if we receive the witness of men the witness of God is greater for this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his son he that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself he that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of God hath not life these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the son of God and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him if any man 
See his brother sin a sin which is not unto death he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death there is a sin unto death I do not say that he shall pray for it all unrighteousness is sin and there is a sin not unto death we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not and we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness and we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his Son Jesus Christ this is the true God and eternal life little children keep yourselves from idols amen the elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth and not I only but also all they that have known the truth for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever grace be with you mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of the Father in truth and love I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father and now I beseech thee lady not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee but that which we had from the beginning that we love one another and this is love that we walk after his commandments this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning ye should walk in it for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh this is a deceiver and an antichrist look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ he hath both the Father and the Son if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine receive him not into your house neither bid him God speed for he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds having many things to write unto you I would not write with paper and ink but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full the children of thy elect sister greet thee amen the elder unto the well beloved Gaius whom I love in the truth beloved I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth for I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee even as thou walkest in the truth I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth beloved thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers which have borne witness of thy charity before the church whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort thou shalt do well because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth I wrote unto the church but Diotrephes who loveth to have the preeminence among them receiveth us not wherefore if I come I will remember his deeds which he doth prating against us with malicious words and not content therewith neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out of the church beloved follow not that which is evil but that which is good he that doth good is of God but he that Doth evil hath not seen God Demetrius hath good report of all men and of the truth itself yea and we also bear record and ye know that our record is true I had many things to write but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee but I trust one shall shortly see thee and we shall speak face to face peace be to thee our friends salute thee greet the friends by name the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord. Jesus Christ I will therefore put you in remembrance though ye once knew this how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believed not and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion and speak evil of dignities yet Michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses durst not bring against him a railing accusation but said the Lord rebuke thee but these speak evil of those things which they know not but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves woe unto them for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gain saying of course these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear clouds they are without water carried about of winds trees whose fruit with a wreath without fruit twice dead plucked up by the roots raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him these are murmurous complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speak great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage but beloved remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts these be they who separate themselves sensual having not the spirit but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life and of some have compassion making a difference and others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen the of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand to the seven churches which are in Asia grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen I am alpha and omega the Beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty I who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea and I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the
were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp toe-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen. And have the keys of hell and of death write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or Else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent but this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate he that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write these things saith the first and the last which was dead and is alive I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches he that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write these things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges I know thy works and where thou dwellest even where Satan's seat is and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth but I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which thing I hate repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it and unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write these things saith the son of God who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first notwithstanding I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophet is to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not behold I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds and I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts and I will give unto every one of you according to your works but unto you I say and unto the rest in Thyatira as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak I will put upon you none other burden but that which ye have already hold fast till I come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father and I will give him the morning star he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches and unto the angel of the church in Sardis write these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for I have not found thy works perfect before God remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of David he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth I know thy works behold I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth behold I come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things saith the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot I would thou wert cold or hot so then because thou art warm and neither cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with isol that thou mayest see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent behold I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter and immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne inside like unto an emerald and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold and out of it throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne
Four beasts had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night saying Holy 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 Lord God Almighty which was and is and is to come and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying Thou art worthy O Lord. To receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon and one of the elders saith unto me weep not behold the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof and I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne and when he had taken the book the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of saints and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever and the four beasts said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder one of the four beasts saying come and see and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer and when he had opened the second seal I heard the second beast say come and see and there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword and when he had opened the third seal I heard the third beast say come and see and I beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou heard not the oil and the wine and when he had opened the fourth seal I heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth and when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held and they cried with a loud voice saying how long O Lord holy and true dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth and white robes were given unto every one of them and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until there fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely fix when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand and after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree and I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads and I heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Ezra were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Nephthalim were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Manasses were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God saying Amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever Amen and one of the elders answered saying unto me what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they and I said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them they shall hunger no more neither thirst any more neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and when he had opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour and I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up and the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed and the third angel sounded
Woe woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound and the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads and to them it was given that they should not kill them but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strike the man and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men and they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle and they had tails like unto scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon one woe is past and behold there come two woes more hereafter and the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the Four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates and the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand and I heard the number of them and thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths for their power is in their mouth and in their tails for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire and he had in his hand a little book open and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth and when he had cried seven thunders uttered their voices and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices I was about to write and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth and I went unto the angel and said unto him give me the little book and he said unto me take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey and as soon as I had eaten it my belly was bitter and he said unto me thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings and there was given me a reed like unto a rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months and I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth and if any man will hurt them fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies and if any man will hurt them he must in this manner be killed these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth and after three days and a half the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them and the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever and the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God saying we give thee thanks O Lord God Almighty which art and wast and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days and there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our
great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshipped the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world if any man have an ear let him hear he that leteth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doth great wonders so that he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive it in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six and I looked and lo a lamb stood on the mount Zion and with him an hundred forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb and in their mouth was found no guile for they are without fault before the throne of God and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters and there followed another angel saying Babylon is fallen is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth thee of his name here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth yes hath the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them and I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one said like unto the son of man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped and another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven he also having a sharp sickle and another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God and the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs and I saw another sign in heaven great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up the wrath of God and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his end over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God and they sing the song of Moses the servant of God and the song of the Lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works Lord God Almighty just and true are thy ways thou King of saints who shall not fear thee O Lord and glorify thy name for thou only art holy for all nations shall come and worship before thee for thy judgments are made manifest and after that I looked and behold the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened and the seven angels came out of the temple having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen and having their breasts girded with golden girdles and one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters and they became blood and I heard the angel of the water say thou art righteous O Lord which art and wast and shalt be because thou hast judged us for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and thou hast given them blood to drink for they are worthy and I heard another out of the altar say even so Lord God Almighty true and righteous are thy judgments and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God which hath power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds and the sixth angel poured out
gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven every stone about the weight of a talent and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail for the plague thereof was exceeding great and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me come hither I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration and the angel said unto me wherefore didst thou marvel I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her which hath the seven heads and ten horns the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is and here is the mind which hath wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth and there are seven kings five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come and when he cometh he must continue a short space and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of Kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful and he saith unto me the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth and after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies and I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled fill to her double how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city Babylon that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise any more the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thy wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more and all the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her. Torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches is come to not and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing. Saying alas alas that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for God hath avenged you on her and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all and the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumps shall be heard no more at all in thee and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants were the great men of the earth for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth and after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying alleluia salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God for true and righteous are his judgments for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand and again they said alleluia and her smoke rose up forever and ever and the four and twenty elders and the four Beast fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying Amen Alleluia and a voice came out of the throne saying Praise our God all ye his servants and ye that fear him both small and great and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying Alleluia for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints and he saith unto me right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb and he saith unto me these are the true sayings of God and I fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see thou do it not I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no
white and clean and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords and I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received thee of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received his upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me write for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying come hither I will shew thee the bride the lamb's wife and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and shewed me that great city the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious even like a jasper stone clear as crystal and had a wall great and high and had twelve gates and at the gates twelve angels and names written thereon which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel on the east three gates on the north three gates on the south three gates and on the west three gates and the wall of the city had twelve foundations and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the lamb and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and the city leath four square and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal and he measured the wall thereof an hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel and the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third a chalcedony the fourth an emerald the fifth sardonyx the sixth sardius the seventh chrysolite the eighth beryl the ninth the topaz the tenth the chrysoprasus the eleventh the jacinth the twelfth an amethyst and the twelve gates were twelve pearls every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it and the city had no need of the sun neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God did lighten it and the Lamb is the light thereof and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or make the lie but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life and he shewed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads and there shall be no night there and they need no candle neither light of the sun for the Lord God giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever and he said unto me these sayings are faithful and true and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done behold I come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book and I saw these things and heard them and when I had heard and seen I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things then saith he unto me see thou do it not for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book worship God and he saith unto me seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand he that is unjust let him be unjust still and he which is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still and he that is holy let him be holy still and behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For
prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book he which testifieth these things saith surely I come quickly amen even so come Lord Jesus the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen.